Oh, okay. How are you? Tired. Tired. Early hours. So the rock and roll revival tour. Yes, sir. You too. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping we'll talk about it. Excited to see Howard. It's been a while, man. Yeah. Finally, and I'm not in too much trouble. <laughs> hey, what's up, Rev? Chilling, man. How are you, man? I rock hard. You excited to see Howard, Rev? I know the dude. He's all right with me. I'm not mad at him. <laughs> He's the king of all entertainment and all that good stuff. Well, uh, like I said, Kid Rock and and uh, Reverend Run are here from Run DMC. They're together on tour with Leonard Skinner. Oh, Skinner, nice. Yeah, and we always like to see Kid Rock. Last we saw him, I think he got into some fight or something. There's the Reverend Hello. Run and Kid I'm Rock, two problems. two Hello. superstars. Look at this. Two guys who are lucky enough to be in rock and roll and making money in the music getting business. Lots of poontang. Well, I don't know about Reverend Run. I hear you're like all serious. He's married, about, married, got lots of kids. All that religious stuff, man. Yeah. He went to, what's going on with his head? <laughs> Cut wow. the budget. I gotta fix his headphones, Howard. Why? Because you gotta put the headphones on the full way. Because the microphone's right up in his hat. That was the noise we heard before. <laughs> Let me see. Let me but see. I can't put my hat on though. Yeah, screw the there hat. You, go. you don't there need you a hat. You're you a go. good looking guy. Yeah, Dad. There put the go. hat over there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You just destroyed your whole look. <laughs> you put together a beautiful look. So I don't even know where to begin with you two guys. You're out on tour together. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And how does that come about? How does Run DMC and Kid Rock and Leonard Skinner all uh, hook up? Is it relevant? Well, he came to town about what, two years ago. Was it two years or a year? Yeah, but a friend of mine. All right, whatever. <laughs> so he came to town and he called me, and I was like, what's up? I, you know, I don't know why he called me. I guess because I got pretty popular with my TV show. He thought I was worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, the TV show took off, didn't it? Yeah, we got yeah. a kid here, this uh, high-pitched mic. Loves the show. Yeah, 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 so it's in his fifth season. So he calls me. I'm like, oh, cool, Kid Rock. So he says, um, where are you going? I said, me and Russell are going to the Hamptons. He's like, can I go? Like a little kid. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm getting ready to jump on my plane. He said, get on my plane. Mine doesn't have propellers because I was just taking a little prop plane. So we get on this big ball of jet and we go out to the Hamptons and hang. Have fun. We go to the Prince concert. Is that what life is like for uh, rock stars, wealthy rock yeah. stars? You guys fight over whose plane you're going to take out to the Hamptons? Well, we <laughs> took his because his didn't have propellers, but we couldn't land in the smaller one. We had to land down the block. Kid, how is it possible to stay relevant with today's kids who are angry and defeated when you're flying around in planes? I was just talking to Dee Snyder about this. He said after a while it got hard to write hit songs to stay in touch with the kids because you got the planes, you're, you're running off to the Hamptons. It's got to be tough, right? Yeah, but I'm still fighting in a Waffle House, so I'm kidding. Did you hear about that? <laughs> yes, I read that. Yeah. What happened? That's got to balance things out a bit, doesn't it? Uh, Rev, what do you think? Does he have a mental problem, Kid Rock? Uh, oh, totally crazy. He's Dude. totally crazy. <laughs> out of his mind. But you know what? I'm there on the tour, and I pray. But, you know, right after I pray, he goes back to sin, and then we go back to praying. So I'm kind of like the balance. Dude. Have you ever tried to bring him to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, we, had, we had communion in the back of a limo. Yeah. Does he have an issue, an anger issue? Honestly, what is wrong um, with Kid Rock? If, if you mess with him, he might punch you in the face. It's very important that he, he um, punches people in the face, and I can't stop him from doing it, so I just, you know, tell him to take it easy on the band. But it is weird. You were in a Waffle House. You did a very generous thing. You, you, well, first of all, you're sitting there, and it, it occurs to you to buy everyone in the Waffle House, I guess, breakfast, right? Yeah. Right. Gave all the girls there a big tip, you know, just... They're right. feeling good. It was a good night. Great show. Record was number one. We had something to drink, so we were like, let's, like anybody else, let's go to Waffle House. Let's go to the Waffle House. You go to the Waffle House, you offer this generous thing, and some kid is there. How old is this guy? I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Young man? Old enough to know better. Okay, so he walks up to you and goes, oh, you kid rock. What's he he, he's just sitting in his booth being a jerk. He's eating with his fingers. I guess he's like the local drug dealer or something is his reputation, like some tough kid right around the block and then it just turns into this and that i can't really get into everything because you still got all the court system going but you're in court on this? <clears throat> oh it's just gonna it's one of those of course he was sitting there saying man okay i'm gonna sue you you see what i'm gonna sue you right. well this is after i'm gonna get all my boys and kill you let me understand <laughs> this. let me understand this he said you go and buy him breakfast and i he, offered to buy him breakfast right and he says fuck you you're an asshole this kind of thing this kind of shit and he's, he's saying bad stuff about one of my girlfriends from Atlanta. He's just, he's just really being a jerk about everything. And finally, I was like, you know what? You're a pig. I go, you eat like a pig. You look like a pig. You are a fucking pig, pig. And then uh, he says, good. Uh, hit me because I'm going to sue you. Yeah, basically. 
That's what you say. And you yeah. comply? Yeah. And, <laughs> no. and you hit him. No, I kind of got up and just walked over to him like, whatever, just keep your mouth shut. This, that. And then and then somebody with me kind of jumped in. And uh. Well, got kid had like, kid all of a sudden had his knife like in mm. his hand, like didn't look bad. And my, my, my guitar player saw it. And so he got involved. Well, let me ask you, life is good. And then you. we threw the kid out because he was being so belligerent. And so he's outside beating on the window. I don't understand this. Now we're laughing. He's got his dick out of his pants. What? He's got his dick out of his pants on the window. Wow. It's like, you know, like, fuck you. I'm going to get all my boys. We're coming up here to kill you. I'm calling. I'm calling all my niggas. We're coming up here to kill all you motherfuckers. Blah, blah, blah. Just call. Can you use the N-word? Going crazy. Oh, yeah. Several times. I'm like, what? A white guy? No, no. He's no, a black guy. guy. A black guy. Yeah, so then... So you then, fight with black guys? <laughs> Boy, you got some balls on you. That's crazy. Not me, man. Black guy says to me, I'm an asshole. I disagree with him. I'll move on. <laughs> he probably knows something I don't You're know. probably right. I'm not a crazy. <laughs> then he dropped the window on me. Like, just beating on this, like, nine-foot plate glass window, dropped the window on me. So then wow. I got scared, you know? So then I tried throwing a chair out it and everything erupted in the parking lot. And, like, let's, you know, boom. This is all in the Waffle House. Yeah. Is this <laughs> pre-Tommy Lee or after? No, this that, this after, after, right? After Tommy Lee. So he just... Got it all together. I don't know, it just seemed to come in waves. Because <laughs> I've, I've had no trouble since. <laughs> Does this happen a lot with you? Apparently, the last... Uh, I think it was just over the this tour has been good. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, with the I've waffles good? i the vibration. You have. Yeah, yeah, yes. you're, 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 you're... I lifted it up higher. You're a reasonable right. man. Yeah. I mean, you have an anger problem. I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> you can't even eat a waffle without getting into a fight. Well, you know, I think they start to get too self-righteous. People start talking. I'm like, cut it out. Just be a nice person. They won't, they won't, they won't. And then they go, hey, man, if I can really provoke this kid, I can get some money. The problem right. is he doesn't let things go. We was at the gas station, and just nice little old mean lady was saying something. I was like, let it nice go. Nice little old mean lady. <laughs> but you hear what the Reverend <clears throat> Run is saying? He's saying, I let things go. Let things go, man. You're a rock star. You're on a plane but to That's the what I'm here to teach him. I told him anger, one letter short of danger. These are the type of words of wisdom I drop. Did you ever take anger management? I've completed a course. You have? Yes. Do you think it helped? <laughs> uh, Do you think it helped? He's been good on tour. 100% yeah. cured. <laughs> what do you make of his. Uh, listen, you're a Reverend Run. How long have yes. you been married? I've been married um, since 92. Since 92. So it's a successful long marriage. It's your Thank only God. marriage? It's your no, only it's my mar second marriage. Second marriage. But this one is, uh, I'm, I'm rocking it. Rock solid. Rock and solid. What do you think of his two month marriage to uh, Pam Anderson? What do you make of that? Um, what happened there? Well, he only knows the real reason. I guess he just, you know, you know the reason. I don't know. What do I think of it? You don't talk I, to each other about this? No, so, we I don't talk a lot about that. I just mm -hmm. talked to him about settling down again. He says, Is he a sex addict? Um, I really haven't been in the bedroom by him, but I've seen him with quite a few girls. I, right. I have to admit. I'm going to yeah, tell you. Yeah, he just dropped something a moment ago. One of my Atlanta girlfriends or something. Yeah, well, that's like just that a thing. girlfriend. I asked him if he have a girlfriend, and he says every night. Is it, that's your joke? <laughs> it's no joke. It's just giving you his life story. The guy, like, you love sex, right? Uh, yeah. Why, why? Is there somebody out there that doesn't? No, you love it. And are you dating a 21-year-old stripper right now? No, that was a complete... Taylor Reason? No, no, Is that no. the girl? In 2008, Kid Rock was dating 21-year-old stripper Taylor Reason. No, she's not a stripper. She's not? No, what we did she go do? out a few times. Really nice girl. She's going to school in uh, Los... She was from Oklahoma. She's going to school in Los Angeles like to do makeup. And then it says, in 2008, February, you were seen making out with actress Gabrielle Union. No, we weren't making out. You never got her? No, we were just hanging out. You were hanging out. Paris Hilton denies rumors that you were doing her, but it's pretty well known in no, most no, circles no, that you, you took a little sample on that. No, too. I did not. You didn't? I'm net, no. Now, the Reverend Run is shaking his head no. Right, How nah, do you, I, no he, he told me he didn't. <laughs> he tell, he, you discussed that with him. Yeah, I you told him we took him. communion in the back of the limo. I'm really there as mm -hmm. a, um, not only a rock and roll dude, but kind of like a Reverend rock spiritual advisor type guy. That's terrific. And 2008, who was the chick you brought to uh, the Grammys? Well, that's, that's my friend Diana. What do you mean? She's like a friend? sister. Like a sister. You yeah. don't you don't bang her. I don't bang my sister, Sal. She's a no. model. He's got nothing but friends and sisters. <laughs> model. What, what is Diana? What does Diana do for a living? She has a swimsuit company. Yeah, called, and she's a model, right? You want to hear the funniest thing? You know the chick they got caught with Spitzer. You know that chick with her in the white swimsuit. Yeah. When you, that's one of her swimsuits. Is that no? Okay, but let me ask you something. <laughs> Did you ever do that chick? No. Have you ever had uh, made love to a high price escort? No. 
You used to do stuff like that. I remember when you'd call me from Those hotel. weren't high price escorts. They were ho- just horrors. Those were supermodels? <laughs> <laughs> you mean years ago we were calling you drunk in the Mondrian? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think we were just having fun, like, calling people from the phone book because we wanted to get on your show. Where's Fred? I'm right here. Uh, where's Kid Rock? Right here. You guys sound the same. I'm trying to turn the TV down. Hey, I'm working. in the bathroom on that stupid phone by the toilet. If you're taking a crap, you can talk on and kids in the other room, and we got a major problem, Howard. We can't get no escorts up here for under five hundred dollars, and they're all ugly. Yeah, these guys are trying to get some hookers. Yeah. Sex no, have they tried the escorts? They no, come up and they're the, ugly. What? He called, and he goes, "I want, I want a black chick with boobs and this, and then, and then they come, and then I, I go, kid, and they don't look nothing money. like it." They don't That's even look... false advertising. I can sue them, right? You absolutely could. <laughs> is that right or not? What, what, what magazine are you looking in for the... Uh... No, yellow pages, baby. I'm, <laughs> I'm letting my fingers do the walking. He said you like his uncle. He said every time he's standing in handcuffs, he says, what's Howard going to think? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get him on the show. Well, I got to tell you something. You two... No, I said, up. you're like my... I said, you're like I this know. weird uncle. I, heard right. Right. I hear you. I follow everything. Yeah, Trust me. His mind is moving I'm quickly. as sharp as can be. Uh, is it... Uh, um, who is wealthier, Reverend? You or your brother? Oh. Um, your we brother kind of is share a mogul. The wealth. We kind of, it kind of flows in the family. Like we have businesses with, well, we sold Fat Farm and now. Russell's richer. Let me just put it there. Russell's yeah. richer. Who's <laughs> talking on a boat? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Richer. It's Russell. It's Russell. Yeah, Russell's richer. Russell's older than you, right? Yes. He's, he's the big brother. Seven years on me getting the money a little longer. Right. So he's a very successful businessman. Yes, Russell. yes, yes, yes. And you do this reality show. Evidently, your reality it's show, a good show is a good show because we have a kid here, High Pitch Mike. Who actually, this is an amazing testament to your show. Mm-hmm. High Pitch Mike doesn't make a lot of money, okay. and he wanted a TV. We had a TV to give away. A big screen yeah. television, flat oh, cool. screen, yeah. We took a transsexual and let the transsexual sit on his face oh. in order to get this TV. So he, all he wanted to do is be able to watch your show. That's how much he loves you. Yeah, wow. we kept saying, why do you need a big <laughs> He went through a lot to see the Reverend. And, and he me, said, I love He had to go through hell to get house. to heaven. Yeah. And, this, and this transsexual did not look like a woman. Trust wow. me. Wow. Did I he mean. get the TV? He got the TV, but he never hooked so it up. That's one extra never rating for me. We're going to our fifth what? season. i just tell you the funniest part of the story. The reason why he did it was because it was an HD TV. And he didn't want to watch Reverend Run's house in HD, except they don't shoot it in HD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> After all that. Could you start well, shooting in HD for this kid? I'll yeah, see what we yeah. can do. I'll talk to my producers. So tell me what's going on here. So who are you banging? You always make it seem like every woman's your friend. What's going on? Give me, a, give, me, give me some excitement. What's going on now? You've sold 20 million albums, Kid Rock. 20 million albums. That's a hell of an accomplishment. Yes. You got more money than you know what to do with. You got a private plane... Where you call the Reverend up and say, I'm, let's fight over whose plane we should take to the Hamptons. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. What are you worth Things at this could point? be worse. Are you worth over $150 million? Who? You. No. If you have a private plane at your disposal all the time, I would imagine you need that kind of money just to fuel it up. Reverend, what do you think he's worth? A lot. Size him he up. Has, he has a you're few. operating at this cost. You know, you know what, what does he have? What he is has he? A beautiful house in <laughs> like Howard. Like Howard's got a Delta got a Platinum elevate. card. He has a beautiful house in Malibu. <laughs> he has a beautiful house in Malibu. Very big. He has a, uh, an apartment in Nashville with an elevator. Whoa! The apartment has an elevator. Yes, and he has a, a condo. Well, a condo. I don't know. listen. I'm from the old school apartment condo. Does the so elevator go right into his apartment? You know, the whole building, actually, from the first to the third floor, the elevator. When you walk in the door, you can go t- from the first to the third floor. And he owns all the floors? Yeah. The t- first, the, t- the second, t- and the third floor. In Nashville. And we actually sold out Nashville. The show was amazing. And then he has a big spot in um, Michigan and with a lot of acres. Yeah? Only thing he doesn't have is horses, but he has acres. And, he, and, he, and, and you bring bitches there, if I may use that vernacular? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you do? Is that the move? You seduce them with your, uh, your toys? I have fun with my life. You have fun. So what is the fun? What's going on now? Who are you dating? Um, just kind of, you know. You know who I was thinking you ought to get? I'm reading Open Maxim. for suggestions. I'm reading Maxim Magazine. I see this girl on the cover, Jamie King. You know who that is? We went, uh, we went out together. You know he had You had her? her? We went out in like 19. You got this one? You dated this one? Yeah. <laughs> I swear I forgot. Very nice He's girl. Her in here, I, I was. Think. I was. Was she in here? I think so. I know you grilled me on her years ago. How was that? He forgot. Boy, she looks good. 
He's why does one of her brother, her brother-in-law, and sister still keep in touch with me to come out to see shows and stuff? What, why do you break up with a girl like that? I, honestly, I mean, I don't understand. Why not just enjoy her for a while? You're married, right? I'm going to get married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's calmed down a lot. Wow, I, I calmed down a lot. Yeah. Well, well, well. What's the ooh? You gonna get married again? Yeah. I'd just like to have a copy of your prenup after you do. <laughs> Let me tell you just something. Just in case I ever meet someone, I'm sure that you have already had you got all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. What happens with you? Amen. But what happens with you and Jamie King? Do you get tired of having sex with them? Is that tell me what goes on? But Pam Anderson, you still have I mean have Jamie were just we were really young. Right. She but, was like twenty at the time, nineteen, I was you know, twenty six or something. Well how does it end? Are you bored? Um He's trying to find out how do you keep going. I think I think that's when I was really in a point where I didn't want to be anywhere outside of Michigan. I really wanted to. I was so focused on staying there and being there and, and drinking Budweiser, staying there. And then she kind of wanted to do the Hollywood thing. Yeah. And I didn't. And that was it. It was yeah. goodbye. Mm -hmm. It was the end of that. Yeah. She's still a great girl. Right, you think I'm crazy to get married? I mean, you just got married I to Pam. I think you're completely nuts to get You married. got married several different times in several different cities with Pam, yeah, I mean, right? why would I take well, advice well, from you? Listen, getting married is a ball. <laughs> getting married is some of the most fun I ever had. Right. Being married sucked. Why? <laughs> I still don't understand how you fell out of love so quick. I don't get it. Oh, man. I don't get it. It's the same girl you were with. I what? covered all this, though, didn't I? I don't get it still. You're telling me not to get married, but you're the Marian, you're the Marian fool. You're getting married all the time. <laughs> no, I was a Marian fool. Right. <laughs> no more. Reverend, what do you think's going on here? Lack of I, commitment? Disrespect for women? It, no what? disrespect. He because disrespects. I, think I do not disrespect. Him and, him and Diddy both said the same thing to me. They was like... Like, why? They want to know, it's almost like they want to know why be married. And I was saying, because it's good and to have one steady partner. Like, but there's so many, you know, people you can be with. I said, well, that's not, that's not scriptural. You know, but I get really deep. Yeah. I, I'm a self-help type guy. And I know why you want to be a, a married guy. You, you don't want to run from person to person. You want to chill out. Well, I and, and it brings to... some stability to your life and it makes you feel good. And I, I find the woman I'm with very sexy. I am sexually satisfied. I don't find that. Listen, do I look at women who walk in here? You bet. There was a girl in here the other day, right? Miss Howard TV. Brianna. Brianna. Gorgeous girl. <laughs> sure. Beautiful. But you're not going to drop your fiance. I'm not giving woman. up my good. Th I got a good thing going. Do, do you think that kid doesn't know the deep, rich kind of love with a woman? Well, that, it, that I think that could really. I think that why he's drawn to me. This uh -huh. is my, my philosophy. When he was married. Obviously, he was looking to say, you know what? This can be good for my kids. We can chill out. And then probably something happened that messed it up. So inside of him, he wants to pull it off. Mm -hmm. But everybody's not lucky in love. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lucky in love guy. I'm very thankful for that. And sometimes you look and you're trying to figure out how to get in that lane. And that lane is not an easy lane to be in. It takes commitment. Mm -hmm. You can't be selfish. What do you got, a church? <clears throat> MTV at 10, 10 o'clock on Thursdays. No, but you have your own my church? That's my congregation. How many MTV. people in your congregation? Millions. No, 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 no. Millions? No. I don't have, have a church. church. My church is in... I'm Reverend... No, listen. How Reverend... Wait, you... hey, Howard. Reverend Run. I'm a rocking Reverend. How do you so become my, a Reverend? You're my congregation. Everybody who wants to see the show, how do you become a Reverend? You go, and you, I was mentored, and I got the collar wrapped around my neck, but wait, <clears> my congregation is rock artists. Here is one of my... Um, parishioners, this kid rock. You you, you got to be kidding me. Yes. I mean, this guy isn't following one thing you said. <laughs> I have many people case. on my words of wisdom <laughs> list. I have a words of wisdom list. You go to revrun.com and signed up. Every morning, people get a word of wisdom. You come and watch the show. You yeah. you sit. You if see. If I the, say I'm a reverend, am I a reverend? No, you have to become a reverend. You, I went to church and became a reverend. I was mentored and went through the correct um, <clears throat> steps to become a reverend. I see. But I'm not confound to one place where a thousand people come. I go out and my show is on and you get inspired and you say, I want to be like, run, he seems to have it. Yeah, also, he doesn't judge. Wait a second. Oh, he I'm doesn't not run around judging. No, 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 I don't judge people. No, no, no. But how do you, how do you... Obviously. Be, why, you seem like a very upbeat person, but in 1980, you say you tried to commit suicide. I was crazy. You know, no, okay, now you've seen VH1 behind the music. Here's the rock star's life. You go out, you become very wealthy, you act very crazy, and then you say, whoa. What is crazy? What did you do? <clears throat> what, you fuck a few girls? Listen, we're Let not going to go there. Let me hear. <laughs> Who'd you fuck? I smoked a lot of weed. I acted weed. very crazy, and I ran around with DMC, and I wasn't, you know, like, I wasn't balanced. I was a kid. The Bible says when you're a kid, you do kiddie things. When you get what older, you What was the craziest you thing you did? Because Kid Rock will top you. 
Like, he's already topped me. That's, what you, that's not what I. That's not the gospel. Did you have two girls at the same time? Be honest. Come clean, Reverend. Come clean. The truth will set you free. <laughs> now you're in my church. I think there was too many forty ounces and too much weed. I weed think, is it? No heroin? Nah, never that. Coke. That's not. Well, I might have had a sniff or two, but right. that wasn't my thing. <laughs> right. No, that wasn't my thing. I smoked a lot of weed. Drank 40 ounces, was, you know, walked with extreme limp, was cool. The whole fly thing, and, and then you get to a place and say, there's got to be more. Bitches galore, right? They were everywhere. Everywhere. You know, I'm not saying Two, that was my main time. thing. He's going to try to make the reverend. Let me know what's Don't going. make a mockery out of me, I'm Howard. I'm not making a mockery. I'm, I'm asking you to <laughs> Look, tell, come clean. Now. I already came Confess clean. your sins. I have a new book coming out, and yeah. that's called um, Take Your Family Back, a message to america's parents and that'll be out in august so i'm gonna um put that book out i have a book out now words of wisdom i'm an author and um like i said my congregation is on mtv and the show is called run's house it'll probably be a lot better than that spears mother's book that she had coming out <laughs> you think? was that a parenting spears? book you had britney spears talk about that oh, i did not <laughs> it's it's funny, though. Sure did. you're funny you just take a shot out of nowhere <laughs> come on you banged her didn't you no, no. This, dude, this dude's had a lot never of even girls. never even said publicly anywhere that you could look look up that she's hot ever right. question never never not, and i've been around since day one never you know who had her fred durst i remember he was i remember that where is that. fred durst he's with he's, he's he's sitting there he's washing his penis off <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he's doing you know what Rod, the question should tell be tell me the craziest thing you ever did this is what the question should be what how can i have a positive family show on mtv five seasons with the attention span of these kids and everybody says it's nothing but a good man with his wife and kids because deep inside all of us howard we want to do the right thing. And MTV was like, how's this going to work, Rev? You're going to come on. You got a collar. All you do is go home, be with your wife, kids, have fun, you know, play and take care of them and speak words of wisdom. The question should be, how does that happen? All right. And how does that happen? People want, just like you, yeah. you're getting married. Go ahead. People want to be good and do good and have a family and do right. And it's proof when you can be on the channel where you're not supposed to be on, especially me. You're a rapper, now you became a reverend, now you do good, and now you're on MTV, which is the crazy channel, right? Mm -hmm. And people keep coming back for five seasons. How is it that you should be do investigated. That? How do you do, uh, and I'm asking you a serious question. Okay. You had serious tragedy. You lost a child. Yeah, good question. And you put, the chi you put this whole episode on MTV. I know it was very moving, but it, no, let me tell do you, you, you ever want to say, turn off the cameras? My, I, my wife had just had a no. miscarriage. Again, my show is inspiring, so yeah. it's supposed to be inspiring. So you sit there and you see me, all this great big house, Rolls Royce, beautiful wife, happy kids, everything's so beautiful. So if you've been through me with that, you have to see me go through something else to test the character of a man. What was it, a miscarriage? No, it wasn't a miscarriage. It was a... Um, the child. Full, yeah, the child. It was born and passed. And I knew it was happening throughout the whole time. I was like, oh my God, you go to the doctor, it doesn't look good, Rev, it doesn't look good. And then I said, you know what? Let people see how I react under this pressure, which was inspiring also. Now, but the good news, I adopted. I adopted. Oh. I have a new baby. Miley. So your, wife, Miley. You, your wife gave birth to a child. And it that passed. Died. And yes. they had that all on TV. Yes. We put it on television. We um, brought the cameras into the hospital, and they saw me mourn and regroup. And how? See, you got to understand, people want to see how you react under pressure. So my show, if I'm going to show you all the good, I want to show you the bad. And then people became. Connected. I couldn't do it. Well, I, I couldn't. Know, but, that kind of tragedy, I want to be. Um, could you do well, it, Kid Rock? I didn't do it. For, I don't like even doing the good stuff. Right. I didn't do it for <laughs> publicity. I did it right. because people want to know how to handle things. And as a reverend and a self-help teacher, you want to show people this is how you talk to your kids. So they showed me talking to all my children. They showed me go through it. They showed me pray. And then they showed me adopt last season. What was wrong with the child? The child um, was born with. You don't want to talk about it, really, but with you know. The, you um, don't want to talk about it? I don't mind. The right. organs grown outside uh, of, okay? That's uh, a really outside bad of the birth chest. defect. Right, right. Yeah. What is that called? I'm not sure. I didn't I really get remember, too yeah. deep into it. I, just I think I have that. Ugh. Well, the organs, well, but the thing is... So it's something that no one can survive. It's, it's no, impossible. No, 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 you can't. But the, the good that came out of it is we found out a lot of people have gone through it. A lot of people was able to connect and see 
how I handled it, and, a lot, and, it, and it healed a lot of people. But then the good news came along last season where we adopted, and this season's coming up, and you'll see the new baby. They, Where'd you get the baby from? The, I'm not telling all that stuff. Why not? Because I don't want to get into all that. But the baby's from see, here, in America. From America? Yeah. Just not a, an African child? You didn't go to Africa? Just a, no, just a normal African. Did you steal the baby? African-American, beautiful baby named Miley Justine Simmons, who is now six months. When I came off tour last night, she was in the bed with my wife. I kissed my wife and my baby, and then I got up and came back out here, and we're playing Madison Square Garden. That's terrific. Why didn't your uh, wife just get an abortion halfway? If, once you, if you knew the whole because, time, do you not agree with that? Because I was just going to sit and, and let God's thing take its process. I didn't want to go through all the abortion thing, and we just was going to let life do wow. what it had to do, and we handled it. And Did um, you think through prayer you could have saved the baby's life? Is that what was going on in your head? In other words, um, yes. I, I don't only think I could save the baby's life. I thought that through prayer I could find out what am I supposed to do? You know, like, okay, I'm going through this. This is a lot, God. I know you won't put too much on me that I can't handle. Maybe I should show it on television. You know, you're praying every morning, and you're carrying this for months and months, and then it finally happens, and you don't know if the baby's going to survive or the doctor's trying to save it. So you sit there, and you deal with it, and, you know, you show people. The main thing that I, I got to show people was how I reacted and how I talked to my children. You seem like a real good guy. I don't know how the a kid best rock, guy. I, I can't figure out what you and Kid it, Rock right? are doing together. It, huh? I mean, when he's in the in the dressing room, he with, is a with the, very nice. I don't man. say no, but I no, mean, he's a nice man. How do you feel about his lifestyle when he's in the, with the kid bitches? Rock, I'm not. Right? I mean, he's getting ready I'm for the show. He's getting blowjobs. I'm not a judge. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do that. He doesn't. Right? You've no. never seen him get a blowjob. Let's say this. You ever seen him getting deep? Have you ever seen his penis? No. You've never seen each other nude. We just rocked the mic together. How do you feel about gay marriage now that you're a religious guy? Are you one of these I, guys against it? I'm not a judgment guy. I, I don't, yeah, right. My thing is, I show people how I live my life. If you love it, people like, you know, Brad Pitt ordered all the episodes of the show. I have many people who are kind of like, without me preaching, I lead by example. You're like, wait, I like this guy. He seems to be balanced. Would so you marry a gay couple, yes or no? I don't marry people. I don't, that's not what I do. What I do is I'm a, um, I teach parenting. And I, I teach see. it on MTV. How do you know how to parent so well? Um, you seem like a, a very together guy. It's a, it comes from instinct. Instinct. And that instinct, and people say, how do you do this so well? And I think of the joke that Kid Rock, or, I mean, Chris Rock always says, how are you supposed to do? Go home, take care of your wife, let her kind of, she's like the boss, you know, I don't argue too much. And people look and think it's amazing because the morals of people are so messed up that they think what I'm doing is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And all You're I'm doing unusual. is... You're unusual. Right. You're unusual. You go home. You know, one thing you probably want to ask, Run, is, well, then how do you... You're famous. You're rich. How do you find that good woman? How did you find your wife? At a modeling um, agency. Where else? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> how are you going to find a good... What, did, you, what did your wife used to do? Go no. ahead. You'll hear. Here's how you find a good woman. All right. You look around and you date. You pick one and you be good. People. The ah. problem is, ah. people are selfish. How can we be satisfied with one if we feel like we're entitled to everything? As in the case of that's Kid the Rock. problem. Yeah. <laughs> like the problem. We have no me. morals. <laughs> See, I have a guideline. My guideline is the Bible, and it teaches all these things that seem to be very strict, but it's not there actually to mess you up. It's there to make your life better. So I have a final authority, and since I have a final authority, which is the Bible says, I can. You can't have two. Right. And since you can't have two, I realize, oh, guess what? That's not in my realm. I can't have words, two. You can't have two, so why commit to one? In other words, <laughs> Kid Rock, nuts. what the Reverend Run is saying is, you know, sometimes these women just can't be playmates and they can't be pinups. That you've got to realize they're real women. They All have, I've been with lately is regular girls. No, that's, nice not, what I'm, girls. that's not my point. Uh -huh. well, it would have girls, been a lot easier if it was. The Reverend Run is saying <laughs> all, these, your point. all these girls have feelings. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're taking a human being, you're using her and throwing her out with the trash. No. Yes, you are. No. Yes, they're, you they're are. They're hurting people. They, they, believe me, at the end, they're hurting. <coughs> yeah. I'm not judging you, but... It, you it's, are it's judging me. him. I'm not judging anybody. <laughs> yes, you are. No, 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 no. You're saying I Kid said, Rock uses you, people. No, no you no, no, said no. that. I just I said... I didn't say anything. ...that you said you're faking them and you're throwing them out with the trash. I'm he just is. saying that most likely these are hurting people. Whether they had fun that night or not, they wake up with their self-esteem hurt. Right. Period. Do you hear that, Kid Rock? I, mine hurts every morning. Your self-esteem. Oh. Yeah, I'll go for that, too. Oh, but you I'll take go for that, too. That, don't yeah. you? you ever take Viagra? No. Never? No. I never will, will you? Hey, this guy, he has an album called Cocky. There's no reason for him to take Viagra. He is strong <laughs> thinking that, you know, he, I'm the greatest. Would I'm you Kid Rock. Let, pounds his chest. Would you let Kid Rock date your daughter? Yes or no? Be honest. 
Hell no. I knew he was going to say hell no. You knew it was coming out just like that? Right. Did I ever do something like that? Is it because he's white? This is a ministry here. Now, listen, be easy on me. Yeah. Kid Rock, and you got to give him some credit. If he came and landed in New York and the first person he wanted to call was Reverend Run, we should know the path he's on. Right. That, is that should answer all of the questions of today. I'm going to turn the mic over to Fafa Flo High, <laughs> if you don't mind. Yes, Fafa Flo. Um, you know what? Reverend Run's biggest fan is hovering outside. He's carrying a book and he's. Oh. Looks like he's about to throw up. Would he be willing to take uh, Sal and Richard's penis in his ear while he speaks to Reverend Run in order to speak to Reverend Run? I'm not watching all of that. (laughs) Y'all do all of that when I'm gone. The Reverend has a limit. Okay, come on in here, High Pitch. You can gush a little. Let let High Pitch uh, Mike meet you for a second. Why are you such a... Go ahead. Say what you want to say. Congratulations, first of all, on all your success. He has my book. Thank you. Beautiful family you've raised. Thank you. Talking Uh, to the microphone, Mike. The show is absolutely great. It's... MTV you know, puts a lot of rock and drugs and sex and all that sh- uh, crap on TV, but your show... All that crap you like, don't have. Tells it like it is. This you know, kid needs you help. Set, you set a positive example for a lot of families out there. Do you have a question you want to ask him? I mean, here's your chance. You watch the show all the time. I do. He, he I, yeah. I, I, I don't go to church much, but I get... You know, most of my spiritual advice from... Do you get the, do you get get the words the of wisdom every morning? Every day. I get Just go to RevRun.com, and you can get a word of wisdom every single morning. You're really into uh, Rev Run, he, huh? He's very down-to-earth, and he he just says it like it is. I see. What's today's word of wisdom on the Rev Run? I haven't got today's, but... Um, Tell him I, what I got it. You got the word I didn't send it to you. You got yesterday's. Oh, I got yesterday's. Hit him with yesterday's, because I, I got up so early, y'all messed up my flow. So, Mike, he's made, the, he's made you into the man you are, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good job. There is one. There is one particular word of wisdom that, if I could just share it with you, really share quickly. it. I want to hear it. This is a great one after a fight I had on the show with um, Hardy. With Hardy. Don't wear a red shirt at Gay Day at Great Oh, uh, What is it? Uh, good morning. Never give away your power to other people's opinions. Remember what God thinks about you. What power do you have? What God thinks about you is much more important than what others think about you. Oh, that that worked for you? It did. Clearly God thank hates God. you. Thank God. Oh. Well, thank God. So, yeah, and what because is you're going here, on here? Because you're, we have a uh, disagreement. And because you're here, I'm not even going to respond to him. I'm, what did he I'm say? I'm just positive in life. <laughs> he just said God hates him. <laughs> well, I think that's <laughs> clear. <laughs> Mike has a tough life. You know, he takes a lot of crap from people. He's got a high-pitched voice. He's not cool did he like win Kid the, Rock. Did he win the big television? Yes. He did. He didn't Two win it. Run cool. He didn't win it, Run. Tell him how you won the television. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Tell him what you did. Uh, I had a transsexual sit on my face. Yeah. <laughs> but you won the television? <laughs> there it is. There's a picture. Oh. I had to go through hell to get Don't to heaven. Don't look at that, but there's a picture. Oh, my God. Look on the screen. Oh. You see it? Uh, That's a transsexual uh, sitting on his face. Uh, 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 <laughs> holy <right>. shit. <laughs> I've had enough of this. I have to. The person, the person. One question real quick. The person transformed from a man. To the reverend. Uh, yes, sir. Sir. Because you're a reverend and you're a man of God, what do you think about all that's going on with Obama's pastor, this pastor Wright? Um, I think that um, he, he probably spoke in anger. And I think that Obama, this is the thing that I do love, handled it so well. I think his speech was amazing. I think that he, Obama, condemned what the guy said. Right. And I think what he said, I was pretty amazed at the speech that Obama put across. And when I talked to Rock, he was like, I like the speech. But then Rock also said, you like the speech, but you said you don't know if it'll help him in the long run. Is that yeah, I don't. I, don't I, I said I got to see the facts at the end of the day. The first thing I, I know is I don't want Hillary Clinton anywhere near the White House. You don't? No. What's, what's wrong with Hillary? <clears throat> what's that? What's, what's wrong you do with wrong? Hillary? Why is everyone turning? Po- she comes off to me as a power-hungry no holds barred will do anything it takes, including stand around and watch her husband get blown in the Oval Office. That's to what get you're going to evaluate her on. What's that? That's what you're going to evaluate her on. No, but I don't think anyone's brought it up. But you're, <laughs> but but you're a Republican. Gonna bring... <laughs> but you're going to vote for John McCain, right? No, I'm. I'm, I'm either going to vote for John McCain or Barack Obama. I don't know which one yet. Well, I tell you, I have. A, I heard that Hillary Clinton refused to have sex with you, and that's why you're. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, listen, you guys. Barack Obama's in big trouble. I'll tell you why. It would be the same as a white guy having a spiritual advisor as a Klansman for the last 20 years. You can't excuse it. He chose this church for his family. This guy is a very close friend. He's clearly a little bit uh, racist, lunatic, kind of combined. 
And if he is the candidate who's saying he exhibits good judgment and will exhibit good judgment in who he chooses for his cabinet and surrounds himself with good people, he's made a terrible choice for his own family. Well, obviously, and you're not in a forgiving mood. I am not. <laughs> this has nothing to do it with... Sounds like maybe you I'm already had a beef with him in the first Absolutely. place. No. You were like, always everybody, all your friends, you don't agree. Everybody doesn't agree with everything you say. And you don't support Hillary Clinton. Didn't, didn't like those anti-Semitic remarks, did you? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't like that kind. If, 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 we know if, who he's voting right. for. <laughs> I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. That's obvious. I am. And, and by the way, was, just because we have a different opinion, don't mean that. Like, why would you have Kid Rock and Rev Run on your show if they don't like Hillary? Well, I, I would have you guys in any time, even though you're a little bit naive. All right, listen. <laughs> and I don't like the anti-American remarks. Now, listen. Well, he didn't make Me them. Neither. The Reverend. There you go. That's true. But I don't care anyway. And great speech, and uh, this is why he's in trouble. There are people like Howard. <laughs> right. All right, listen. <laughs> Mike, you're gushing over the Reverend Run, and I can see why. The Reverend he's Run so is a good man. He's so happy to be in here. He's got, a good, he's got a good advice. All right, calm down. He's got good advice, <laughs> and he knows what he's talking about. I am excited that Kid Rock is going to be performing on the same stage with uh, the good Rev Run, and, of course... Um, uh, Leonard Skinner. And when are they going to solve the murder Jam Master J? of Jam Master J? I'm they not, know who did it. Well, if they do, they, I would be happy to find out, but um, I kind of gave that to a higher power when it happened. You know, uh, I love J. We shared rooms together. We were on tours with, like, amazing relationship. Um, his last tour was actually with me and Kid Rock and Aerosmith, and right after that tour, it happened, and... Um, I retired the group after that. I didn't mm. think it was something that I wanted to continue to do without Jay. But right. Rock came to my house and was like, come on, man, come back on the road with me. I'll, I'll rock with you. And I was like, all right, man. So we're out there rocking. But one thing I can tell you for sure, the show at Madison Square Garden is going to be off the hizzle. Well, I'm happy to hear that. It's about time because the hizzle has been out of uh, New York City for <laughs> quite some time, as you we know. We shall rock. We will. That's my prophecy. No question. Yeah. Uh, Kid Rock, uh, great seeing you. You too. I look forward to this. Try to try to limit yourself to one woman a month. How's that? We'll start with that. You can see he was on his way when he committed to get married, which shows us. And you got to remember, he's sitting here with the Reverend. He's on his way. Give hey, him a Rev. hand. Hallelujah. Uh, right. What is it, Irish John? Hey, Rev, uh, OJ, innocent or guilty? Wait a minute, dude. We were just getting ready to end this show. Y'all <laughs> oh, trying to push me past my limits here. <laughs> Go to RevRun.com and get today's word of wisdom. And uh, Kid Rock, real quick, at the concert, will you be picking girls out of the audience uh, to have sex with after the show? Go no, ahead. we are going to be taking <laughs> communion after the show in the limo. Wow, That's the is... only thing that's going to happen in the limo. We'll be taking communion. The Reverend has spoken. Let's end on a good note. If, Let's play the music. To... <laughs> if you see a hot chick in the audience, Reverend, will you pass her on to Kid Rock? No, the only thing I'll be doing, we'll be praying before the show, and then we're going to rock extremely hard. It's not like a... One last question. In your worst days, when you were really bad, when you were suicidal... You're still going. When you were you suicidal... You won't let it go. What was the worst thing you ever did with a woman? Shh. I'm a married man. You won't say. <laughs> Boy, there was a movie that just went on in his head. Yeah. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> Did you finish on a woman's face? Hey, That's what I, think I can't about say that. Say. He was about to say. You and the never... worst thing he thought of was getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't going to drive the Reverend crazy. How were you going to kill yourself? How were you going to do it? I was scared to death. I thought about it. I was like, I'm not doing this. What were you going to do? Were you going to put something in Coca-Cola? Uh, were you yeah, going to drink yeah. something? What uh, were you going to drink? There were several thoughts. I looked out of a window and said, ah, I don't want to do that. I might get hurt. Yeah. I thought about poison. That probably won't taste good. You know, just some real All right, common sense did. crap went on in my mind. Like, Fair enough. I'm not doing this. I love common sense. Kid, good to see Howard again, man. Very nice to see Howard. How do you avoid it when he tries to, to bait you every time about the girls you've been with? And her? He's been baiting me for, I don't know, it must be 10 years now. I got it down. You got it down to a science at this point. Uh, Can't get you. Other people, yes, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what's going on. <laughs> Rev, what would you think about the uh, Church of Howard? It's cool, man. I was happy to be here. I think it was really cool. I enjoyed the balance of the whole situation. Plus, I knew how to handle that dude. Now, what about what about your big fan, Mike? High pitch, Mike. Mike? Yeah. Him? About him? Yeah. He's the coolest. Mike, come on over here, man. Talk Anybody to supporting me? I appreciate this dude, man. He's standing up for the rev when I'm not around, making sure my name is thrown around the Howie Stern show. And Keep it out there. And he's done some serious stunts on, you know, just for just to watch your show on high depth. I had to go through hell to get to heaven. That's what I keep going through my mind. <laughs> 
Mike, you finally met Rev. You've been you've been sort of waiting for this moment for a long time. This is a big deal. I mean, this I'm is appreciate a, this is a big day. If, if anyone out there has troubles in their life or needs some guidance, this is a guy to go to. So yeah. RevRun.com, cool, you can man. get a word every morning. Started with Lisa G's show. Right. <laughs> well, not. I went to your church. You took you did. me. Yeah, that's right. We went right. years ago. Yes. So Mike, you use Rev's advice on a daily basis. I mean, it gets I you. I do. I do. I start time. my morning, and you know, it's not just me that gets it. You know, CEOs get it. Everybody. Oprah Winfrey yeah. gets it. Everybody. Yeah. Yep. You know? yep. And that's why you do it, Rev, for, for stuff like this, for people to apply it to their daily lives. Exactly. Right? It's something that whatever I'm dealing with in that moment, when I wake up, I um, figure out how I'm going to fix the problem, and I send the word out of how I untangle myself, and usually people are tangled up in the same mess. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by, Rev. Greece. Right. But, uh, this is a guy who speaks common sense. Cock, Robert, like Robert, I want to suck your big black cock. I think you're absolutely wonderful. Robert, Robert, I want you to take your big black penis and rub it all over my red chafed skin and then fuck my eye socket until it straight oh, <laughs> straightens out. Thank you, Robert. Deli, they canceled your bagel? Oh. No. What is it's it? It's from uh, Crumbs Bakery. It's not from Crumbs Bakery. You know, my cupcake... Uh, uh, is is for Gary's charity, Life Beat, which right. is it fights you know AIDS and stuff. And uh, Gary came to me, and you know I like trying to do charitable stuff, and and uh, said if we have a cupcake named after you, you plug it, all the proceeds will go to this Life Beat AIDS thing. And since we did that over a year ago, it's been a lot of money. It's been like substantial, it's like over thirty grand, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. It hasn't been that much, but they handed us a check for ten grand a couple of weeks ago with more on the way. Right, okay. and I was happy about that. So after the this high pitch mic tirade, I guess uh, it got around to a bunch of people. Uh, and this is Life Beat, the charity, writing a letter to Jason Bauer, who's the crumbs guy. Okay. Dear Jason, it is with sincere regret that I write to let you know that Life Beat can no longer accept donations from the sale of the Artie Lang cupcake. Wow. It has recently come to my attention. <laughs> it has recently come to my attention that Artie has made. A very offensive statement on the radio regarding HIV AIDS infection, as well as other remarks offensive to the constituency Life Beat serves. I don't know what that is. A national HIV AIDS prevention organization and advocate for people living with AIDS, Life Beat condemns the remarks made by Mr. Lang and cannot, in good conscience, accept further donations from goods or services that are associated with Mr. Lang. <laughs> <laughs> Under the circumstances, I trust that you can understand our position. We do appreciate your past generosity and hope that your interest in Life Beats mission will continue with other projects. Wow. You gotta feel like a real dick. Now, you know, look, I, what I a do heal you are. And I told Gary You're I gross. said I said <laughs> You really you know, are. What, what did you tell him what the see can I, I gotta talk about what the comments were because I was in a, a most uncomfortable board meeting where this was discussed. You right. Know? Yeah. And everyone's looking at me because, you know, I'm the Artie Lang guy. Yeah, so what'd you say? You know, so here are the comments. I just shut up. I'd just be like, look, man, I don't know. Here's what happened. They I got, can't defend him. They yeah. got well, emails. they know the comments. They heard it. They got email complaints right. from several people in the gay community asking, how can you work with a guy when Artie said on two different occasions to a guy, I hope you die of AIDS. Right. Talk about I hope you fact. get AIDS you soon. I hope about. your lover takes the rubber off tonight and oh. fucks you in his ass with his AIDS-ridden cock. And you come here tomorrow with fucking sores on your face. Why are you getting so angry? 40 fucking pounds. What is going on? You know what, Howard, Howard. Party, what's Howard, going on? Howard, what's going on? Fuck you. What do I want to say something to him? No, let what's me, going on? Why are you so mad? Let me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. Let me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. It ain't going to be a CD. It's going to be my fucking fist in your face. All right, get out of here. Because I'm a gay basher. Feel the shit from that from that sister comment, dude. Feel it all coming down on you. And it'll continue to come down on you. Yeah, well, forever, forever, you'll be praying for AIDS. I, I was, I was mad at an individual person, and uh, yeah, but you, on top of that, you're calling him a fag. Yeah, I, your, right. your way of berating yeah. him was to say, I'll pull, I'll I think pull, you're gay. I told Gary, I'll pull tapes of him saying the same shit to people. When straight guys it's get true. mad, they do that sometimes. I've heard Gary uh, go. I have. I, or, I didn't about, think I did it. I already pointed out I didn't. I, he's oh, right. But yeah, Fred but, plays it all the time. But he I calls think Elliot that, off on a fucking homo. And uh, I think that a tirade of <laughs> yeah, go uh, take another hairbrush in your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking homo. <laughs> you so, uh, fucking homo. Yeah. There you go. Have they heard that statement? Do they want to keep working with you, guy? Yeah. You might be off the board now. You're trying to get rid of me, or no? I'm not. That I'm trying to say. Pulsating cock was fully encased what, in my mouth. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying. <laughs> I would be willing to apologize just because... Who gives a shit? Who gives okay. a fuck? I feel bad that they're not going to get the money anymore. I mean, I, I 
I would he, like them here's to keep the getting thing. the money. Look, here's the bottom oh, line. Can I ask two questions? Because here's what came from the media. I really would. Do, are you sorry for what you said? Yes. absolutely. I, I, look, I'm not sorry th- that I said anything to, to that mic jerk off. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if look, if someone heard that who has AIDS or has a relative with AIDS or a friend, I realize how that could be very painful. And I'm sorry about that. I'm on a radio show and I say a lot of shit that's offensive. I would never want to upset somebody who had a disease like that. No. So uh, I'm sorry about that. If I know that what Artie, and again, maybe I don't agree with Artie's statement, but I do know as someone who tries to be funny five hours a day, and sometimes you get worked up on the air, and you're trying also to be sort of funny. He was. It was his attempt at humor. But yes, but Artie has the same had point, a number. He's had George Takei say to him, "You've got to stop this stuff." When did he say that? He said well, that after. He, he said that after the same incident. Just one yes, time. Yes, but you've continued. Right. See, there was a second. See, there's a guy. Oh, here's what's going on. <laughs> there's a guy that listens to our show who's gay, right. who's monitoring what Artie says, and then sending letters to the New York Times and the New York Post and oh, all that. Fuck him. So it wasn't the first time. It was, <laughs> the, it was the second time. So if you're time. listening, fuck you. Get a life. Mm. Well, I, this is not my this is not my stance. I don't I don't what about, I don't you, hope you anybody dies of AIDS. I got mad once. Shouldn't and the said top it. priority be to cure AIDS? So who cares where the money yeah, comes from? Yeah, it's good money actually well, because actually, yeah. this bad thing that Artie says is raising money for a good cause. See, we, we don't. Right. I could we point to bad shit. I, I could pull a tape of all of us saying bad shit about gay people. <laughs> never me. Well, not not, me. never Robin. I love gay but people. But I think I think see, I, I guarantee I can remember one incident with you where you you went over the line. I thought with gay shit. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? I, I, you know, I, well, I, why turn all of us in? I'm not turning all these in. No, I'm why just run saying, it for us? We want a cupcake. I don't want people to think <laughs> this is my like stance in life. This is my opinion. I hope well, you got the but you got anti gay ch- comedian. You got to change some of your like. I, I think you know. I used to use uh, a lot more gay humor, and over the years, I've become more sensitive. You definitely have. It. There's I no have. doubt. Well, I, society I is so become, maybe you got to just become a little more sensitive to this. I mean, you know, you watch Eddie Murphy's uh, thing, Delirious, in 1983. He says fag right. about. Right. Two million but it's times, right, but it's not changed. 1983. But that's that it. was also uh, that's the comedy I grew up on, and it's definitely an influence on me. And here's uh, the thing: already snap I, out of I'm it. I'm going to contact Livebeat. I'm being serious now. I would like you to figure out a way where they could still get money. All I right. Won't, I would won't you be my... willing to go to the board of Livebeat and make out with a dude? In front of them. <laughs> no. Because that's what they've requested. No. This is how pro-gay I am. <laughs> you need to take out your cock at a blowjob from another man. Do you want me to catch AIDS? No, you guys, will not Guys, 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 help me out here. i got to go to these fucking meetings. Oh, okay. <laughs> Neither one of them helped me out. <laughs> I know. I, you Did you know, tell them that Artie took a load from a guy in his chest? Yeah, what about, what I about told that. I t- see, here's the, th- here's the thing that's hard to communicate to the board. I know that I've been Artie, to Met Games. I know that Artie oh, didn't no. mean it. You know what I mean? Of course I know. But then, not. But then I they don't said, want anybody to die of AIDS. They said, I was is there, mad. Is there any promise that you can give us? And I don't know how, you know, they weren't asking me to give them a promise, but they, they yeah, said... Yeah, Fafafui's working with you. Are you sure that he would never do it again? No. And I said I wasn't sure. Was no. Like, oh. You know what? I could almost guarantee... Hey, I Artie, wouldn't, why don't you I go... Wouldn't, I wouldn't wish anybody dead of AIDS. I could guarantee Art, that. Why don't you go the other way and make a cupcake for an anti-gay organization like those God Hate Fags people? Uh, you know what? We you may have I mean? to contact them. <laughs> make a Somebody cupcake. will take that money. No, I would never do that. I know. Never. I know. All right, listen. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. And you're going to have to put it behind you. And maybe, uh, maybe you'll this uh, think happens. before I you speak. I got kicked off the board of my charity. Yes, I remember yeah, that. What was you did? Why? Yeah, because yeah. I'm on this show. Yeah, what, what charity uh, was that, Robin? Uh, the um, Child Abuse Prevention Program. <laughs> but not because <laughs> of specific statements. Yes, no, no, yeah, she did. Well, oh, yeah. it wasn't a statement I made. It was statements made on the show. Yeah. I, I know exactly. Can I tell the story? Sure. I, I lo- First of all, Robin did more for that charity. Really? They were like a tiny charity, and Robin got them to do it at dinner every year, got us all to go to the dinner, right. got us all involved and everything. Yeah, I remember that. And she was really, uh, you know, really did a lot with that. Um, child prevention, you know, uh, child abuse prevention, and uh, we started to do It's Just Wrong That's on the right. show. That's wow. right. And, okay, so it was, you know... <laughs> you mean where fathers and daughters <laughs> well, address no, see, each other? It started with husbands and wives. <laughs> right. Right? And then it went to fathers and daughters, but I think brothers and sisters is where they drew the line. <laughs> right. But they didn't even, like, give, they didn't even call Robin and tell her <laughs> that they were upset. They just sent well, a letter actually, like that. Actually, they were calling frantically, and I wasn't feeling well at the time. And I was just like, look, I can't deal I'm with I'm not you. feeling well. I just saw a father disrobe his daughter. <laughs> That's right. I was like, I can't deal... You know, I used to talk 
them down because they'd call after every one of these things. Right. And I used to talk them down and make sense to them every time and, and calm them down. But that time I was just like, I'm too sick to, to deal with what they're going through. Well, this is coming and they at, kicked me off. This is coming at a bad time because <laughs> right after I get this letter, right after I got that letter, Teddy handed me my bullet points for my PSA about the end. Not saying it. Oh, uh, yeah. Freaking George Takei. <laughs> I got to record that now. By the way, George Takei got Artie to record a PSA, yeah. to promise to record a PSA that is that that promotes the fact that you should not gay bash and that you should not use the word fag. And do you right. know why you that faggot? It? It. it had nothing to do with <laughs> so, You're a that's... fucking loser faggot. All right. Well, so anyway, losers weren't upset at that statement. So anyway, <laughs> so now George sent Artie bullet points. Yeah. This is for the public service announcement. Yeah, and Let again, the incident that spawned this was when I came out to him. I didn't think I had any of this in me, and maybe I was repressing it. And he told me the same exact story. It was so freeing, first of all. Yeah, right. Um, as I'm sure you know, well, maybe in... Well, I think I know what you're... But, but I was so... Uh, it was so freeing. Yeah. And um, we, uh, we, just let, we just let it all go, and... Um, well, you know, I'm really touched that you're sharing this with me. Well, it, well, I got to tell you, George, you're such a compassionate, nice person. And you know my life and my comedy and what I'm based on right, and everything. Right. And I, I hate myself for jokes I've made. I, I got to tell you, it's never happened again. Now, this was when I was 24 years old, but we had full yeah. gay sex. Yeah. We had, uh, right. we, we, uh, I gave him oral, he gave me oral. Um, I, uh, I... I had I gave you know I fucked him in the ass and and he uh, he fucked me in the ass. So he was really hurt by that and he goes, okay, to pay me back, you know, the guilt yeah. trip. Will you do this uh, PSA for the human rights organization? First of all, I don't know where the fuck they're going to air this. He goes, you know, exactly. YouTube. But yeah, nowhere. I, I have to just wing it, but hit bullet points. No television channel is going to put on an Arnie Lang public service announcement uh, promoting not using the word gay or fat. Right. So, but how? But listen to these bullet points. How am I going to me? How Let am me I going to sound? They didn't write it. You're supposed to just riff and use these bullet points. Right. How am I going to sound sincere? Uh, <laughs> words that are meant to hurt people. <laughs> Words whose sole purpose is to say that some people are worth less than others are wrong. <laughs> Over the years, I have made jokes about gay people using one of those words. It was easy for a long time using the anti-gay F word, making jokes about other guys, but not anymore. <laughs> uh, Quite frankly, it's just as easy. But In 2008, I'm resolving to make a change. Knowing gay people, including my friend George Takei, who appears with me on The Howard Stern Show... It's helped me to see that the anti-gay F-word isn't funny. I'm going to stop saying that word this year. At the same time, I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> and sometimes I may slip up. So for all of 2008, I'm going to donate $100 <laughs> to the Human Rights Campaign, the country's largest gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, uh, transgender organization. They're probably not going to take your money. Each and every time I slip up. If you catch me on tape, on whoa, I didn't see this part. What? If you catch me on tape, on camera phone, anywhere there's a recording of me saying the word, send it in, and I will make the donation. Oh. Wait, Artie, so I might get to believe that not only is it if you say it on the show, but if I'm at a restaurant and yes. I could catch you at a tirade, I could get a hundred bucks a pop. Right? Yeah, you can't even say it in your personal life. Wow, dude, <laughs> that could be a major. You're gonna be broke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hope. Well, my bookie's gonna have to pay me now. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, David Letterman supports gay people. He does, uh, I have to call him calling a, a gay bathhouse. <laughs> you want to hear that? Yes, I love that call. You like that call. All right. Wait. I do, too, if I could find it. Thank you for calling. How may I help you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Very good. My name's Vinny Favale. <laughs> are you familiar with David Letterman? Yes, I am. Okay. We'd like to make some arrangements to shut down the club for a couple of hours and have him come in. Have him come in in where? To the gay bathhouse. <laughs> have David Letterman come in to the bathhouse. Well, hold hold on because here's here's Rupert. Rupert happens to be David's lover. Hold on. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hey, I'm Rupert. I'm uh, I'm in with Dave. Okay. We want to find a little bit about your facilities. All right. Let me put Dave on the phone. Okay. Hold on one second. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Is is this the uh have I got the uh, the bathhouse? Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me let me ask you something now, because uh, you know this is this is very uh, between us. No problem. All right. Now let me. Are, are there are there towel boys available? Um, they're not towel boys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there are guys in here, customers who come in here who wear towels. Right. And, uh, and what's what's your nationality? My nationality? Yeah. I'm African American. Oh, black. Yes. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're pretty well hung, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty well hung. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of money, and I know you, uh, you, you black people like a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume any nationality. Like what do you, what do you say we get together? Uh, your, your penis and my money. <laughs> you know we've got internships coming up uh, pretty soon. You know. But I'm sure you can find. Stop laughing, idiot. you homo. <laughs> Are you a top or a bottom, sir? I'm a bird. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> So your log is brown, and you want to get up to browner, right? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Well, I, I think we could do that. <laughs> so you guys come in. Do you ever get a little mud on the helmet? Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, don't like it. <laughs> don't are, like are you a big fan of Paul Schaefer's? Uh, 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 yeah, sure. He's a great musician. You, you could taste his ass on my cock. <laughs> <laughs> I pay him in cock, and, and he sucks a big dick. <laughs> How can I help you? Because I have other customers right now. Can I fuck you in the ass, sir? <laughs> no. We'll, we'll, we'll make it a stupid human trick. <laughs> Are you guys coming down here? I'll, I'll give you my top ten inches. How would that be? <laughs> hey, are you there? Wow. Homo. I'm Hello, homo, fudge packer. So, that guy owes three thousand dollars to George uh, K's charity. You know, oh, I'm in all seriousness, I'm very, very sorry. It's so, terrible when you get kicked off a charity. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. am I, because I, I really would like them to keep getting the money. And it actually, whenever we did that about three times, we presented them a check, and yeah. it always made me feel good. Well, I mean, it really did. I, don't, I feel like I don't wish AIDS on anybody in the world. I don't feel you're anti-gay, but I think some of your rhetoric was, in other words, it's hard for them to associate right. with you. If you're that vehement in your, you know, in your uh, it, language, Look, in your I respect. Attacks. I respect yeah. their integrity. I mean, yeah. it is money, and they don't want money from the wrong places. But I, I would say that based on that one, it tirade, would be like you know the Anti Defamation League taking money from Hitler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's quite as extreme, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it reminds me too, like. When that political correctness curve started to go over, like, I remember Kennison. Do you remember that Kennison, uh, when he was hosting something, sure. El Elton John called him a pig? Right. Remember that? Yeah. And there was that bit he did that really had people up in arms. And this is when it started to turn, I think, about um, Rock Hudson. Remember that bit he did about Rock Hudson going, it was that last cock. Why'd I suck it? Why'd I suck it? <laughs> well, all right. Well, I mean, the was... Artie Lang cupcake. <laughs> Is is still there? It's still there. I don't know if it is. Uh, well, they haven't canceled your cupcake. Crumbs just got the letter that Lifebeat won't be accepting any money for. Well, it. I better be getting the money now. Then <laughs> <laughs> where's all the money going? Well, I'm sorry, Artie. I know that probably does hurt you. I, it, you know what? It does. So I'm sorry, guys. I was a good. Uh, was it was a, great, a good run. It was, was a good run. Yeah, we had a great run together. <laughs> Gary, do you think Artie's really remorseful for uh, for what he said, or just because he kind of like got caught? I don't even know that he's remorseful. He seemed more irritated that they threw him off the board. It wasn't more like I'm sorry. It's more like you guys do it too. I can't believe I'm getting fucked. And he's, yeah, he seemed to throw you under the bus a little bit. Yeah, you know, and I have used the word. I really didn't even thought I had used it, and you know, I probably won't use it again. Is this gonna? Is it gonna make it uh, awkward for you now? Since uh, you know, at the charity. No, it was already awkward enough at the board meeting <laughs> but when we discussed this. I don't. I can't imagine it get any more awkward than that. Hey, Artie. So, dude, are you remorseful about your uh, your comments? No, not at all. Yeah, but a hundred bucks. Do you uh, do you give us a little taste of what your PSA is gonna sound like? Don't say fag. You know, I, I today the big headline in the newspaper, especially here in New York, is that. They found out, now this is shocking, that our ex-governor who had to resign for going to a prostitute, turns out he might have gone to a whole nother prostitute. He turned up on another client list. <laughs> yeah. What? Now, now, first of all, wouldn't you have expected, I mean, do you really think Elliot Spitzer, this was the first time he went to a hooker? If he's into hookers, he probably tried different. But the thing is, this guy, you know, he's a public official. Yeah. Okay. So he tried one prostitution service. Stick with that one. Because at least 
if you start to spread it around to all the different services, it's going to get out. It, people start to talk. They and do. Yeah, it's, it just gets ridiculous. He so wanted to get caught. And plus, he wired funds. Who does that except for Jerry Springer when he was, when he was mayor of Cincinnati? He wrote a check to a hooker. Yeah. That's how he got caught. Elliot was, I mean, he knows. This guy does investigations. You can't wire money. It's exactly how you catch a guy. It's amazing how badly he wanted to get caught. He really didn't want the job. I love the post, though. And there he hoes again. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there, there's a book out of great post headlines I just really? read about. And you know what's really embarrassing? Not only to Elliot Spitzer, but to all men. The chick that they show on the cover of the post today, that the, the latest one he's banging, is a fat chick. He paid a fat chick to fuck him. Well, she's the madam, and she says she serviced him yeah. personally. Yes. And, you know, she's wow. really not that attractive. And he paid her. And I know the wife's got to be saying, I don't understand something. I'm way more attractive than this girl. Why? And this is something women are never going to understand. What happened there? I might my throat for a second. But this is something women are not going to understand. That for a guy, it isn't always about the looks. You could take an uglier chick, but if she really has desire and really knows how to lick your sack and do all the wild yeah, things. Yeah, the dirty stuff you won't do. Yeah, it's, it's so much more exciting. You know, sex is a funny thing for a guy. It's got to, you know... But it why won't you tell your wife what you want? Because then they don't even do it anyway. Look, and then if they... They, 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 they see, won't do it and then they look down on you. But it's not even fun if you have to tell someone what... Would like, you have to tell this chick? Look, Robin, there's a certain type of rim job I take from a hooker who looked like Martin Scorsese. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I've never been with chicks who give a rim job. But, I've never, well, I've never had a girl tongue my asshole. You know, never. most non-hooker broads that I want won't that. do that. Yeah, but I don't know that I even want it. Oh, you want it. But it's, I do. <laughs> Listen, I... You've had that. <laughs> I, 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 this is one of... The only time I had a threesome was with two hookers. All right. And it, I didn't pay for it, though, but someone set it up for me. Well, how's that happen? Uh, I was in Vegas. Uh, you know what? I was opening up for Norm at the Rio in Vegas, and uh, this guy who uh, who was like our liaison, taking us around to to the show and dinner. I can't believe Lifebeat doesn't want your money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they hear this story; they'll they'll start accepting the money again. He says to me, "I see him," and this guy says to me, "He's like a real party guy." And like Norm didn't want anything to do with him because he was creeped out by him. But you know, I would get into Vegas and. You know, sometimes I get like some ecstasy and take it to stay up all night. Oh, Jesus! Right. And um, can't believe Norm was creeped out by that behavior. Because <laughs> uh, you're you getting know, rim jobs from hookers and ecstasy. <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I would get I get into Vegas. And I didn't feel like going to sleep. I'd literally fly from L.A. with like a toothbrush, and I'd have to open two nights in a row. So I wouldn't want to oversleep. So I would take an ecstasy, not even get high, just to stay up to do the show. But this guy got me the ecstasy. So he knew all these contacts. Right. So after one weekend of that... Uh, Get to the rim job. Right. So uh, I, he says to me... Uh, uh, talking of long-winded. Yeah, this, talk this about guy, a long-winded story. <laughs> Jimmy Florentine's breaking up with you. A bunch of people <laughs> laughing at that part of the story. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm doing backstory on the character. Go ahead. So the next time we go back, he knows I like to kind of party and hang out. So he says to me... Uh, he <laughs> figured that out. He, uh, he gives me the like a couple of hits of ecstasy and he goes hey uh listen go upstairs and just get um get comfortable and i'm gonna send you up someone from the hotel is gonna brief you on the itinerary for this weekend uh -huh. and he had never done that before i'm like itinerary i just you know the show times are eight and then you know he's like no nah, i just get really there's gonna be some different stuff this weekend so i go up there and it's the nicest suite still i've ever had at a hotel uh, someone dropped out and i got like a suite like norm had i had a little pool in the fucking thing and the rio it wraps around and you see all of vegas i go up there and uh, there's all booze whiskey set up and 20 minutes later the door uh, there's a knock at the door and i honestly had no inkling i really thought it was going to be an itinerary guy and i open the door and it's too you know God, they were like nines. Wow. Solid nines. A, a brunette see, and see, a blonde. Spitzer needed a friend like this guy. Yeah, right. well, Vegas is full of them. He needed a guy, one guy he could trust. A handler. Right. Like, Ralph's my guy. Like, yeah. Like, when I was single, and and this was, guy and, you know, shit. I didn't want my kids to know, you know, I was dating around and stuff. Right. Ralph would help facilitate where I would meet people <laughs> and stuff. And I could trust him. He never, ever gave out any details. See, Ralph should go to Vegas. That's yeah. where he might be a career person. Because right. hotels for, for hot, hot, you know, VIP. 
VIPs and entertainers? No, that would be an actual job. He can't handle that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, does he have to show up all the time? These yeah. guys are slick guys, you know. So they come in and uh, they they got like real hot stripper, like those Hooters type shirts, belly shirts. Yeah. yeah. And Howard, were, I'll never forget the one was, they were both smoking, big fake tits, blonde, brunette, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> both of them had that thing where their stomachs were so, like, they were so thin where you could kind of see the hip bone. Yeah, you know, I love that. Oh, my God. I love that. I love them like they look like Biafrans. Yeah, and they were tan right. and, yeah. like, really nice asses. Big fake tits and, and almost no body weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I, it's two big tits you just walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> With legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we'll call the guy <laughs> who set this up Johnny. So he's just Johnny. Uh, wants us to give you a lap dance. And I was like, really? Wow. I mean, these must have been $5,000 whores or something. I mean, they were really <laughs> hot, and they were both in their 20s, I assume. So uh, I go, do you want a drink? They're like, yeah, I pour them. We, we all do. And they drink like strippers. We're doing straight shots of warm jack. Oh. They must we're going to need a triple, pal. Well, that's what it seemed like, because <laughs> they, they were both down in drinks. Know, like they were, how big a job this was. They were drinking like it's Dean either Martin. That or, either that or 30 showers after we fucked <laughs> you. what they were doing. <laughs> like, they were like, oh, you got a little doc. Right. So <laughs> that guy's Thank you. Yes. So I, we sit on the this, we sit on this big velour like blue Vegas type couch, real cheesy, and we all have drinks. And they they start giving me a lap dance, and mm. they they get into their thongs, they get topless, and then they're in minutes just completely naked, and they're going wow. on my shirt and shit and rubbing uh, your titties. Yeah, you know, I'm rubbing my titties, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And uh, was this when them? you were heavy, or were you? No, uh, I was actually very thin. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, it was. It, 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 this is Th like that makes it so much sexier. This is about five months before <laughs> I got the job with you guys. Okay, because it was the second season of the show. So I, uh, so they, they, st one of them starts. The blonde starts making out with me, and oh. the blonde was clearly like filthier. Yeah. Pig. And uh, but Dirty I was pig. more attracted to the brunette. It's uh -oh. weird. Isn't know? it so, always the way it is? I, I like. I which I know you've said this before. Threesomes <laughs> are weird. I'd rather be one hot chick I can focus on because you don't know what to do. <laughs> so they go, hey, let's let's get more comfortable in the bedroom. And I go in there and I, I'm waiting for like you know the, the stroke of midnight. Like when? How much did he pay for here? <laughs> and uh, we go in the bedroom. We get on the bed and uh, I aggressively go towards the brunette because mm -hmm. I just thought she was hotter. Right. And just more my type and uh i start making out with her and the uh, the other chick is like kissing my neck and stuff and uh wow and then the, you must have paid a fortune and then the one the, and then the the blonde the, the the filthier one had rubbers so uh she of course put, she put the blonde puts a rubber on me with her mouth nice and then uh and then i lean over and i start banging the brunette right and uh they don't care i'm banging her and uh you know, uh, at this point, sort of in my head, it was it was so much fun. But I'm thinking, what's the like? Is the is the what's blonde the cleaning me out? Yeah, <laughs> like, what's the blonde doing? I should have made the blonde clap her hands so she wouldn't steal anything. <laughs> so you tell me the blonde put her tongue up your ass. So right, so yeah. Oh. So while I'm like you know doing missionary with this uh, girl, I I'm wondering where the the blonde is. And yeah, sure enough, I feel her starting to kiss my back. And it gets lower and lower. Oh my god! And she fucking she she just shoved her tongue in my ass. Wow! And uh, and I like went. I went. Whoa! <laughs> wow! I I, uh, I didn't know what to do at first. I was like, oh my god! And then you should have just oh. taken a shit. Uh, and I was starting to think, when did I shit last? Did I shit on That's the plane? What I mean. But thank God I hadn't. I'd showered in L.A. Right. Wow. Nice. So. I, at first it was showered in LA. At first it was startling. Do you forget the brunette you're banging? No. Well, you can't you I'm, continue your motion? I'm there? having intercourse. Did you blow your load in a second? So after what that? happened was at first it was startling and I thrust it forward so hard I almost like I almost crushed the brunette. <laughs> and then I was gonna say get out of there and then man, she was she was good at it because hmm. she gave me and it's one of the only ones I've ever gotten, she she gave me a rim job. Wow. I mean, and and a it, thorough it, tongue bath. It became so sensual. Really? And like so erotic. Wow. Uh, I I about about 20 seconds later had like the most incredible like orgasm I've ever had. 
you know, banging the other uh-huh. chick. Do you think that, it, was it weird that you just made out with her and you're thinking, how many, how many of the tongues, you know, how many times she's tongued a guy's ass? I was able to put that out of my head. Yeah, uh, but you definitely don't kiss her again, right? No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> so I gave, after, uh-huh. after that, I gave, I gave them both a, uh, an ecstasy. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, she needed it, so for generous. sure. <laughs> and uh, then the other one, uh, then the blonde started blowing me again. Uh-huh. Wow. And from the ecstasy, though, it takes a long time to come. And uh, oh, she must have been getting oh, a crimp oh, in her neck oh, or something. Oh, oh. And uh, I ended up finishing, but it took a while. So I, ended up, I, I came twice. And, wow. You know, and I said, do I, do I owe you anything? I was, and she said, no, no, we, we have strict instructions not to take a thing from you. Uh, and they were good whores because they wow. wouldn't take a thing. And, and I went back downstairs, and uh, he was at the craps table, this guy Johnny. Right. And he looked at me. He was a typical like Vegas party guy. Like sometimes these guys are pains in the ass, but there's times they're the guy you want around. Right. <laughs> so he goes, "Hey, how was the itinerary?" <laughs> <laughs> and I, I walked up to him and I said, "The only thing I could think of saying, I said, what? No redhead." <laughs> Wow. Well, do you know that uh, on 2020 last week, they had a two-hour series on prostitution in America? Right. And what they uncovered was these girls don't like their job. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? I asked, I asked them. Diane Sawyer to find but out. But abor- they sure know how to act because, you know, to, she didn't need to put her tongue up on no. his asshole. I mean, that was pretty nice. She Pete, felt you're on neglected. The and I, I yeah. begged the guy, Johnny, to, I, how, how much did you pay? I said, I got to know how much you paid him because... And you know what he said to me? He goes, you know, you'll be depressed. Don't worry about it, man. They're friends of mine. And oh, he, he wow. never gave me the, the number. But yeah. I said, what if I want to hire them? He goes, I'll give you the number, but I don't worry about it. It's not me. You know, that's Wow. wow. Uh, Pete, so they got stiffed. <laughs> she ate your asshole for free. Now, I got a feeling this guy, you know, did favors for them. Yeah. Right. Pete, you're on the air. Hey, now. What's up, Howard? Hey, now. Yeah, I had a next girlfriend, a uh, Puerto Rican girl. And uh, Say we no were, more. You know, we were doing it, you know, and oh, I like Artie, ecstasy. First time I ever did it. She's like, I don't know, four or five times she's done it. So she's telling me, oh, I do this thing great and blah, blah, blah. So uh, she's like, just, you know, lay on your stomach. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know, what's going on here? Next thing you know, she's got her tongue up my ass, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I'm all effed up from the ecstasy, and I, I don't know what the hell to think. I loved it. I loved it. Every time after that. I had to do it. Wow. See, she did it once. Now she's t- eating your ass every single time. Right, yeah. Every single time. Well, you know, it's a th- I'm not going to say it's a thing well, with we Puerto Rican girls, <laughs> but there's a guy I know and uh, who, will rename, who will remain nameless Yeah. who uh, was dating this Puerto Rican girl. And he said to me, I will only date Puerto Rican girls. He goes, this chick put her tongue up my ass. He <laughs> said, the hairs on my arm stood up. Robin knows the guy. Yeah. yeah. And I said, you're kidding. I said, you think that's like a Puerto Rican thing? He goes, I've dated a ton of white broads. And no one had put their tongue up there in my ass. So only this Puerto Rican girl. He I'm says she's a real great. player. Well, what we were talking about was And then why he went and married a white chick. A guy <laughs> goes to a hooker. Right. Right. And so you're telling me these women who claim to love you and want to spend the rest of their lives with you and They don't love you. And you know, <laughs> plight you their troth, whatever that is, they won't do this stuff. They probably do it but only under protest. Yeah, that's Robin right. Will you eat a guy's kidding. ass? Honestly. You're like a proper lady. I'm not lady. married to anybody. Yeah, but you won't you won't eat a guy's ass. You don't want to do that. I have no idea. <laughs> nah. Well, I know you. You're just not eating any ass. A lot of guys, especially mama's boys like myself, Italians have that Madonna whore thing, you know. Yeah. The wife You got to marry a good girl. The wife doesn't do shit like that, but But it's also hot when a chick likes all kinds of wild shit done to her. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So. Robin loves eating my ass. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell. Uh, but Jimmy, that was, uh, Jimmy, does Robin ever eat your ass? <laughs> With a knife and a fork. <laughs> All right, I got to take a break. I'm running uh, late here. Uh, we'll be back right after these words. Hey, it's Artie Lang, and this is one to grow on. Uh, I advocate uh, getting rim jobs from two whores and a threesome. Uh, brunette, blonde, if you can get a redhead, then there's fire in the hole. That's great as long as it's not a three alarm fire. Make sure she shaves. And uh, it's an extra $50 for some of these disgusting, filthy slut cunts to lick your asshole dry and, um, and sense use their tongue as a bidet and uh, give you a rim job. So I'm four whores, I'm four threesomes, I'm four rim jobs. And uh, I'm for America. And that's one to grow on. We should do the man boobs contest every day, Robin. I've never gotten such positive feedback. Really? That was one of the funniest bits ever. By the way, also winning people over, Artie and Gary. 
I like to tell Artie and Gary that they, they are going to Iraq and doing that and visiting the troops is a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. Not only are the troops seeing entertainment, but they'll be seeing family. And uh, all who listen to this show feel a connection to the cast. It will give a lot of hope and normalcy to the lives of the guys that see anything but that. Artie and Gary, God bless you to both you fat fucks. Wow, how nice. Isn't that nice? Uh, the, tour, the, tour might have improved, <laughs> the tour might have improved tenfold yesterday because uh, it looks like uh, Colin Quinn may be able to come. Ooh. Oh, you're very lucky. Yes. Hey, Howard, don't let Gary go to Iraq. It's a disaster waiting to happen. The location that they'll be at could come under heavy fire, and a sniper trying to concentrate on killing the enemy will be distracted by Bowie coming up to him and trying to make conversation. I fear yeah. that Gary will be bored, and the enemy will get the upper hand. That's a feasible plot. He will distract the troops because he is so hungering for conversation. Excuse me. Excuse me, does anybody have free time to discuss the war with me? <laughs> I'm very bored of sitting in my tent waiting for the show, which I don't do. Artie's still in his sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> All the problems he was going to have lunch with me today, but I don't know. This one says, Howard, please don't ever stop impersonating Gary Bored in Vegas. It's absolutely hysterical. <laughs> I can't stop laughing out loud at my desk. All right, I'll, I was going to stop it. I'll keep going for you. No, you can't. Please don't stop. Then it's Sal's ass. Your ass. All right, well, whatever. There it is. A lot of different email. Robin, go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. Health Magazine has named the healthiest restaurants in America. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet you pumps on there. I bet you it's not. Really? They're talking about national chains. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uptown Pizza? Maybe healthy. Uno, Chicago Grill, number one. Really? That's yeah. all that deep uh, yeah. pan pizza. Mm -hmm. Well, they're saying it's healthy. I don't know what they use as criteria. I'm just telling you what they said was good. They even named uh, the top five fast food restaurants. Number one, Noodles and Company. Uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill it was number two. Cozy is number three. Cozy. I'm going to Cozy. <laughs> I want some healthy fast food. <laughs> Panera was number four. And Au Bon Pain. Uh, bon bon bon. What's au bon pain? Both, I'm going to au bon pain. <laughs> I'm fucking bored. Is there a <laughs> old bon Artie promised me a 10 hour lunch at Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> I piss by Chipotle all the time. I think it's like a, an appliance store or something. I hate that word, Chipotle. It's a it's a great place for a three hour lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm going to have with Artie. Artie promised me a three hour lunch. Wow. Oh. I did. I remember saying it. Why was it going to be a three-hour lunch? Because we had to catch up, and we were in Vegas. There's nothing to do. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was the ecstasy talking. <laughs> I would have been bored if I had my Dancing with the Stars on TiVo. <laughs> if we go to Vegas, we're probably going to need to have a three-hour lunch. There's nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> what people can't see on the radio is the, <laughs> the face you make right after the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> You cross your eyes and put your teeth way out. <laughs> I will walk back and forth between Art of Shaving and Chipotle until Artie wakes up. <laughs> I'm wondering how many times he looked out the door just to see that do not disturb. Oh, I just walked to Art of Shaving. Took me 10 minutes there, 10 minutes back, and Artie's sign is still on his door. You know, I just do picture, not disturb. I just picture Gary. I told him I'd wake up at 11. I slept till 7.30 p.m. <laughs> Artie swore to me he'll wake up at 11. I was almost late for an 8 p.m. show. <laughs> I can't believe he's sleeping through our three-hour eat and greet. I'll go back down to Artie's shaving. I promise you when I get back, because my shave will take at least a half hour. What's that? They're full? Oh, no. Let me call for a massage. Hmm. I don't want to go to a store. I don't like to shop. I already read a book. I already did everything. I watched TV with Nick. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go visit Teddy. I'll go to Teddy's room with Nick. Yeah, because that'll be exciting. And we can take pictures of how we look. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was... I wish I was Plastic Man from the comic books. I would slide on the Artie's door and wake him up. <laughs> see if he's really sleeping. I mean, if I was Mr. Fantastic, I could slide through the door. 
Give me Mr. Shot in the head if he wakes me up. <laughs> I can't wait for Iraq. I'm gonna right. guess what's not in Iraq? Me. You. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In Iraq, I'm going to see if I can count as high as I can without stopping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Is Artie up? Artie's still sleeping. <laughs> I'm in five books. There's still a do not disturb on Artie's tent. I know. I'll call Nick and see if he wants to count with me. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to count with you, motherfucker. How Audie, many books has he taken to Iraq? Because one 14, didn't last very long in Vegas. 14 hours. <laughs> I'm bringing Billy Crystal's book. It was quite good. 700 Sunday. I'm going to go to the desert and count the sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not for nothing, uh, but my, my agent asked me to... I don't want to make Gary feel bad, but my agent asked me to uh, make up like... Uh, a rider about to go over there. Uh -huh. And when I originally, one of my best friends was going to come, my best friend Jake. And uh, I told my uh, agent, I said, <laughs> I said, in the rider, could you put the Jake gets a first class ticket and everything? And then, and then Conan called me back and said, listen, if Gary goes, Jake can't go. <laughs> I'm looking at Sal in the hall. He's got a, on the, on the door, it says, Artie's room, do not disturb. <laughs> and he's in the big Gary mask, scratching his head, trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> Why don't you go to Artist Shaving? Yeah, that's down the hall. Do Why don't you go, go to Artist Shaving, Gary, and then come back and see if Artie's sign is down. Hey, what are you doing interrupting Artie's story about how I fucked up his friend Jake coming on a show? <laughs> <laughs> He's eating the Do Not Disturb sign. Oh, that's funny. Guy, they'd much rather see you. I don't care. It's the point. You're right. I don't fuck what they want. I want to know what you want. I want you to come. I'm busting you. I, I know, but you're sending out weird signals. <laughs> Yesterday you said I was aggressive about coming. I said, hey, Artie, I'd like to come. And you said, all right, you know, if you want to come. I, I wasn't like, I got to go, Artie. I said, boy, I'd really like to come. I'd you like know what? I'm sorry. Nick, I didn't mean that. And, and you I promise no. you I will not be a bulletin. Nick and I will count the sand together. <laughs> he will do the odd numbers, and I will do the even. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Gary. Talk to me again. Gary's gonna be bored in a day. If he was bored in Vegas, imagine when he's in Iraq. Mm. Gary, the troops can't talk to you all day and like answer your questions. Yeah, they have to fight the war. I wonder if there's an art of shaving in Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an art of beheading. <laughs> yeah, they shave real close over there. All right, thanks. Wait, like Sal is just... <laughs> <laughs> Gary just punched Sal. Playing right. with fire. Uh. <laughs> like, Gary hired that guy. <laughs> I really didn't. Howard hired him. I just tolerate him. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, I'm just kidding. I'm fucking with you. You're going to have a great time in Iraq. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Literally. Really, can I answer the question once and for all? Because I really am getting a weird vibe. No, God, me. absolutely if, not. If, no. If you want to bring your friend, I'm fine with it. I swear to God. I, I, no, Jake has already gotten over it, and uh, <laughs> and I made Jake up a, a comedian. Uh, no, he's just a buddy. He's I can take a buddy. Of and uh, I and my and my Audie, new I promise you, I'm a better choice. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you day and night. And in my new rider, I put down that you get a first class. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Gary's a great guy. You'll have fun. Of with him. course he is. Come on, it's going to be a blast. Gary, you know I love you, right? I hope you do. I do. I Never do. mind. Feeling the love like crazy. How high can Jake count to? Maybe you should bring him in there. <laughs> <laughs> you talk to Gary. Gary loves to talk. The Jake I'm talking about, I think he can only count to three. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was odd that Gary got the biggest kick out of Jimmy saying I, my stories were a little long. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well. Hey, Robin, I wasn't the one who got the biggest kick out of it. Everyone was. Yeah. No, your stories are long. Yeah, but... He's fucking you, and he thinks they're long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. He doesn't think ugly. they're as long as yours. Do you guys think Robin's long-winded? Gary, do you really think Robin's long-winded? I don't at all. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> so what is Jimmy saying? Like, he's bored with her? He, you know, he really got fucked over on that one. I felt bad for him. She had said that in front of him. Like, oh, some people have accused me of that. So he... <laughs> no! <laughs> what the fuck is that? That was ridiculous. Yeah, That's why ridiculous. Why did they put a box on your <laughs> head? Sal, why don't you do something clever instead of stupid? Sal just threw a box on Gary's head. <laughs> Sal, stop it. 
We're trying to talk. Stupid. So, so anyway, so Jimmy was just trying to say something he thought that Robin might say, and then it backfired on him. Robin, you're the one who first said it, correct? Yeah. Why is it bad that he said it? I didn't say it was bad that he said it. I'm breaking your balls. All right. Let's I move on. That right up your motherfucking ass. Uh oh, it's getting crazy mm. out there. What's with him in the fucking box? Now he's taking to throwing a box over Gary's head when he's talking. Yeah. Surely loves it. He stands there and he just watches. Yeah, he's just standing out of the way, too. He doesn't want to get hit by flying fists. This well, is why I love Howard TV. There's a whole visual that goes on. <laughs> when I'm talking to Gary and goofing on him, Sal's in the hole in the Gary mask, running around like a lunatic. Then, he's, then he gets even crazier and takes a box that has dope on it and throws it on right. Gary's head. Well, the you, real, you realize that like Sal's life is shit. And so you, when he gets to goof on me, it's, a, it's like his great moment. No more box, Here Sal. Here he comes Dude. with the box again. <laughs> so, Gary, this... um. This whole thing about you being bored is really getting out of hand. Apparently not for the show, it isn't. <laughs> it's not getting to you? Like... You know what? It's it's just goofy. It's, you know... And there's been things that have gotten to me worse. It, it, you know, they're carrying on. I'm sure Howard's been bored in his life. I, all roads on this one lead to Ralph, by the way. I believe Ralph is the one who uh, has perpetuated this, but that's okay. And it I, seems like Sal's benefiting. Well, it's, it's just giving him uh, It's amazing content. for Sal because Sal's such a fucking great comedian. He gets to put on a mask and walk around and, you know, use all that clever wit that he has. Do you even know that, like, the Department of Justice approved the merger? Uh, yeah. Oh, you did? <laughs> I figured, like, Artie might not even know. <laughs> what is uh, he five, wearing? Five billion dollar bu uh, bio. We bought them out, motherfucker. Well, we haven't done anything. We haven't done a Nothing. thing. It, hey, I, uh, um, I got a new book you saw, motherfucker. You got a new bookie? I did, yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Just for the tournament. Oh, dude. Oh, for the March Madness? So I let's called. say you win $78,000. I don't think that's going to happen again. But I won 3200 and he paid off last night. No, well, 3200 he can handle. <laughs> it's not the same guy. It's a hmm. different guy. He doesn't know the other guy. Good. I, mean, I thought he was turned off to gambling. Well, of course he should be. You think about it. If I had an experience where I finally won big. I won $78,000. <laughs> and then the bookie doesn't pay me. Right. That's it. I'm done. Because I can't... I, in other words, I won. That's the worst rib you can get. I yeah. have a disease. You do. You really do. I realize <laughs> it finally hit me. I realize you might have a little problem. I think uh, gambling addiction and a little touch of melanoma, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no melanoma. The melanoma we can probably cure. I think we can cure the heroin. I think we can cure the obesity. The heroin's cured. Yeah, I just think we got to work on this gambling thing. I think you're almost there. You're almost perfect. I don't even think about heroin, man. Whew, that's the farthest thing from my mind. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, your lips are a little white. <laughs> I didn't think of something. I'm things. joking with you. Oh, oh shit, you scared me. because right. I, I said if I think of something things and they're white, it might be the liver going. Well... Anyway, uh, you know... Yes, what happened? We didn't do anything? What does no, that well, mean? Well, let me the explain. The Justice Department just said it was Now okay. the FCC... Now the FCC has to prove it, but it, this is a great first step. I mean, it's very exciting. I mean, you know, I can't believe it took this long, but all right, thank God. I mean, it would have been a joke if they said the merger... <laughs> it was... is a joke that it took this long. Yeah, but... And they still didn't say anything. What they said made no sense. It made sense to me. They approved it. Well, the the approval just said, oh, we see that the development of the technology indicates that it won't be uh, anti-competitive. That's true. That's all you have to say. All you have to say is one thing. It's not a monopoly. That's all you have to say. Right. They don't know anything about said. the development of the technology. Sure they do. No, they don't. No, because we had to put in our filing, according to what I read, about what the technology has to be in order for the merger to occur in terms of what the consumer will have to uh, get, in terms of uh, uh, tiering and all of that. That's uh, not what makes it anti-competitive. Right, don't be, just be happy. <laughs> all right. It's just, it's, it's a bullshit is wow. what we're listening right, okay. to here, okay. coming out of the government. Wow. They're right. trying to make excuses yeah. for they why did something it took good. them 13 months. They did something good. They took a good hard look at it and they Now let it. the FCC take another 13 months. Well, hopefully they won't. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, the, that's the catch. The I feel FCC bad for these two companies because, you know, listen, they, they invested billions. When I say billions, I mean billions. Some, a bunch of guys billions put up with a B. billions of dollars on technology <laughs> that isn't proven to be a moneymaker or anything. And now, and then as soon as they announced they want to merge, you know, the NAB, the, the powerful National Association of Broadcasters was against this thing. I mean, we don't have to go over the history. And it hasn't been finally approved by the FCC. 
But there's no even guarantee, you know, the companies merge and they become this, you know, powerhouse. No, this is still an emerging technology. And, you know, they're carrying on and, and, and keeping this thing from happening for so long. And meanwhile, companies are bleeding. And people are, it's cost them a lot of money. And you got just, guys like Jesse Jackson who go, yeah, give me uh, 20% of the company for free. And you know, we, 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 I don't want to invest in anything. I'm black. I deserve it. I mean, it's a bullshit argument. And then you get the NAB going, yeah, give us uh, part of the spectrum, you know, for free. Because we're uh, radio broadcasters and somehow we're hurt by this. And then you got uh, some other group going, well, why don't you regulate it? You know, it, it's just like, it's like wolves pulling at the, at the carcass. Anytime but, you give people the opportunity, you know, it's just the freaking nature of yeah, people. It's crazy. But anyway, I was very pleased. I, I uh, got a... Uh, Phone call. The, the person who tipped me off that the Department of Justice had just approved the merger was Tim Sabian got to me first. And I was really happy, you know. I mean, uh, through it all, you know how disappointed I am and how long this thing has taken and all of that. And, you know, we'd be excited to be reaching all that many millions more people sure. and see the technology grow. We've been here from, you know, 600,000 subscribers. <clears throat> so it's very exciting. But anyway, I was very, very, very pleased. To see that there was finally some movement. It was very They're exciting. created by man, we can solve them by man. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of people were saying, well, the merger couldn't go through. And it's like, why? Why couldn't it go through? Is it me? Is it... What is it? What, what, I mean, what, what is the problem? It's not that complicated. Either it's a monopoly or it's not. And let's face it, it's not. That's the way, my point. Yeah. Well, look. They didn't need to le learn anything about tech. Well, the only kind of technology that would have been anti-competitive is if you could block every radio signal with your your, your uh, satellite. Yeah, the question really was, is it a is it a monopoly or not? And you're right. You know, if you think it's a monopoly, then don't allow it to go through. If you don't, don't allow it to go through. That's it. Did the uh, stock move at all because of this? A little. A little bit. But, you know, again, it hasn't been approved. It's only been approved by the Department of Justice, which is great. I think in the history of mergers, I don't know. Listen, you're getting information here from a guy who's, you know, almost retarded. This is his first merger. This is, yeah, I've never been a part of a merger. <laughs> well, we were part of the, yeah, we the were. Viacom we were. situation. That's true. Where CBS and Infinity merged, and then, you know, you remember all that. And then CBS was bought by Viacom. So we were part of all of that. But, I don't know, somehow I didn't feel very connected to that. I don't know about you, but... And it was, it was you know, conventional technology, and then yeah. it was at the time where they were loosening regulations and all of that stuff, so it seemed a lot easier. I got very emotional, to be honest with you, when I heard that the merger had been approved. Forgetting the, you know, the financial interests and all that stuff. I'm talking about, you know, I, I guess what I feel emotionally invested in this company because it was like a big deal leaving terrestrial radio. I had a pretty good career going there. We all did. And... You know, then all of a sudden to say, I believe in this technology, and I really do. And to say, you know, I think this is the future of broadcasting and the future of radio. And having everyone saying, well, they only have 600,000 subscribers, and you're going nowhere, and, you know, you're spinning your wheels, and you're not going to have the juice, and all this kind of stuff. And now all of a sudden you're talking about two companies coming together. You're talking about a 15 or 16 million person subscriber base. And the important thing is now when cars come off the assembly line, people will essentially get one satellite, which will be on. Yeah, and they can have everything, baseball, right. football, well, you know, all I'll the tell programming, you, all the music. You talk about that, Robin. I'm, I'm reading about the merger and all this, and then I see one guy. They interviewed a guy who subscribes to, Siri, uh, no, he subscribes to XM, and he goes, I'm really excited because I pay for this thing every month. And now I'm getting football and baseball. And he says, and, and I haven't been able to get Howard Stern in my car. I'm excited about it. Mm -hmm. That's the key. I mean, why should the consumer who's paying twelve ninety five a month not get all, the, get all of that? Now, that's the only thing that they're not considering. That, you know, people are being denied certain programming by uh, keeping yeah. us apart. Yeah, I mean, it's good for the consumer. It's good. I mean, listen, it's good for business. This is a country that's hurting in uh, the business area right now. The, the, a lot of big businesses in our country are 
uh, hurting. Yeah. And well, I heard one of the news reports, and afterwards they said, you know, some people are, are uh, uh, feel that consumers might have to pay more if these two com- companies merge. Consumers don't have to pay at all. Right. This is not a. This is not a life or death satellite. <laughs> you know, yeah, like you can you, live without this. Trust me, you can live without it. I wouldn't want to see you living without it, but... No, but if it gets too expensive, that's what people will do. They'll turn away, and right. then we'll have to deal with that. That's how you you keep the prices under control. Mike, you're on the air. Good morning, everybody. Hey. Hey, Howard. When am I going to be able to start watching Yankees? Uh, listen to Yankees games, man. Well, this hasn't been... You know, the FCC still has to rule on this. Right, right. And uh, I, but but uh, what I was going to say before is, supposedly, someone told me this, in the history of mergers that the Department of Justice, whenever they approve of something, the merger usually follows. Like, it's never been a case where they... Well, the FCC was waiting to see what the Justice yeah. Department would rule. That's right. what they kept saying. So, right, the only reason why they would... Uh, the one thing I read on the, uh, on the little web uh, little webpage that I saw uh, in, their, in their statement, they said that uh, people don't usually jump from one. You know, usually, when they buy the, uh, the the equipment, it's exclusive to that company. And once they have it, they usually don't jump ship. But he didn't right. mention all the people that were dropping XM at the beginning and going to Sirius because it's a better product. Yeah, well, now it'll be one. And uh, they, as they were saying in the paper today, I was reading an art. I was reading the endless amount of articles on it, and they said that uh, it'll be good because you know there are so many programs that are similar. Mm-hmm that they can weed out that stuff and not pay for it, and then they can start to develop all of this stuff that's not similar. And then they have to develop, I guess, a radio that... That takes both signals and all that. that. that I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. that's not even in the near future. Right. You know, it's going to take... That's the point. They're delaying this and delaying it, and there's so much work to be done. And, well, anyway, look, I'm happy to see this first step was taken because if, if the ruling had come out that this was somehow a monopoly, I would have been, I probably would have banged my head into a wall and said, I cannot believe how disgraceful. He probably would have started going to that Jeremiah, what's his name's church. Yeah, I would have. I would have changed my whole, yeah, I would have, uh, I would have been a follower of it. It is the white man. Yeah, it is the white man. It is. And the white man did the right thing this Serious time. Serious chickens have come to roost. Uh, Dan, you're on the air. In uh, Boston. Hi, Dan. Good morning, Howard. Good morning. Congratulations, everyone. Um, Thank my you. Question, my question <laughs> is, how long, first, how long do you think it will take for the FCC to make a decision on this? I have no idea. I would have thought this whole thing would have happened within three to four months. This is no more complicated than... And they've had all the paperwork in both places, so you'd think that the FCC could act pretty quickly. See, that's what worries me, is that that old monster rearing its head will fucking sit on this just for spite for two years or something. You don't know. And what are they, and what what would they, how would they justify that? They they, they don't have to answer anybody. They don't have to justify Right, that's the problem. They're they're not accountable for anything or to anybody. uh, You know, I was pleased because it could have all been shot down by the Department of Justice, and they didn't do it. But the Justice Department had indicated it was leaning this way earlier. And remember, right. a couple of Congress people said, maybe <clears throat> I ought to take another look. Well, listen, one thing you can say about the amount of time they took, no one can say this was rushed through, and that's good. <laughs> exactly. Because, uh, you know, no one can come back and go, well, they didn't really think about it. Uh, the FCC can't say that. Uh, no one in the government can say that. This thing was, you know how many millions of pages of documents were filed? and The government was uh, not in the no-huddle offense. Yeah, this, uh, this was... <laughs> they didn't have any two-minute warning. Yeah, they you can't planning. say they didn't... Uh, they spent less time on the Warren Commission than they did on this. <laughs> I mean, you know, our president was dead, and they, they kind of hustled through a piece of paper. Uh, Elvin, you're on the air. I don't know. Uh, by the way, I just don't know how long it'll all take, but uh, it's a good first step. Elvin, you're on the air in Montreal. Hey, now. What's going on? How I know. Are well, congratulations on the merger. And uh, what about this FCC? When are they going to rule? <laughs> I, I said, have you been listening? <laughs> Elvin. <laughs> Elvin, you know what? He's like a guy who goes, you know, damn, I should have raised my hand and asked a question in class. I'll, I'll just ask whatever somebody else asked. And at least the teacher will see I'm interested. All right, Elvin, thank you. We don't know. We have no clue. We we are so out of the loop. You know, and <laughs> great. So, Fred, for someone who's been in radio for so long, been at so many different radio stations, how do you feel about the merger? Uh, it's... How do, you, how, do you, how do you... It's historic. 
that's what it is. It's historic. What we're a part of is a historic thing. I mean, to uh, come to a situation like uh, satellite radio to begin with is historical. I mean, it was pretty much a fledgling industry until the show came here. And now that we're about to uh, double the platform, or at least keep my fingers crossed, because you never know with the FCC, uh, you guys are doing a terrific job. So uh, make sure that that merger goes through. Thank you very much. If it goes through, um, it's the way radio should be. It's, I think, if people sample satellite radio, I don't even know who's going to see this. I mean, other than the people who already hear and listen to this now. Uh, it's always amazing to me that uh, people don't know about satellite or don't care about satellite, but they go, what's satellite all about? Hopefully, uh, this will bring more interest to uh, the satellite uh, programs and the satellite stations. And uh, just sign up if you haven't signed up already or, or get your friends to listen. I mean, it's just an exciting thing. Come on, you people got to work harder. We're working hard. Sal, what are you doing? I'm trying to take a dump, and these guys are interrupting me. Only on this show would you have complete coverage of somebody taking a shit. I, you know, i got to say something. Uh, Sal is now uh, being uh, videotaped by Howard TV taking a shit uh, because oh, of our hemorrhoid geez. discussion. Yeah. We're going to see if his new shitting will get rid of that. There he is now. Oh! Oh, God. Fuck. And he has no newspaper. Oh, look at him. Why is he sitting there so long? Hmm. And Sal, what's he... Oh, oh, dude, dude, oh dude, get dude, off dude, the bowl. Dude. I don't want to oh. see this. Sal, get off the bowl. You're Why done. Why do I work here? You're working too hard on it. He's, he's, he's on there for a long time. That's yeah, why he has why a hemorrhoid. Yeah, why are you there? You don't have to go. Hey, can, can he put fucking paper on the seat? Do you mean God Almighty? I mean, put paper on the seat. <laughs> <They're> filthy. <laughs> This, it's come to, oh my God. Uh, uh, he doesn't know how to, oh, he needs a. Uh, fuck. How is he wiping? What is Yikes. he doing? Oh, oh turn that off. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> We've come, now we're taping Sal shitting. Oh, Could you turn it off, please? Do you know any comedian who would. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at, he, he looked at the toilet paper and then showed it to the camera and it was. Just all disgusted. Oh, I didn't see. Thank goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I turned away before. He wipes too hard with that dry paper. He needs uh, wet ones. I told him that. <sighs> I'm going to throw up. Just the thought of it. That was Artie, you okay? No. <laughs> We're all in shock. I, I, this is, again, a human resources issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. When are we going to turn him in? Wait. Lisa G is now inspecting Sal's hemorrhoid? Wow. Oh. She oh, my God. Look, Jesus. Wow. 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 Jesus. What are you doing out there, Lisa? What's wrong with her? I she can't, can't hear, hear her. us. Let's see. Maybe I can. I can hear you. Oh, oh you oh. can? Yeah. What are you doing? It's part of my story. He said I've been doing a story about his hemorrhoids, and he didn't have them earlier. So <laughs> now you can I see. I see how bad they were. But <laughs> Did you look? <laughs> yeah, I did. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> I did already. <laughs> All right. It's enough. All right, so I'll pick oh. a little, in, a little inflamed, but not bad. Nothing right. really. Lisa oh. so wants to be in the club. <laughs> no, I don't. All right, stop. Oh, stop it, Sal. All right, so that. All right, thank really you, Lisa. All right, more. Lisa reporting from the bathroom wow. with Sal. The, the hemorrhoid is all right. It's I got to tell you, too inflamed. Lisa's really committed to her job. Yes, she, she is. is. Not too many reporters would go down that dirty. I wonder if Sal's hemorrhoid gave her any new, uh, interesting ideas for next year's cookie party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said my ass will look nice and clean. She examined it, she's, and then it, she... I mean, it looked clean. People's butts could be nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep my ass very, very clean. You, know? you had nothing hanging in, hanging out, no little... Nothing. No little, no little, uh, uh little pieces of toilet paper. Right, you know? nothing. Like hard and simple. <laughs> no, 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 no dingleberries. Right. No I think dingleberries. Lisa is a great asshole examiner. <laughs> I'm going to have Lisa examine my asshole every day with this diet. There's a lot of assholes around here. Yeah, you've been kidding. You know what I think? I think every day I'm going to eat, take a dump, go on a new diet, and every day no, Lisa will come not in. Not every day. I, I you're going to be month. my You're going to be my ass. Diet. You're going to be my asshole doctor. <laughs> In a few minutes, like in ten minutes. Well, oh, he's wow. had a lot going on since last we saw. Yeah, he was loving his sobriety the last time he was in <laughs> I don't here. know if he's still loving it. I love my sobriety. I'm having fun with my sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's off that sobriety thing. How long have you been sober? Eight uh, days. <laughs> <laughs> but quietly, he has become an enormous star of movie stand-up yeah, and TV. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff coming out. Hey, what's up, Tracy Morgan, aka Caligula? Talk about everything under the sun. 
uh, what's happening in my life, new movies, 30 Rock, we're going to talk about everything. Who I'm banging, all that stuff. You know, last time you were on, a big subject was your ankle bracelet. You think Howard's going to bring that up again? I don't know. I hope so. It's cool. I don't wear it no more. Everything's cool. Back to normal in my life. All right, man. Good luck in there today. Cool stuff. Tracy Morgan's one of my favorites. I wonder if Tracy ever heard that phony phone call we did with his voice. I got to play that for him. I bet you he hasn't even heard it. Uh, Tracy Morgan's on uh, 30 Rock. He's in the new movie Superhero. I think Pam Anderson's in that movie. How you doing, man? Howie. Good seeing you. Uh, one my, of my dude. One of my favorite guests, Tracy yes, Morgan. Yes, sir. My dude. <laughs> I'm chilling. Are you Good all right morning. or what? Huh? Are you all right? Yeah, man. I got a million things. Hey, before I interview you. Hi, Robin. Hi there. How Tracy. you doing, my love? I'm Be good. Are that's you? my woman. Before I interview you. Uh-huh. Did you ever hear the phony phone call we made using your voice from one of your appearances? No. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right. This is you calling somebody. Uh, oh, snap. <laughs> this is good. Hey. Hey. Hello. 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 What's up, baby? Uh, this allergy is driving me crazy. <laughs> God damn! I love when a woman gag. I can't hear you. This is your dick. God damn! <laughs> Yo. Yeah, there it is. Yo, Howard, yeah. that is hilarious, man. <laughs> See, we don't really even need you to make phony phone yes. calls. We can do them all on our own. Yeah, man. But what is going on? Before we talk about your movies and your what, career, which is really on fire, quietly on fire, I would say. Yeah. You're uh, doing a movie with um, uh, Pam Anderson, that superhero yeah, movie. Yeah. What, what is that superhero? Superhero is a spoof. We're spoofing like X-Men. And who do you play? I play uh, Professor Xavier. Oh, you know the professor? you're the professor? Yeah, so they made him black. And <laughs> oh, and, and Pam Anderson, you're on the set with her, huh? Yo, man, I couldn't take my eyes off her, man. You like She's it. the eighth wonder of the world, bro. Yeah. I thought it was all hype. Couldn't work your way saw, in. What? I saw, first of all, I saw the tape with her and her ex-husband. Tommy Lee. Yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. I got two... Two scenes in two movies that I always masturbate to. Go ahead. There's your movie Body Parts where Homegirl private took the... Private Parts. Private Parts when she took the knock wish in her mouth. Oh, Kielbasa Queen. Yeah, huh? You beat off to that? I beat off to that. In my movie when the girl eats the sauce. Yes. You beat off to that. Yo, she's incredible, dude. Wow. I'm a, I'm a freak. I'm the biggest freak you ever want to meet. Right. Do you like to jam your penis all the way down the throat like that? Is that yeah. a fantasy? Yeah, I have, I have no fucking remorse, man. Do you ever... You get me wash you get i need to wash when you're with a lady <laughs> do you say do you try to jam the whole thing down her throat yes Doesn't that make she could take it she's a woman yeah women Robin, love that, that shit they like the big bulbous dickhead man they do my shit is bulbous my dickhead is shaped like a darth vader helmet is it big <laughs> my dick look like r2d2 god damn it <laughs> you're telling they call me my balls the fucking evil empire do you ever think that that's angry in a way to gag a woman with your penis like that yeah hard. fuck it <laughs> you're angry you're angry with women Call right what you want do you not are you angry at women no i just like to see mascara running yeah but you you were angry with your mother you didn't talk to your mother for years am i yeah correct? but me and her cool man well, you know, i'm not i'm not that angry i'm going through a divorce now but Whoa. we're gonna get to that we're gonna get to that yeah but i'm gonna that coming i'm gonna ask you why didn't you talk to your mother for years uh, I think I was mad. It was a lot of issues going on. My older brother had cerebral palsy. So right. growing up, she had five of us by herself. Her husband just came home from Vietnam. He was on the junk. So she couldn't deal with that because she had five kids to raise right. in the projects by herself. Right. So she gave a lot of attention to my older brother because that could kill a woman's spirit when her first child is born with cerebral palsy. Yes. You so for a long time, yeah. I thought that she didn't love me because I was a child. Right. I didn't know. Children yeah. don't know, so when I became a man and I got older, I figured it out. I forgave my mother. So you did know? you? But it, I don't think my mother ever forgave herself. You for forgave my your pops mother not being there. You were on the set of a movie in a church, 
and you all of a sudden had an epiphany, right? You all of a sudden said... I don't think it was an epiphany. What it was was... You talk about the scene in First Sunday when I cried? That's right. Well, the director, David Talbot, he's a master. He's a genius. He got in my head way before we even shot that scene. Right. He started... When I first got the part, he started asking me about my background, blah, blah, blah. Because I didn't know how I was going to get to that part. But you finished the scene and you called your mother because you were so I love my mom. Now man. you love your moms. Me and my, I always love my mother, man. That's my moms. So you help she your moms in out? The, so she went in the, Do you she ever went, think when you're jamming your huge helmet-like penis... <laughs> did somebody ever do that to my mother? Yeah, well, no, no. That you're angry with your own mother. <laughs> that you're jam, you know, that your no. hatred of her and I don't, anger. I don't equate jamming my cock down a chick's throat <laughs> yeah, with well, my moms. I'm not thinking about my fucking mother. mother when I'm jamming my cock down a chick's no, throat. I just want come? my dick sucked that way. That's you it. like it very <laughs> deep. Oh, my God, so man. You don't movie, know what, how good it feels. Do you, uh, you know how it... I'm very jealous. How good it feels. <laughs> what do you mean I don't feels? know? I have a penis. When, a, when your penis is in a woman's wet, warm mouth. It feels good. And saliva good. is running all down the shaft and shit. And so, Pam beautiful. Anderson was the second movie that you beat off to? And Caligula is the first. Caligula? That's uh, my uh, cup of parts. coffee in the morning. Wow. That's so, my cup of coffee. When she's on there on the boat? Yeah. And she's giving homeboy that head? Tommy Lee. Yo, that's car wash right there, man. The car wash. Now, let me ask you this. So, you're working on the movie with Pam Anderson, yep. Superhero. Why not uh, make the play for her? You're a star? No you way. I'm way I, 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 that's out of my league, bro. Is it? Yeah. Really? Out of my, yeah. You can't get a girl like that. Yeah, I can get a girl like that, but I'm not going to put forth the energy. Why? That would take a <laughs> lot of energy, bro. What? What? what I would what have else? to. That would cost me about a good forty-five grand a week. I'm worried about you and your money here. Let me talk to you for a second. First My of money's all, good. Wait a second. You own you a four... You haven't gotten divorced yet. Yeah. You own a $450,000 car. Am I correct? What? Do you own a $450,000 <laughs> car? You talking about the Ferrari? Yeah. The Lambo and all that? Yeah. I yeah. get money. I'm getting that paper. Yeah, I know, but but why do you spend your money on a four hundred fifty thousand dollars car? Because my pops could never do it. Is that why? You're yeah, angry with your father. I'm making up for ancestry, man. Right? Would you ever go like I'm a, doing it? Would you ever take money and spend it on a hooker the way our governor did? Nah, never. I never bought pussy before. Oh, you yeah. have bought pussy. Yeah, I bought pussy. Before. When did you? We ain't never bought pussy. I have never I've been bought pussy since I was in high school. Really? Yeah. Where do you go to buy pussy? The Harlem. <laughs> How are the hoes in, in the hood? hood? Are they hot? Yes. Oh, my grande culo. Can you get Oh, my God. Do, grande you, mucho culo. How much grande would you pay? torto. How much would you pay a woman? About $40, $50. $50, but blowjob? I, yeah, whatever I want. Wow. Finger in the butthole, all that. Really? <laughs> you would pay? Shaka and all that. You would put a finger in the butthole for Yeah, you got to. You got to play with that dingleberry. <laughs> got to play with the dingleberry. You love sex. Yeah, yeah. man. Are I'm you a, a I'm sex a, addict? I'm a Scorpio. I don't think I don't believe in that sex addict shit. Yeah, well, could you? How the fuck you gonna be a sex addict? Either you like pussy or you don't. Well, in the sense that you are a sex addict, that you can't. You don't eat. never get enough. Well, How the fuck I'm gonna be an addict? A sex addict would be someone who doesn't even think of the person as a woman. They just gotta fuck. You mean a fucking crash dummy? Yeah. That's I'm not it. demented. <laughs> I like to bang. Don't know female. Well, I'm not into that making love shit. The last time you were here, I might bang the one I love. The last time you were here, you were you said you loved your sobriety. Right. We asked you how long you were sober. I'm it doing was good. Eight how? days. Th at that how time. long have you got now? Right. A couple of months. Right, yeah. But wait a second. Yeah, man. Here's what I read. Not you drinking. Were, don't touch the stuff. I'm good. You were with us. You were wearing a thing on your ankle, an ankle bracelet. I was all fucked up. Right. And yeah, that bracelet actually told if he drank, right? Yeah, the judge, well, I forget why, but the judge made you put one on. Yeah. Something happened. Because I, I was legendary. My party in was legendary. It really was. And you had the ankle bracelet on, and you said to me... I, I was on the Lindsay Lohan program. Right. You said you love the ankle bracelet, you love your sobriety... And then, like, a day later, I read in the paper, you were out drinking with the ankle bracelet on. No, you didn't. <laughs> Get yes. out of here. And you had a relapse. No. You didn't? That fucking bracelet was sensitive, man. I, <laughs> I spent a lot. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, you something. You got a sensitive guys. bracelet. Yeah, right? You're that telling me you have been overly sensitive. Oh. You haven't had oh. a drink since? I've been chilling. Is that true? I've been chilling, man. Is the bracelet gone? I feel I work out. Yeah, the bracelet is gone. How did you get rid I of the bracelet? I got my license back and everything. Yeah? 
<laughs> I'm not getting that privilege to be broke again. Fuck that. Are you? Complete? I like driving all them fucking four hundred and fifty thousand dollar cars. <laughs> if I pay for this shit, I want to be able to drive it. Do you have to fuck blow- two Coronas? Do you have to blow into a thing to get your car I started? Have to do none. No, come no. on. Tell all you do That's about. for fucking retarded people. But I don't do no <laughs> shit like well, sometimes that. Sometimes the judge will say we're gonna put a device nah, in your car. They ain't putting no shit in my fucking Ferrari. It's Hell so, no. Imagine you with a Ferrari and every if three Ferrari minutes you're put blowing. The shit in there that I do it. <laughs> I'm not doing that shit. But what nah, is so man. great about a Ferrari? Is it do you get a lot of pussy for the Ferrari? Straight pussy, man. I went up when I bought it. I went upstairs to my homeboy house. You know, right. go put my homeboy up. Let them show and see it. Right? You weren't afraid they would steal it from you. you I homeboys? came back. No, nah, I came right. back downstairs and it was pair of fucking dirty panties on my fucking car. Really? Discharge and all of that. Oh. <laughs> because and I girl- love fucking discharge, man. You do. That's a special sauce on a Big Mac, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> discharge a little. Yes, sir. It's like a Mac You got to have that gushy ushy. Yeah, you like going down on that? Yeah, what? Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. I'm a grown fucking man. I'm right. not scared. I like to go to the supermarket and watch grown women shop for. Cucumbers. How did you uh, avoid Pick that big green one? How did you avoid Pick that big green one? How did you avoid STDs? I mean, you don't use a rubber, right? Yo, dude, first of all, you gotta be a real loser to get fucking crabs at 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but you how gotta do you be know? a fucking asshole to get clapped at thirty nine. Uh, but how do you know? Nah, you know, man. I know. I, 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 I fuck with the generations, man. Right. I know what generation I'm fucking with. I'm not fucking with nothing young. Right. Not that young where you can get clapped. Right. I'm fucking with a grown ass woman that know how to wash the stink box. Right. So how old are the women you generally go with? <laughs> My age, thirty five and better. 35. Now you, last time you were here, you loved She's your 35 wife. Thirty five years old, she ain't got no STD. Last time, well, they could have got it. I'm not gonna be sitting in pediatrics with my head in my hand at thirty nine. <laughs> That's real you love. You use a rubber you- when you're with a girl. Yeah, I use rubber, but I'm you old do. school. Right, I'm old school. What Fuck does that rubber. mean? I'm pull- when I come in, I come in. Really? I'm not, when I get ready to come, I'm not pulling out. No. You, I, got, you no I got kids. I'm like my father, Jimmy. Right. My, I know I got a brother in Vietnam. He's probably short, Chinese looking, and look just like me. Right. My father was laying that dick down over there. He wasn't just fighting that war. Sure. Getting that Chinese pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get that Chinese pussy. That's right. Listen, he was a brave soldier. Why yeah, not? He didn't like some egg foo young, goddammit. You think you have a Chinese brother somewhere? Ooh, somewhere. I know I do. If it was Jimmy, Jimmy was over in Vietnam. Wow. Wouldn't I got about weird? 12 sisters and brothers over there wouldn't somewhere. It would be weird if you met some Vietnamese guy who was you, but like, you know. It wouldn't be weird for me. I know my father. Right. Well, so when you're He with had a dick the size of a Louisville slugger. So your date, you saw your father's penis. Hey, you used to walk around naked all the time really? in front of me. And it was big. I, that's where I get it from. Right. I let my three sons know when your dick get bigger than mine, you getting the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you no longer, my son. You a fucking threat. Now, how long right. how are you going to know that? Because I know I got, I got a fucking baby arm. There's monthly expect- inspection. I got a fucking you, baby I'm, arm. Measure your penis right now. How big is it? I'm not measuring my penis you, right now. Come on, my shit it? going. When I die, my shit going to be in the Smithsonian right next to Michael Jackson's glove. How big is it? You've measured. Me? About, I'm about nine inches. Wow. Around. Uh, no, come on. How <laughs> big is it? Be I'm honest. about nine inches. Nine inches. Wow. Yeah, I'm fucking nine, but I'm Good thick. You. My shit and thick. thick. Yeah. Do girls ever get scared when they're with you? Nah, they women, do, they, do they ever say it hurts? Women get over the fear of penis when they're like fucking 15. Yeah, but he when a woman... We're Zilla. scared of vagina. Men are scared of vagina. No, when you see... You, when you go get pussy, Howard, you still got butterflies in you because you want to perform, God damn it. You do, you do. You want to put it down. You want her to invite you back. Do you hold out a long time? Who, what? Hold out, like without coming. Can you yeah, let go? I, yeah. I, yeah, I come, but I'm 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 15 minutes now. Are you? Yeah, that's I'm, pretty good. 15 minutes of some off the wall shit. What yeah. You want two hours of some bullshit? No, I can. Or do- 15 minutes of some dynamite shit. I had a good friend, a black guy, just like yourself. We uh, shared a tent one summer. We were working together. We actually lived in a tent. But broke back. Would, you about to tell me some broke back mountain shit? No, no, shit? no. I used to Come bang. On, I, I would bang chicks. Know. I would bang I chicks in my know. bed. You my hero, goddamn. I, I bang agree. Chicks I Please don't fucking tell me no crazy shit. No, no. He banged <laughs> chicks. I banged chicks, and he used to say to me, "Man, you come fast," because you see, I'd be done in two seconds. This guy. <laughs> That's and, cool. And I, I said, "Yeah." I said, "I can't hold out." He goes, "Man, you're not a black guy." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "I can hold out an hour." This that's because you're young. You had no dick control. Yeah, but he was young. Think about transmissions and shit. This guy Danny, he was. You gotta know how to keep it hard and focus and breathe. It's all in the breathing. When Is it? Man. What Bang. do you do when you feel that, that feeling rhythm. coming up? When I'm getting ready, nothing. Yeah, just slow down. Slow down. Just slow down. Take a breath, and then you be back right back. Wow. 
Well, the entire yeah, love making I, I, process I suffer is from slow. anxiety. Yeah. So if I get with a woman, I got to beat my dick. That first nut, get it out the way. Right, That second nut, go about an hour, 15, 20 minutes. How really? bad would you beat your dick? I beat my dick like it owed me money. Yes! You know, <laughs> Thank you. Like you are constantly Tracy, stealing from that's me. That's right. Tracy. <laughs> if you don't know that fucking joke, you're probably a scumbag. I know the guy who wrote it. You don't believe, you don't deserve to be on a fucking road if you don't if you <laughs> Tracy, steal that fucking bitch. Tracy, wait a second. Back up. For you that. should not be in the improv. I want to be serious with you. As my grandfather called the improvs. <laughs> I want to be serious with you for a minute because okay. this is serious stuff. You came in here. You were on. Uh, you were on the bracelet. You had that whole thing going. Right. All right. You got the bracelet off somehow. I don't know how. The judge said. You, what do you mean? You don't know. How I'm I stopped saying, drinking. How do you get, you they couldn't drinking. keep me in jail forever. So how long did you wear the bracelet? Six months. Six months. Wow. Okay. So it came off. That's very liberating, especially for your wardrobe. I mean, you know, you look a lot cooler without that. I paid that, the price, though, Howie. It cost yeah. me my fucking marriage, man, that drinking shit. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You were here. You, you, how long were you married to your wife? 21 years. 21 bro. years. It was a whole thing. You got kids. I was with her last night. We was kicking it last night. She cooked me some Easter dinner and stuff. Well, what is land. going on? What do you mean you're getting a divorce? It's my girl, man. What did she say? She said, I can't be with you anymore. She just, it was, she went her way. I went my way. What does that mean? She hooked up with the guy? Our kids are, fuck, I don't know what she's doing, but our kids are grown ass men. Man, my oldest right. son is 22. My baby's 16. Was she the baby crying? lived with me. My wife? Yeah. My wife wanted to kill me. Black women don't fucking cry. But why did Let she want tell to you kill you? Man, Hillary Clinton could have my vote if she whooped Monica Lewinsky's ass. <laughs> That's the only way she'll get my fucking vote. Anytime your husband's getting his dick sucked in the Oval Office and you and your fucking daughter sleeping down the hall, right. you're supposed to whoop that bitch ass. Right. Fuck being strong <laughs> for the American people, motherfucker. But right Black wife ain't having that shit. That's a real black fucking woman. Well, let me ask you that. She go, we going to get Bin Laden. You know why? Because Barack wife going to tell him, you know he says something about your mother. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, but you you want to see you, a you, fucking you, war? You say something about a black motherfucker. You are mother. making a good point, actually. I'm a Hillary Clinton <laughs> supporter. Well, that motherfucker's ass. They can find fucking Saddam. They can find that motherfucker. They found my cousin Raheem down south. <laughs> <laughs> why they can't find him? You're making a real good point. Raheem, what? Right. Is he in prison now? I don't know. So he did some shit in New York. When black people commit a crime in New York, you go down south. Right. And you, Who don't got family down south? <laughs> what you're saying is, and you make a point you're about black, Hil and you ain't got family down south, motherfucker. You ain't black. You know, you're making an interesting point about Hillary Clinton. I support her, but she's supposed to whoop that bitch ass. So if you see some human shit, then well, I think she always trying to pull a human shit out when she losing. I think what you're saying is, how can a and woman? Spitzer, lead? you see Spitzer's wife? Yes. I'll buy some pussy too. Right. He had the deepest governor, goddammit. I got to do whatever it takes to feel like governor in the morning. If it means what, spending, I want to spend 4000 I want to spend 4000 She's got forty five, fifty dollars Right. <laughs> yes, I wonder if her head game is that good. No, yeah, but, you're but are you saying she wasn't putting out? His wife? Mrs. Smith? Oh, they, she stopped a long time ago. They wasn't even sleeping in the same room. I know Spitzer. Oh, really? You do? That's my dude. We hung out a couple and of times. And he said to you, my wife doesn't even give me any? His wife don't give him none. He tried to put it in. Really? You, you said that? You met the governor? I met the governor. And you said you talked if about I sex get to with be, him? If Obama wins, yeah. this is my fucking dream, Howard. If Obama wins and I get to meet him, mm -hmm. I'm going to lean forward and I'm going to shake his hand. I'm going to go, what's up, nigga? <laughs> Why is that he your gonna dream? say, what's up, nigga? <laughs> what's up, nigga? My That's nigga. My nigga. My <laughs> nigga. They, yo, they gonna try to, you know it's gonna be some domestic violence in that fucking White House. You're saying I'm going to the after party if he win. I think Pete Diddy gonna be there. I heard Diddy's supposed to fall. Is that really what you would say to the president? What's up, nigga? Really? What the fuck you gonna do to me? Say I'm the president, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, you changed, motherfucker? So I know his man's out in Chicago and them. He gonna have secret service, but he's gonna have his boys his with him too. In his private moments, he goes, I'm the head nigga in charge. He's the head nigga in charge. All right. You fucking right. Right. That's the president of the I United States. I got to States. live in this fucking... Let me tell you something. If yeah. Hillary Clinton become president, I just want to see her have a wardrobe malfunction. Because that right. chick is thick. Yeah. I'm going doggy style on Hillary if I ever get some <laughs> pussy. But you make a good point. I know point. the fucking hips, the thighs, and the fucking cellulite and all that shit. But you We're going to stink up the room. You got to... You make a I'm good gonna point. I'm going to stink. I'm going to pound the pussy to the stink. <laughs> you make a very good point. Yeah, I mean. uh, You make a good point. Let me make your point for you. You're saying, how can a woman be the president of the country, the most powerful country on the, on the world, if she... 
Don't even want to whoop reaction. the bitch ass. Forget the whooping, but she she should have maybe left. In other words, does she have the real backbone? Is what right. you said. Can she defend she the country? Fucking pull or the or she she ain't even fucking everybody. going on this chick for doing that. What was the bitch doing in the house anyway? Right. Right. What is she doing? She's there? supposed to be a wife and all that shit before the president. That's that's her job. Let me tell you something, man. She can't be fucking president. There's a reason why we never let women run the fucking army. Why, why is that? Because she get a period and push the fucking button. Uh, <laughs> Look, Tracy. She get cramps and want to pull everybody out of Kuwait but for a week. all the black people were for Hillary Clinton. They get said everybody out of Iraq for a week. All the black people were for Hillary Clinton. They always said she's an honorary black person. Bill Clinton's an honorary black man. What happened? That's all out the window? Yeah, you know, honorary black Black man, he, he, you never said that. He was I never black. said that. Who was saying that? A lot I of people were saying he was the first black president there for a while. Come on, man. Probably a whitey. <laughs> Come on, man. Barack got to show. He got to man up. He got to show me something. He could be just another politician. Right. I don't vote. I don't vote. Last time I even voted was for Dave Dinkins, and he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Would you vote for Barack Obama? I vote for Dave, goddammit. Are you going to vote for Barack? Fucked Bar up with that Yusef Hawkins shit in Crown Heights and all. Yeah, he yeah, fucked yeah. up. Are he should have handled it better. Are you going to vote for Barack Obama? I mean, if there's a black man. Barack is my man. I'm going to fill out an application for that security. No, are you going to vote in the next election? I don't know. If he is the nominee. I'll probably vote for him, yeah. I'm gonna yeah, vote you for probably him. will go and vote. Yeah, That'll motivate first black, you. I got, this is a great century, man. I got to live and see a, the first black president. You never thought I got to that. see both Michael Jacksons, white and black. Right. <laughs> and I got all. to see fucking Michael Jordan suck at something. Right. And I got to see Janet Jackson's titty. Right. That's pretty good. <laughs> I yeah. could fucking rest in peace now. Is Tracy allowed to vote? Are you allowed to vote? Yeah, I'm allowed to why, vote. Why I'm not a fucking got to vote what here. What the so. fuck are you talking about? Am I allowed to vote, you fucking pump? Are you, you fucking you convicted prick? of a crime? Sometimes they don't let you Never vote. been convicted, you fucking hump. I'm on 30 <laughs> Rock, you fucking moron. Let me understand what happened. You see me on fucking NBC. You think NBC is going to hire a felon to do a fucking TV show primetime? You get fucking a... prick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Tracy. Tracy. Wow. Why would I, wanna... I be a fucking felon on 30 Rock? Tracy Morgan, I got to understand something. Think Tina Fey is going to let me be around her and I'm a felon, you fucking moron? Tell me what happened. With tell, he's a fryer, a fucking undertone, <laughs> racist shit. Yeah, he's don't, a fryer. Yeah. Like I'm racist. black, just because I'm black, I, I yeah. fucking drink he's, water with my hands. And I'm scared. That's fire, what he's saying. And I, I, I'm attracted to shiny things and shit. Can Come you on, swim? Man. Yeah, I can swim, so but I don't fuck swim. with water. He thinks you can't swim. I used to go to the fucking swimming pool in my in my fucking projects, right. and. I was shit in the pool. What? I know I'm that. I'm shutting it down. That's power. Can I ask you something? I'm shutting it down. You want to steal my sneakers? I'm shutting it down. Now the big brown shark getting ready to come. Can I, can I understand Collard something? greens and corn, everything floating in You know, I, I, grew up, I grew up in a black neighborhood. I grew up in a black neighborhood. And a, a, a you lot love of the that kids, black pussy, but too. A lot, yeah, I do. But a lot you of the kids. You love that nappy dugout? It was very hard to get What's black What's the last pussy? time you got some black pool pool? You like that with back with JJ. You like the with JJ? I like it. Pink inside. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something. That's how black people feel about white women. Yeah, <laughs> they got something to do with slavery. Goddamn it! It's just all women. You know what they call me? My dick is so. You know what they call me? Female. I make females call me man of condo. Really? <laughs> man of condo. I don't understand that. Cause I'm fucking my shit is huge, like a python. Boy, you are lucky. Yeah, boa. Let me ask you a question. I honestly. don't put that much pressure on myself when it comes to sex. When I lived in the black community, a lot of the kids would shit in the pool yeah you know and you just said something really revealing that's power and when, when you feel power. powerless i want to shut something down yeah and that's why the kids were shitting in the pool they felt powerless because you fucking shut it down it takes all summer long to get that bacteria that's bacteria did you yeah. ever psychoanalyze <laughs> it that much i never thought of that before you go put shit you in the pool in, shut it down you put, put the you kids in the ain't got seat. nowhere to fucking play all summer now they got <laughs> they're forced into the fucking fire hydrant right <laughs> <laughs> the Giuliani style, yeah. God damn it! I'm uh, shutting down the seaport. Wow. I can't get my cut. <laughs> and shut the fuck down. Wow. South Street seaport. Let me tell you something. Where Three else have you crapped? Huh? Where else have you gone to the bathroom? On some couple of girls' titties. <laughs> Did you? You shit on I them? shit on fun bags. Were they in a yeah. pool? There's some crazy women out there. You that shit on a woman. You never saw two girls in a cup. Yeah. I've had four girls in the cup, goddammit. Really? That's your thing? You <laughs> no, that ain't my thing, Did you best. shit on a woman's titties? I would, if she asked me to. But have you ever done Why it? Why not? You would shit on a woman's yeah, titties? I pooped. 
You have. Yes. So you Tell have me about function. that. I've shit it on fucking you shit on the titties and Did they you rub do it that in. To Tina Fey. Oh my god. No, I wouldn't do it to Tina Fey. Come on, I would. I would do it to that chick that Spitzer was with. Would you? Yeah, she could get shit it on. I wonder how much that. I would tell her I'm a fart, and then I would just shit on her. You wouldn't be embarrassed. I would tell her I wouldn't be embarrassed. I'm a fucking. I'm a freak. I'm the fucking porno dude, man. Let me understand something now. Are you happy to be divorced? Are you out there banging? I'm happy that she's happy. No, wait a second. Don't give me any bullshit. I'm happy that she's happy. Now you're bullshit. Let me tell you something. Women love money. Men love freedom. I ain't never seen a man fuck a woman for a mink coat. (laughs) <laughs> right. Can I ask you, you a question? You give me some freedom, goddammit, and I love you forever. Hey, let me tell you something. When, you let you the get fucking lawyer? dog out? Did no, you get we a got a mediator. You got a mediator? Yeah. We I'm looking at that bracelet on your hand. Yeah. What did that cost you? This is about 61000 61, Is that where your money's going to Ferraris and jewelry? Are I'm you saving? black. What the fuck, man? Yeah, I'm black. I know you're black, but are you saving any My money? money I, you'd be surprised how much land I own. Really? Now, yeah, won't your own, wife get I half? I own half of fucking Virginia. Won't, ha- won't your wife get half of, uh, half of your half? <laughs> no, my wife, is. she's an entrepreneur. She's doing her thing, man. I give her like 21000 a month, so she's good. How did, she, how did she tell you she wanted a divorce? How did this all go down? Because you, you don't said, I want a fucking way. divorce. She said it for about five years straight. Right, because you're difficult to be with, aren't you? You are. You're, you're tough. You're tough. Comedian, dude. Yeah, but you're tough. I I'm see. I'm probably my one of my, my generation, one of my generation's funniest motherfuckers out. Uh, one of the I funniest did, guys I've ever. I was stirring three fucking times. You, you don't have no lame ducks on this fucking no, show. No, I don't. Dude. You're one of the funniest guys I ever met. You're a fucking icon. Right. You're my I am. dude. I know. But wait a minute. Fucking Artie we... right here. This is my dude. We hung out. Yeah. We watched some motherfuckers fuck. That's Remember right. that night? That's right. We did. Uh, yeah, you, tell, you think California. I'm a really big, big ball freak? We was in fucking Hollywood. Teddy's in the Roosevelt Hotel, right? And this yeah. motherfucker was banging the shit out of this girl right there in front of everybody. It wow. really was extraordinary. Wow. Like, but wait hot bang, he was a sex banging. show. A sex yeah, show. they yeah. put on a sex show for her. Yeah, Didn't cool. we read, though, not too long ago that you were at Caroline's and people booed? No. Who? And walked out? Tracy? Oh, yeah. Tracy, yeah. Not that me. didn't happen? No, never. No. Not Tracy. Oh, you crazy. I remember, I go in. When I'm on stage, baby, I give 150%. This, this, is why walk out. this man's a genius. If they walk out, if they walk out, God damn it, don't just walk out. Go home and write a fucking letter to send it to somebody. I don't give <laughs> right. a fuck. Tracy. I'm a fucking professional. My buddy's spent. I, this isn't making sense to me. You you finally gave in to your wife's demand for divorce. Right. And 21 then, years is a long time. And you were you faithful during the 21 years? You were not. You were not. Let's be honest. Was I faithful to yeah, my wife yeah. during the 21 years? You heard years? the question. Let me tell you. I'm going to get my answer. I got to think for a minute. I t- I'm not the one of these fans talking d- dumb motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> now, I would get down. I would holler at females, but I never I right. never penetrated nothing while right. I was with my wife. So how long after you granted my your wife? My wife ain't never have a problem with me and women. Okay. So once she said, let's get a divorce, and you agreed, how soon after were you out fucking? Well, first of all, I, mean, I wasn't out. I wasn't out like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was on the road. I was on the road a lot, and I got married to the fucking road, man. Okay. My lady, then she's not one for flying and all that, so I got to make a living. Right. So I got to go. Right. So she didn't want to go, so I the road, and you know what the road it happened to Ray Charles, motherfucker. Right. So did you, so right away. It gets lonely in that fucking hotel room. You bring chicks up to keep your feet warm in the bed. So who you with Rub now? your nuts. It's not, who you with now? I'm single. Just, I'm just single. single. I'm raising a baby. And Pam Anderson? She she's fucking hot. Man. What, would she walk around almost naked? On no, the set? no, 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 no. She had her her costume on, but, yeah. but she's a f- icon, man. It's Pam, so I'm sharing space with her. She still so of got course her. I'm a fucking look. I'm not repressed. Right. I'm not one of the motherfuckers on the set that ain't gonna look at women. I I let all the ladies know you're looking good. God damn it. Tracy Morgan <laughs> is good. in superhero movie opening this Friday in theaters everywhere. I'm excited about that. Yo, how man? I'm just excited to be man, here. This man. is great. It's what great. What fucking way you. do you you spend? Look how I'm spending my morning. I love it. I know I a million fucking comedians us. that'll never get to sit on this fucking That's true. Couch. We are. Never it's... get to gaze in Robin's fucking eyes and got a fucking <laughs> Let's uh, go to, uh, Audi rod- riding shotgun. <laughs> Let's go to Henry. Henry in St. Cloud, Florida. Go ahead, you're on with Tracy Morgan, the star of 30 Rock, superhero of the movie, and also just finished filming a new movie with oh, I'm Ice ready. Cube. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I, well, but he, I'm getting ready to film another movie next month with uh, Jessica Biel. Oh, Jessica Biel. Oh. Yeah, it's called Nailed. 
Oh, oh wow. Judy. David Ru- David Russell, the one, the director, David Russell. Yeah, he's directing this. He's so. got a huge can you, career going. Can you Trace. can you fuck famous chicks? Do you ever get a famous? I one? probably could, but I ain't, I ain't on it. I'm too busy, man, to really get down. Could you ever get a famous? Could you, ever get, could you ever get a famous white woman? That would be hell. Fucking yeah, I could. could. My game is strong. If I wasn't Tracy Morgan, I would push up. Who could you get? I pull. I pull. Bitch, let me tell you what I did on the airplane. Go ahead. I fucking seen this hot ass white woman, man. Beautiful. When was this? Hips. This is about two months. Let's go fucking hips, ass, fucking camel toe how I mean, <laughs> fucking big Tight ass, pants. big first fucking class. big titties. And so she was sitting behind me, and I noticed in first she, class. Yeah, I went until we was thirty five thousand feet in the air, right. and she was getting up to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom before her, right? And I beat my dick, yeah. And I put the sperm on the fucking doorknob. Oh, stop and it! She went in behind me. She was bad as a motherfucker. Took a, and that's I was what like, you did. That's good Back to that's my not a fucking strong, hair man. was in my fucking sperm. <laughs> Fuck that, we connected. <laughs> she touched my fucking spine. Would you Stop have it. you ever gotten a famous white woman? Yeah. You have. Yeah, I'm in the books. You are. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm in the books. I fucked a famous. When you say famous, you, when you say A list or B list? So Gordon Weaver. You fucked her in her ass. You fucked her in her ass. You fucked her in her ass. <laughs> yeah, it's me and Sigourney. I just fell in love with her in Aliens. When she's putting that suit on, you saw that big ass pussy, that fucking beef patty right there? <laughs> Oh, I love truth. eating that pussy. Oh, right. I, love I know you're it. kidding. I know you're kidding. He is? Uh, yeah. Could be. You never know. <laughs> no, they said Richard Pryor and Barbara Waters did something. That's right. I asked her about that. <laughs> is it, was it true? She denies it. <laughs> but this your word is out on the streets already. Right. But, but That but, word is still out there on the streets. But explain it to it me. It then came down. When you fucked, like an indictment. When you fucked a white famous woman, was she A-list or B-list? Somebody A-list. 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 Yeah. TV star or came movie star? Came on the small of her back. Movie star or came on the small of her back. Movie star. Movie star. Yeah, right. Been on the red carpet a few times. We met on the red carpet. No kidding. Our eyes met. Our eyes met. Is that true? It's swear true, in your man. mother's I life. Swear. I swear it's true. Yeah. Yes. We went back to the hotel in L.A. Man, she rode the dick. She even said, "Oh, is it my stomach?" Wow. <laughs> I went crazy when I heard that stomach shit. I was like, "Oh, Ooh. is it your stomach? Oh, is it your Look stomach?" Look at you. Look at you. I'm a fucking beast, man. Let's go to Henry. Henry, you're... Uh, oh, Henry, go ahead. You had a question. Oh, man, you guys are crazy, Howard. I, everybody just... What's up, man? First time call so I'm a little nervous. Yeah, hurry. Trace. What's you up? The ship, man. You the shit, bro. Right on, baby. <laughs> Quick question, man. Hey, what's you up? ever been with more than one girl? Yeah. You've had a threesome? How many? Yeah, come on. I'm in the Vegas, man. I have about five in my fucking hotel room. <laughs> Not hookers? <laughs> just walk around. Were they hookers? Even, yeah. They were. Pay for the pussy. Uh, five females in the room. You want to do it? Let me tell you something. You, you oh, live yeah. once, God damn it. You live <laughs> once, motherfucker. That's it. What do you do with you five women? You live once. Just Why tell them to walk hooker? around, beat your dick. Tell them to walk around, kiss your nuts. Whatever really? the fuck you want to do. I'm spending the money. <laughs> yeah. That money, my money's long. What did that long. cost you? Money money money. Money. Huh? What does your night cost you like that? Yeah, about 1500 1500 Five girls 2, walking around kissing your balls. 2000 Walk around the room. Wow. I'm a black superfly. I'm Ron O'Neill, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Ron O'Neill, motherfucker. Ken, you're on the air in Lighthouse Point, Florida. <laughs> I'm Ron O'Neill, great- motherfucker. Radio. I live in the name of Ron O'Neill. That's my father. And I, told, I tell grown women, grown black women when I want them, I say, you know who my father is. They say, who? I say, David Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, go ahead. You're on the Lighthouse Point, Florida. They said it was Eddie Kendricks, but he don't come around. My mom, I know it was David Tracy, Ruffin. listen to Ken. Come on. Let's let him this ask you. an interview for the ages, man. Yep. I'd love to be on the fly on the wall when you sober up and your people sit you down. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be fucking crazy. This guy thinks you're high right now. Is no. it possible you're high right now? It's fucking oh, eight in the morning. Why would I be fucking high, more? Do you think, Ken? Are you implying that you think he's high? I think he's on a great career arc right now. I think he's off the uh, the yoke or the collar or whatever they had him tied up to uh, electronically. And now that he's off, he's going nuts. And I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going fucking nuts. <laughs> Is this the same jackass who right. called before and said yeah. he couldn't vote? Uh, Paul, you're on the air in Burlington, Vermont. Go ahead, Paul. Good morning, guys. Morning. Yeah, a huge fan. Love the Manaconda. He's sounding great. All, Thank uh, you. All uncensored, you know? Right. But a uh, huge fan. He's a riot. Love to hear the dry sense of humor. And wondering if he got paid in cash. Cash or frozen pizzas for those DiGiorno commercials. Oh, pizza. I got fucking cash, brother. Yeah, those pay well, huh? These yeah, commercials. Me, they do. Shit. Yeah. I got a great fucking team. My manager, my eight day Becky, Kevin Voltrak. I got Jewish motherfuckers. They want the money. I know, because after an appearance I like this, you'll get a, he'll get a, 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 a bite and they lock and shake. Are you a, a multimillionaire now? 
I get money. I got. I got you a got couple million. Money, yeah. I got. A couple I think million. the wife's gonna come at you though. I think hey, that's cool. She deserved it. Twenty one years, three kids. This, she's good. That's so you're my just baby. you're just gonna hand over. She was the with me. She was with me when I ain't have when roaches were crawling on us. Will you ever get married again? I don't think so. I huh? don't know. Nah. I know. Yo, let me tell you something. My lady was with me when I was making seventy five dollars a fucking show. You fell out of love. Yeah, one more question. I would now. never fall out of love. Once you love somebody, you fucking love somebody. My lady still give me business advice. She's fucking got a BA in fucking business, and she's still my partner. Really? Yeah, she's just selling houses now. She watched Flip That House or A&E. Now she thinks you fucking Donald Trump. Wow. <laughs> well, let me but taste. But do you think you couldn't find a woman to trust now because they've all well, be That's a fucking after- case. I'm going back to my wife. <laughs> I ain't doing that shit over. I, I wouldn't survive it. Hook knows Mike. Damn peer pressure again? Yeah. Hell fucking no. Hook knows Mike, you're on the air. <laughs> Hey, come on now. Y'all know you bastard. So listen, Tracy Morgan, Radio Gold, my man. My Radio dude. Gold. Thank you, baby. Hey, listen, now, uh, what's the craziest stuff you've done with a chick aside from shitting on a woman? Well, how much crazier <laughs> does it get? How crazier does it get? What is crazier than shitting on a woman? I mean, that's a human being. I mean, I that's know, unbelievable. Maybe a little, little ass to mouth or something like that. I know, gave crazy? a girl a dirty Sanchez one time. What is that exactly? Right. It's where you stick your dick in her ass and you pull it out and some of the shit that's on your ass, you take it off and you wipe it under her nose. Oh, give her no, you did. Fucking Did dirty you do that? Sanchez. You really did that. Well, you Sanchez. are a freak. You got Danny Sanchez. You are a sexual freak. Let me freak. tell you what a strawberry shortcake is, goddamn. Unbelievable. <laughs> what is a strawberry shortcake? I ain't telling you. What is it? You've done that? No. No, you've never done that. I know, this guy's like, did you, what's the craziest thing you ever did? Did you, did you ever FedEx a girl to the town dump? <laughs> is it true you feel that you want to be making babies till you're 80 years old? You're yeah, hell fuck yeah. I want, want to have more kids. My legacy, yeah. You want more kids? Yeah. The world will be a better place if you have more Tracy Morgans, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. You really want to have see more kids? my you smile, but you, you're in the free and clear. You have three older children. You 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 you've raised a family. Now yeah, I got three boys. I want a girl. God damn it! You really? My do. girl has slowed me down. So you think you'll get into a relationship going, and, and, and and make make a baby with a new woman? It gets, she got to be the right one. She got to be she, right. that pussy. Got to be wearing the cape. Mm-hmm. That right. got to have a cape for that motherfucker. Well, look at look at uh, a lot of people. They get married and and look what happens to you. I never thought it would have happened to you. I'm chilling. I can't believe it. It's hey, unbelievable. Why you say that, Howard? Oh, I thought it would last You're forever. not all broken up. A lot of guys are like, oh, I can't believe it. I was just with her last night. She just made me some food, some potato salad, sweet potato pie, and all that stuff. Come really? On, she ain't going don't nowhere. You, that's amazing. I don't think she just don't know what she want to do right now. It's, it's, it's got to be incredible pressure for her to be married to Tracy. I'm Tracy fucking Morgan. Could you ever marry a girl you shit on? Like, once you shit on a woman, could you marry her? Hell no, I never want to see her again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I want to see her for yeah, But true. she let you do... She got fucking, she got fucking shit all over her. <laughs> <laughs> what is she up for? <laughs> Fuck, I want to see her for. <laughs> I mean, what that's an excellent my, point. Yeah, <laughs> my shit came from inside my body. Wow. Onto her. Wow. I had well, diarrhea that spokes, night, too. Here's the spokesperson hey, for the journal. I, I, I don't fucking believe run. you. I, you're, explain something to me. You own more than 10,000 pairs of sneakers. Yeah, I do. Isn't that sort of Where gross? Where do you keep no. them? Is it gross in understand. the sense that there's a lot of ghetto kids and poor people who look at that and say, you know, don't tell I was one of those fucking ghetto kids, goddammit. Goddammit, I didn't have one when I was coming up. I know, but I'm just making up for what I didn't get. Let's just I spend my money on sneakers. Why? Cars. Why so many? Porno sneakers? and CDs. Why not save some Because that money? is my fetish. Just like women get money and go buy fucking handbags and cocaine. Yeah. I go get sneakers and porn. Wow. And how often do you wear these sneakers? In other words, yeah, you wear them once. Wear 10, and then you throw them out. No, I don't throw them out. It's like the Imelda Marcos. Put them right Black there, man. Let me see what you're wearing today. What's right now, I got Felines, Wu-Tang. Yeah. And, Wu-Tang. That's, and, and today you will wear them, and then tomorrow you won't. No, I'll, I'll go home. This is just my morning wear. When I go home, I'll change because I got to do BET later on in the day. So I'm going to go get some fly shit. I'm telling you, I'm fucking the birth child of Ron O'Neill. That is crazy stuff. I'm telling you right I'm now. I'm from Brooklyn, man. I've always been good with clothes, man. You have 6,500 pairs of shoes on the East Coast and 4,000 <laughs> pairs on the West Coast. Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. In storage. Yeah. I live in Trump Village. That could be an illness. <laughs> no, it's be not an illness. illness. It's no. excessive. No. But what can you do with sneakers, I love and, sneakers. Snor- and storage? Because I'm a fly motherfucker. I got to live up to the part, Robin. <laughs> right. Well, let he me can tell say you. can't be a pimp without pimp store. shoes, God so, damn it. So now this movie that... I'm pimping hall. The right. movie Superhero. Am I going to really see you in it? You got a cameo or are you in there working it? Are I'm you, in there working it. You see, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all over the bar wide and see them hook me up. Have you seen the finished movie yet? I haven't seen the finished movie yet. How I won't even possible? get to go to the premiere because I'll be at 30 Rock getting that money. 
But I'm checking I'm checking Cheddar like a food inspector. Wow. I mean That's what? all I want is checks. You know what I did during the strike? What? what? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> God you damn it. We on strike. I'm going to fuck. Do you it wasn't have, a strike against I was fucking. out there on the streets. Explain to me how Sue's actors... Sue's Rendezvous? You got to come up to Sue's Rendezvous. Explain dude. to me how actors don't <laughs> see the movie before the premiere. I mean, you're out promoting it. Don't you want to know... Easy. I'm a, working. Yeah. But don't you want to see... Don't you say to them, I see it on the news. I see it on 42nd Street with real fucking people. Wow. I'm going to go see if I'm really funny. I'm and you going feel to the it's funny. You feel I'm, the movie's I'm funny. I'm very funny. You I'm recommend your fans go see it. It's going to be funny. It's, uh, all, all right. through the movie is hilarious. All right. I like it because I like superheroes. I like all that kind of I stuff. I don't like fucking superheroes because there's no black superheroes. They but now there is. Green Alan, yeah. The Green Lantern. Yeah. The Green Lantern. They, they gave black. him a fucking ring, but they know we like jewelry. <laughs> they trying to tell us something. The Incredible Hulk is not a fucking superhero. He's a drunk white dude in a bar. <laughs> you know, white rage. That white rage is fucking way worse than black rage. Well, I am excited. I'm concerned for white women. Really? Every time I turn on CNN, one of the motherfuckers that came up missing. <laughs> Do you Better stay the fuck out of Cancun, goddammit. Uh, well, this is exciting. Today, stay out of Cancun, right, Artie? I, I, learned, uh, I, I learned, learned a couple of things. You're for Barack Obama. Yeah. Yes. How do you feel we have a black governor now? Did you know that in New York yeah, State? Yeah, I know, I, know, I know who got replaced. Let's see what he do. You, you, I heard he cleaned it. Go I heard he cleaned the house. I heard he cleaned the house. Now, as long as the power's to the people, man, I'm for whoever's for the people. Well, I don't saying, care if you're white, black, whatever. As long as you, because people ain't fucking happy. Well, and I saying, do comedy, and it's making my fucking job harder and harder. Well, they're, 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 right. They're saying you know, motherfuckers are coming in the comedy club with fucking issues. Yeah. Well, you know what? They're saying, oh, do you fucking know, man? You I'm, sense the tension when I'm on stage. I'm I can sense the fucking. Some of it is racial. And a lot of it is sexual. Right. Ladies, you got to get up off that pussy and give it up, goddammit. <laughs> Stop sitting on it. The world could be a lot calmer. If yeah, they give, give a it motherfucker up. some anal, man. We love that brown eye. Do you like anal? Yeah. Yeah? I got to go, because I might not be the first, but I got to be the greatest. Right. And women, sometimes when you get into argument, they say, well, you little dick motherfucker. You say, that's why I fucked you in your ass with this little <laughs> dick. What's your favorite thing about the journal? My people? wife used to always, she used to always fucking try to come back, but when we argue, she said, that's why I fake all my fucking orgasms with you. Yeah. And I oh. said, that's why I'm faking this whole fucking relationship with you, goddammit. <laughs> I got a family on the other side of town, goddammit. They call me Uncle Morgan. You fake it, fake <laughs> Your right. I you up. fake your orgasm. I'm yeah, I drive up. a white van to my mistress' house. <laughs> Ain't nothing like getting some pussy in that white van. Right, right in front of fucking City Island. Take right. City Island, <laughs> give her some lobster. <laughs> she gonna be on top of the world, goddammit. Wow. <laughs> you take a ghetto woman a red lobster, you are the man. <laughs> you get her some king crab legs, that pussy tastes better when she just ate some king crab legs. It's, are you saying it's easy I to impress the ghetto sister? I take a three o'clock. That's romantic. When you take a girl and to fucking Nathan's and Coney Allen at 3 in the morning? <laughs> get us some oysters? With white chicks, you can't get away with that. What? You can't take them. That's my best clients, really? white chicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They like the whole experience. I take them up through Harlem. They see, they feel they done did something. <laughs> this right here is 115 for Lennox. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get out and touch the concrete. <laughs> well, I got to tell you something. You have really lit the world on fire today. You though. think? I think so. Yo, you Howard, really man, you're my fucking there. dude, man. You're my dude. And I got to tell you something. I'm always there for you. Whenever you want to be here, yes, whatever sir. you need from me, you let me know. Because I got to tell you something. I'm excited about you. I think you're a great talent. Can't I wait for you to go to the White House. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. When you meet Barack Mark Obama. Mark my fucking words, Howard. I'm going to lean into him. I'm going to go, what's up, nigga? <laughs> What do you think he'll he say to you? He better not front on me. What do you think he'll say <laughs> to you? If he call, if he call Secret Service on me, yeah. I'm gonna say you pussy. <laughs> I knew you wasn't fucking handling do you think your he business. Uses, do you think Barack Obama uses the N word? Yeah, you do. He gonna use it on stage. He will not be the offended. The first fucking the first speech he give the American people he gonna say, "What's up, niggas?" <laughs> <laughs> Cut, President. You, Mr. President, you can't say that. And I'm <laughs> the president, motherfucker. <laughs> and you I, do that, uh, that shit to all the other niggas. And I'm sure he's not the first president who's used the N word. <laughs> it's, right. it's real. It's, they call him Knuckle. Man, his real name. They call him Knuckles, man. Is that right? His real name is Knuckles. His real name is Clyde Smith. That's funny. 
He's that's a, he's unbelievable. a made motherfucker. Well, listen, you know, all your dreams are coming true, and that's what's important. Howard, I didn't really shit on nobody, man. I I, I, I got to say that disclaimer. That, back. that yeah. disclaimer, you know, like <laughs> what, what, I what they say, no animals got hurt. <laughs> 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 no women got shit at all. You're way, you're way too classy a guy. But I did beat my dick. My aunt was a Jehovah Witness. Really? And I remember the first time I masturbated. You know them magazine watchtowers? <laughs> yes. I came, I stuck them pages together. <laughs> I can't believe you're a Jehovah Witness. I stuck, I wasn't no Jehovah Witness. I just went over her house. <laughs> and I, I interrupted a book study. <laughs> and a friend was sitting there. Right. I was 16 years old. Is that when you started getting it? Oh, my God. I was beating my dick like a maniac cab driver in Manhattan. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Tracy, I know you're on. Robin a, is cracking up. <laughs> I know you're on a promotional tour. Oh, my God. There's a big movie opening this I got a, I got a, I'm writing my book, too. Oh, I got to read that. I'm writing my fucking Your book. Your memoirs. I'm writing a book, dude. Yeah. The same, I forget his name. His name is Anthony. He wrote Eminem's book, too. Anthony you were, like, my book. Hey. I got a million dollar book deal. When you were, when you were on Saturday Night Live. I grew up uh, next door to fucking sociopaths, man. I got some stories to fucking tell you, Will dude. you tell the story when you were on Saturday Night Live, when you fucked one of the stars of uh, Saturday Night Live? Saturday Night Live going to get a chapter. It is. It's going to get You're a chapter. You're going to tell all. It's going to get a chapter. You banged one of the uh, guest hosts, didn't you? I banged a lot of people at SNL, man. Yeah. This dick been around, man. Good for you. And good for your dick. Hey, yeah, Tracy, a- Anthony Bozer? Anthony Bozer's the name of the guy writing your book. Yeah. The same guy's writing my book. Ant oh, Black. Yeah. 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 Yes, he's writing your book, too. Ant Black. Yeah. <laughs> we watched the fucking the Super Bowl together. <laughs> <laughs> we should my make man, stories. Ant. Yeah, we should fucking come up with something. Why don't you guys just put out a combined yeah, book? just trade a few. <laughs> should come up with something. All of a sudden, he's like, hey, I thought he's working on my book. No wonder I can't get him this on guy's writing 80 books. Yeah. Fucking can't come over and get my stories. Well, he's good. You'll like him. What do you do? You sit there and you tell him your stories and then he puts them down on paper? I just I just start from, me personally, I'm starting from when I was born. Right. And right now we are up to the ninth grade. I A lot imagine. of shit happened in my life from birth to fucking ninth grade. Right. You could almost do one you buck think just a motherfucker get to this point in his head? <laughs> normal, living a normal fucking life. I was exposed to shit as a child that a child is not supposed to be exposed to. That's the first sentence of the book right there. there yeah, don't go. fucking, don't sentence. kill the messenger. <laughs> That's the I'm second the sentence. voice of motherfucker. A whole generation was wiped out. I'm looking for a whole generation of mother. I don't even know nobody my age that's black that was around in the fucking 80s, man. Right. Cracking A's wiped motherfuckers out. Right. Well, listen, there's a lot to read and a lot to learn, but uh, we'll save it for you the next time. You know, me and your relationship is most unlikely. Why? Because I was starting to Tracy Morgan. That's fucking... How cool why is, is that? It, why, why we is have it? the coolest kids in the lunchroom well, right course. now. That's power, bro. Everybody's not fucking sitting at our lunch table, Fuck Howie. everyone else. Yeah. That's right. Kick everyone out of the lunch table. Get the fuck out of here. I like your attitude. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. You are dynamic. And uh, you're on a roll. Do you, know I mean? do you think he's like this all day long? Yes. Oh. Yes, I do. That's why he's divorced. That's why his. Well, she lasted what? She could. She loved me, I, Robin. I she, still, I still make her, I still make her blush and everything. Yeah. He, uh, oh, I yeah. bet you do. <laughs> we be driving in the car sometimes, <laughs> and I just pull a titty out at a red light. Just do to you? Stay, just to fucking stay spontaneous. I right. No wonder I love doing. Blushing. We go up to the cloisters. You pull I, the titty out. I go up to the cloisters and we bang in the summer. Isn't that really? nice? The cloisters so on the west side. Get back with her. What are you doing? Lady, Get man. back with you, man. Well, she want to do her thing. I'm going to let right. her know she had the fucking genie in the bottle. Right. You don't give the bottle away. Right. I could grant your every wish, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to take You ain't got to take 21,000 a month. You got the whole shit. You wearing the crown. 21 G's a, a month. a wolf. <laughs> 21 G's a month. Is that what you got to give her? Yeah. Oh, my That's God. That's what I chose to give her. Not about four and a half years. Mm-hmm. I chose to do that for her. She deserves it. But I make a million dollars a fucking month. <laughs> <laughs> you think fucking Paul McCartney give a fuck about that little bit of change he just gave his ex-wife? <laughs> he gonna make a billion dollars this fucking year. He'll be out on tour. Yeah, just to keep her out of his fucking hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah hold that. <laughs> yeah. I, let me tell you something. I, I stopped going to the strip club, and I am used to make my wife get up on the fucking bed and dance, and I throw money at her. Right. Then I take the fucking money back and we'll go food shopping the ball, <laughs> Are you going to be able to handle it when she's with another guy? You probably won't. Nah, I'm a flip. 
You're gonna flip. Really? I'm still hitting that. She ain't going nobody. She can't give that pussy away. You, she st- you're still hitting her. Yeah, I'm still beating that. Wow. Well, you with somebody for 21 That's some years? Divorce. Yeah, she ain't ready to get that pussy to no other man. Ain't no other <laughs> man gonna be sweating and breathing. But on does her. she ever say to you, "Hey, you I just, got one girl that's you a got freak, a filthy dude. penis full of other women's pussy." Yeah, she, I gotta wear rubbers now. Now with her, you have to wear rubbers. Yeah, she yeah. don't play that shit, mm-hmm. and she won't sleep on the fucking bed. In my house when she come over sometimes. Really, because that's got other women she, on it. Yeah, yeah, so she sleep on the couch. And I said, well, that's where most of the fucking magic went down, <laughs> God damn, That's the DNA <laughs> couch. You don't see that spot right there? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you think that is? That's where most of the magic went down. Wow. Look at you with that penis. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm you know. Is the head really that big on your penis? Yeah, wow. I'm well endowed, dude, man. Man. Got yeah. big balls, too? Big, no, nah, I got two scoops of raisins, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get that fucking deal with Kellogg. Yeah, yeah. yeah listen, good I got you. a tattoo on my dick that says stovetop. <laughs> Why is I'm that? I'm stuff that pussy up, make the pussy go. <laughs> 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 well, you're very That's graphic. Good, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> I was begging this chick the other day, and she wouldn't give me nothing, man. I was arguing. She said, I said, Why I can't get nothing? She said, Because I got my period. I said, I don't give a fuck. I run red lights. <laughs> I run red lights. That fucking red lights. I'm at that age now. I got to take pills to get this dick up. You do? My really? dick is not fucking... I'm about 17. You're taking Viagra? Yeah, because my mind, I live in a pressure cooker. I'm shocked. I take Viagra. I'm shocked. I pop a blue pill, a blue demon wow. every now and then. If I want to go like two hours, if I see the pussy and I want to go hard mm-hmm. and I want to go in. Mm-hmm. Now, if I, if I don't want to go in and I just want to nut, then I won't I'll take a Viagra. I'm older than you. And uh, I think I am, right? I'm much older than I'm you. I'm 30, yeah. I'm fucking 54 years old. I don't take a Viagra. I can but do that, it two, but, three times a night if I have to. Because you're fucking crazy. I am. You're I'm demented. You, I'm sex addicted. You are. You're sex addicted and you <laughs> use women as crash dummies. That's right. <laughs> I took you a Viagra and made me them. shit on the chick. Well, I want to meet the guy <laughs> who takes your wife and starts banging her. And I want to see how you handle it. I want to meet that motherfucker, too, because there's going to be some shit in that parking lot. <laughs> well, okay, she's a divorced woman. I'm going to this motherfucker. <laughs> she's a divorced woman. Let me tell you something. I told her if I die, she better not get that pussy away. Wow. I will come back and haunt her fucking ass. But you're ass. divorced. She's got to go find a man. I don't give a fuck. What you minds, you fucking minds. I'm a black motherfucker. I'm a Tracy. I don't want to <laughs> She might have broke up with me, but I ain't break up with fucking her. Wow. No, oh, God damn it. Oh, man, but you're My out boy, there. You hear me out there, Bing Bing? Don't do it, goddammit. Keep your eye on the shadow. This is a real black man. Oh, my. This is the genuine deal. <laughs> to the deal fourth right fucking here. power. You're damn right. You are a real black man. To the fourth motherfucking power. You learned your lessons well in the ghetto. Let me tell you something. Read the book. Maybe it's going to be juicy. I, I don't care. It was care things I did before show How business. wealthy you are right now, they will never take the brother out of you. No. You, you st- speak like a strong black man. I got soul. That's why I came to teach those who can't say my name. All right. Good for you. I'm proud of you. You know how I many people say fucking Howard Stern a day? Right. When, when God, when you pass, other motherfuckers go jump out the window, goddammit. That's how I want it. You are Ron O'Neill. I don't O'Neil. big like fucking Ron O'Neill, the son of Ron O'Neill. And I'm, I'm going out like Ryan Michael O'Neil. Jackson. You mean no, Ron, Ron O'Neill. O'Neil. Ron O'Neill. I was O'Neil. afraid you want to be like Tatum and Ryan No, O'Neil. no, 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 like no, 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 no. You don't want to be like that. You <laughs> want to be Ron fly. O'Neill. Ron O'Neill, goddammit. Right, okay, fly. I want to make that clear. If you're going around Nobody and saying, wants to be Ryan I'm a going saying you're Ryan O'Neal, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think it's too so macho. Ryan O'Neal and homeboy that plays Chef, Richard Roundtree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen. Hey, can I I'm ask you a question, O'Neal. Howard? What? Tip you think O'Neal. I got the goods? Do I got the goods? Audie. You got the goods. Audie, to, you're I got listening the goods? To me. You got oh. the goods to go all the way. You, but you, got, you got to. You got goods to give away, brother. You've got to stay pace focused. Yourself. Pace yourself. I am. You're a little bit uh, on fire now. I don't want you to burn out like a supernova. That's cool, but you got to understand, I'm 39 years old. If I was going to go off the deep end, I would have did it a long time ago. That fucking bracelet was only four Coronas. It cost me a lot, but it's cool. And you're really not drinking? No. I don't. I I just don't have the taste for it. I could if I want. Right. I could if I want, but I ain't. You smoking weed? No. I don't, I don't get down. You don't smoke I weed. used to fucking get high. Yeah. Then I stopped that shit. I got too many fucking pills? hands in the fucking pot, You're man. You're not on Oxycontin? I got the, none, none of it. Dude, I'm 39. I don't right. do that shit. Right. The only right. thing is, I know you're representing. I don't I know do that. I got fucking kids. My youngest son is 16. I don't want him to think it's cool to drink and drive. But I know Dave, Dave Beck is your Way manager. Way beyond me. Dave Beck is your manager. Yeah, Beck Just, Beck. just watch out for him. That's all. Why? I know the guy. <laughs> come on, dude. He's, he's got sticky fingers. Artie, come on. <laughs> I'm Artie. kidding. I know that. Artie's <laughs> Joe 
joking with you. I am. Our motherfucking Artie is my fucking dude, man. Yeah. He's Artie, my Artie, comrade. Make it clear to Tracy. Yeah, no, I'm, that, I, I'm yeah, friends I with Dave. You know. Becky's the coolest he motherfucker is. in the world. He's a great man. Listen to me. I'm excited. I'm going to go see Superhero. Yo, I really am. I want to see How it. I'm I performing at Caroline's next month. Well, please. why didn't you say that? Come see me do stand-up. Dude, I'm gonna come, when, up. You, when are you going to be there? I Give think the on the 10th. On the 10th? April. April 10th April, you're going to be yeah, there. Yeah, like the second week of April, man. I, I do about two hours. All right. Well, listen. You are the best. Thank you, Howard. There's no one better than you. Cool stuff. You're the greatest guest, and you're a Thank great you. talent, and I appreciate that you come in here, and you sit down like a man, and you tell people how to live, and how to, how to learn, and how to love. And uh, who, who, who is better at it than you? Uh, honest to God. And thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Morgan's my guru. He knows how to live life to its fullest. He's not worried. He's not scared. No. He fears no man. Tracy, man. Yo, I had a in there today. Another one out the park. It's always the best when you with Howard. Yeah, so, so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things have changed since you've been... Uh, since, and some things you know. have remained the same. Like what? Like my nuttiness. <laughs> so now that you're single, do you have uh, you have a message to all the ladies out there? Watch out, goddammit. Right. This dick is free. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey, this is Tracy Morgan. Check out the trailer for the new movie that I'm in, Superheroes. Check it out. Free. The people need a hero. Who am I? I'm Dragonfly. Stop! The story of my life is not for the faint of heart. Stop the bot! Seven genetically enhanced super dragonflies. But there's only six in there. From the makers of Scary Movie and The Naked Gun. There we go. Uncle Albert. Rick. How did you do that? It's easier than it looks. <gasps> well, I don't think so. Comes the ultimate superhero movie. I think I have superpowers. I can walk on walls. I have super strength, super agility. With great power comes... Hey! Just try to breathe. I can't. You're nailing on my crotch. Oh. Family. Hi, everybody. Take your seat. Ah, ah, ah. Not till we say grace. Jeez! Amen. Sacrifice. I realize we can never be together. You love me, Rick. I know you do. I'm telling you this for your own good. I... This spring... If you think you've seen it all, you have no idea. You just saved that old lady's life. If I hadn't pushed her out of the way, she would have died. <laughs> Superhero movie. Now we'll get to Lisa G. Hey, can you guys not have uh, Counting Crows on? Why? Because they're boring. No, they're good. They're good, the Counting Crows. We'll be good. It's not going to be, I know. You don't know that. I know it. Give it a shot. If it's not good, you turn it off. I've heard them on in, in the past, and they just weren't interesting. Today's the day they're going to be really interesting. Today's the day? <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been reading about Adam. He t says he's on uh, depressant pills, some kind of oh, well, anti antidepressant. Uh, he's trying to get depressed, is what you're saying. No, he is depressed, and he's trying to get undepressed. Antidepressant pills. Antidepressant pills, not depressant pills. <laughs> I'm wrong about that. That's always interesting. What's he got to be depressed about? Let's find out. Yeah, his life isn't going well. So what are you guys going to do? What are you doing down here today? Promoting our new record called, um, um, what is it? Uh, Zoso. Zoso. No, that's not it's it. It's actually just called, it's untitled. No. It's untitled. It's no. a the Led Zeppelin album. The White Album. The white, that, the white, the no, white. but it's not white. It's I think it's going to sell big. Survivors. I think it's, it's going to Street <laughs> Survivors. We took the flames out. Yeah. No, what's the one? Second Helping. No. Second Street helping. Survivors is the what last album, one. What album has that? Yeah. Yeah. Our it's, big hit, Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, Second Helping. Second Helping. Second Helping. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's called Second Helping. Or Untitled. So you guys are here to promote an album? 
Nah, I'm just here to talk to Howard. <laughs> what, what are you going to talk to him about? I don't, you don't have any choice. We don't talk to Howard yeah. about. I think I Howard, decide, Howard wants to talk Howard about. Howard to talk about. You talk about. So you guys are game, you're game for anything, life. right? I think we'll talk about something embarrassing in my personal life. And <laughs> there's no real way around it, is there? No, no not really. Nah, so <laughs> why ask the question? Why, why walk in ashamed? You know, <laughs> true. Be the ball. Own just the ball. one though. Just one. Own the ball. Be the ball. <laughs> We're not going to talk about an album. It's, uh, it's too serious for this situation. No. For serious radio. My album's about disintegration, and it's devastating and serious. personal and, and uh, difficult. Devastating. It's actually hard for me to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, you don't um, talk about it usually. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, we can't talk about it. Yeah. But whatever we do, don't talk about the record. This is what happens. Uh, the Counting Crows are here, and they're tuning up. And the tune-up sounds good. I like the tune-up. I like jam sessions. I like to hear the band tuning up. Boys, you want to tune up a little? Or you, you see, as soon as... It was sounding so good in here. Yeah. Oh, there's Adam. What is that? A bunny outfit? Oh my goodness! What is that? What happened to you? You lost your mind. <laughs> it happened a long time ago. <laughs> hey, Adam. I don't understand. The Counting Crows are Adam Duritz, who's wearing a giant bunny outfit with bunny ears, <laughs> and can't get his headphones on as a result. Yeah, you're you're He's ruining really your look. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're a rock star? I mean, you can't be aware of something. Bruce Springsteen wouldn't wear that. You don't like the bunny outfit? I do like it. What I does it I signify? Don't feel like people take me seriously enough. <laughs> so I, I should wear a full-length bunny outfit. You look good, I Adam. Look, Reece- I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I feel like a bunny. Adam works out of my gym. I was going to say Adam's in shape. He's <laughs> well, he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. He's one of those guys now who thinks he's like super skinny. He takes his shirt off wherever oh, he can. Oh, really? Is yeah. he Mr. Uh, I put my bunny outfit on wherever I can. Tank yeah. top at this point. He wears a tank top. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> tell everyone how you today. tell everyone how you lost the weight. I find this fascinating. Vomiting cocaine. No. Besides the cocaine, how did you lose the weight? Paminakia. Yes, but they well, call it Paminakia. Did Pat, but didn't you go nutritional plan at La Palestra? I worked out hard. I did my circuit classes with everybody, and, and uh, you went on a cookie diet. No, no, just Pat. Just no, Pat. You went on a cookie diet. I what give is all the credit diet? to Pat. Come on, tell everyone what that happened. I give all the credit to Pat and the La Palestra nutritional plan, or else he'll fucking kill me. <laughs> he went on a cookie diet. <laughs> he How really did. You lose weight eating cookies. I don't know. I've don't ask me. My entire life, I never it, lost any it's weight. Called, he told me about it. It's called Pat. The, I'm down for you. Howard is stabbing you in the back right now. I'm not. If the you're cookie, out there listening, no, you're working out. And you're doing well, but you also went on a cookie dough diet. Cookie <laughs> dough. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you. He wouldn't even diet. cook Absolutely. the cookies. He would eat Howard, raw no, cookies. He though? would eat raw cookie dough all day. But People of America, do you buy this? <laughs> no, no, no. T- trust the man in the bunny outfit. <laughs> you have a new album out. The Counting Crows are on tour. You're going out on tour with Maroon Five. How do you guys decide? Like, are you the headliner or is Maroon Five the headliner? How do you work all that out? The ego we're thing? flipping every night. Oh, really? Is that how it's done? One night we're on top. The other night they're on top. It's so you're a top rock. one night, and the next night you're a bottom. It, it's all it really is very erotic what uh <laughs> i had that guy on from maroon five adam levine nice guy right he's, he's a nice guy i liked yeah. him actually I, I thought he was gonna be an asshole he turned out to be a nice guy no, no he's a good guy and they opened for they opened for us a long time um, we were doing that tour with mayor how does the tour uh, come about who who pairs you up Who's uh the, well, we talked about it together managers and me and adam talked about it you did you know him personally uh-huh yeah because yeah. we toured together four four years ago five years ago okay how is uh, the record business I'm being serious now, okay, for a second. Don't uh, don't call me a jerk off. I don't understand now how in the in the record the record business is in shambles. I believe in the old days you'd put out a record and you know as well as I do you'd sell albums. That was the way people got there. They'd go to a music store. The music stores are gone. There was just a report report that Walmart's forcing uh, the record business to sell the CDs for nine dollars. Uh, I guess if you, is it, do you make an album and then what people download it from iTunes now? How is it distributed? We've been trying to make them sell it for nine dollars forever. Yeah, I know you've ourselves. always been for lower we prices. Want it to be cheaper. Okay, but how do you make money in the record business now? Well, with people the record? will buy records. Where? Online in record stores. You have to just remind them that you're not a fucking asshole. Right, but you have to. But where do you even get? It's harder to get your music even played, right? Well, well, we we just. Uh, before the album, I just we pulled the album because I wanted to insist that they let us do this free digital 45. So we could take one song from each side of the record and put it out free on the internet. And we sent it out to every blog, every webzine, everyone we could possibly get to give it to. We gave the f- two free songs to. But you understand the record company's position. You guys will uh, get They're your music. They're furious. They didn't want us to do it. Well, of course, because you get you get paid from touring. 
they want to get paid for selling albums. If yeah, you give it away you know for what? free, what's the, what's the point to them? The more popular we are touring, the more people will buy records. Look, Is you, that true? Well, if you give know, it away for free? If you want free? to stay alive in this business, you better do something to make yourself popular. <laughs> that's right. That's Otherwise, true. it will just be the only one surviving. Your new album just got a, I think, a three and a half star review in Rolling Stone. I read it. I don't know if it was three stars or three and a half. That's pretty good, right? I mean, that's three out of four. Three and a half out of four. That's a classic. That's, little, that's quite an accolade. It was a little derisive, I would say. Did you think so? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, dismissive. It was a little dismissive, but they loved the record. Well, the, the guy, uh, they, they wrote a really good review, the uh, profile of us. They said you whine too much. They did say I whine too much. Do you whine too much? I whine just enough. I'm like <laughs> Mama Bear. Uh, is or is he it depressed? Baby Bear? Is he depressed? Is Papa yeah. Bear whine not at all? Mama Bear, Mama Bear whines. Mama Bear, you're right. Baby, Mama Bear just whines just enough. I was worried about you when well, I read that. I don't that. whine. I'm just complaining. I know, but I worry about you. I really honestly Dude, I worry do. about me too. Like nobody's business. What's going on? I read interview after interview that you went on antidepressants. That's why you gained I weight. I didn't go on antidepressants. You did. I didn't say antidepressants. Here's what it says. I said a fruit salad of medication. <laughs> why were you on? So why you like know, most people now? I said a fruit salad of here's medication. What, here's what yeah, you but, said. But Adam, most people are going to say, okay. I didn't listen. say I was depressed. I said I was insane. It's you're an entirely different thing. You're a great songwriter. You're a lead singer of the Counting Crows, a very popular band. You got some good mates here. They all enjoy you. They they they're your comrades. You have a fantastic love life. Uh, you've you've fucked some of the greatest girls in the business, and. Why are you so depressed? What's going on here? T explain it to me. Honestly, I don't understand. Don't make a joke. <laughs> I don't know where to buy a Sibian. No, come on. Be, be honest, Adam. <laughs> I'm We're fucking crazy. Are you crazy? I don't know why I'm crazy. But are, say, why you are, crazy? Are, you? are you being a crazy rock star or are you just crazy? No, I am, yeah. You're mm -hmm. crazy. Guys, do you think he's crazy? Your lead singer is crazy? I can either confirm or deny that comment. Is he hard? Please. Adam, you threatened to have to leave the band recently. You you did I before. Didn't threaten to leave yes, the band, you did. Right? At one point, you did. No, I I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> how you do said, you know? If I'll tell you how I know. Okay. I got a quote from Adam. Right over here. <laughs> uh, you said I considered leaving the band. The writing got affected by the fact that I just hated the whole life. It's just like I'm tired of the record business. I was so tired of radio and the press and the degrading aspects of being famous. So just like I went. And was thinking about walking out. Uh, what is degrading about uh, this business, about being famous? That's just something I said, and just because it's true doesn't mean I said it. But uh, what is you're acting as if a quote is is actually something I. What shit. is degrading about being famous? Seriously, I, I, look, I just been you know I was kind of going loopy, and I, I just really wasn't doing very well doing that. Uh, you know, this thing makes the world seem a little hallucinatory, and when you're in a hotel room, that's really not the best place to be for that. When you say this thing makes the world hallucinatory, do you mean being on... I feel like I'm like a bunny sometimes. No, but being in a rock band makes... makes no, like being in... I mean, this, my head, makes things seem like a hallucination, and when you're like in a hotel room in Perth, it's really... Did you have a tough childhood? Do you think... From childhood, do you think you were depressed and crazy? Not depressed. <laughs> Although, you were on the world seeming like you're on a constant acid trip will make you sad. What was the cocktail you were on? I'm on a fruit salad of medication. What does that speak. mean? What, what, what are we on? I took 20 pills this morning. Really? Yeah. Okay, give me a rundown. What'd you take? I bet you no. already's got your beat. No. Uh, I'm not giving you a rundown of the pills. You, you know, take... he does seem happier. It seems to be working. Well, I can't hear you now, Rob. I'm sorry. Go, <laughs> do you go, take subutex? And you better not stab me in the back last time. Last time you said he made you do it because when his friends are on the air, you get the job. <laughs> I don't want to hear that again from you today. Do you take subutex? What? Do you take subutex? No. Subutex? Yeah, are you on no, that? I've never even heard of it. Do you take Advil? 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 Yes, I Advil. take Advil right now. I got, Advil. I got you know, those knees, you know. What kind of drugs is he on, boys? What do, you, what do you know about this? You guys can't even... Oh, boy, are you afraid, huh? <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> well, you're right. Keep the band together. You guys got a good thing going. Absolutely. Is it like Richard Lewis who has a champagne problem? Do you drink? Sure. Absolutely, I drink. You do? It's fun. Do you abuse alcohol? No, I... Are we talking about sort of self abuse? Yeah, I, I, I practiced some self abuse last night, but without with with alcohol. But. but you you and you consider yourself bad with women or good with women? You're down on the whole. Female. I'm getting better. You're getting better. I'm getting. What a lot was better. wrong? What was wrong with your relationships with women? I was crazy. And what does that entail? Being crazy? I don't are understand. You what the world are seems you like possessive? it's a little hallucinatory. You don't what, what does that mean? Did you? Are you letting me hear you now, Robin? <laughs> your voice, are, are you, you so attentive? Robin's you asking me in the back. Robin's he's turned you, you off in my headphones. You don't even exist in my life right now. Adam, I want you, you in my life. When you say crazy, are you schizophrenic? Are you uh, no. bipolar? No. Are you? The world seems like a hallucination. What does that mean? It means like you ever. I don't want to ask you in the air. You ever taken acid? Yes. 
It seems like that all the time. Wow. Really? You're that fucked up. It's a little... <laughs> no, but I can, I can deal with it now. To me, I did acid. It's what got me off drugs. I, I overdosed. Yeah, me too. That's I overdosed. I quit doing drugs. I took four hits of acid one night. It's called blotter acid. I didn't understand the dosage. It's a four-way hit, and I took four hits, and I saw things I don't think any human being should ever see. And I was really afraid I'd lost my mind. Because I didn't know if I could come back to reality. Right, you were so happy to come back. And I came back. I was. I said, "Thank you, God." And I only took acid one more time. Oh, you're a, you're an <laughs> two, asshole. Two thousand one, a space odyssey came out. I had to see it. <laughs> Just to be clear, my goal. Had to see it, fuck But I took the right dosage. I quit doing uh, recreational drugs because of that. Really, <laughs> but it and, doesn't seem to have mattered really. And you're saying that your particular, if you want to call it an affliction is that you kind of feel like you're hallucinating all the time, or you are hallucinating, and you're not sure what's real and what's fake. Well, it seems like that. It feels that way all the time. That, that'll kind of wear you down after a while. We, uh, absolutely. But I, I can deal with it now. I used to be used to be scary. Now I just can deal with it. I had no idea you were that. I just thought you were like, oh, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I didn't realize it was that severe. Well, I didn't tell everybody then. That's like a beautiful mind. I mean, that's like, you know, wow. Did you I have a friend who was talking to you? Yeah, did you ever have a friend who talked to you? <laughs> I had this rabbit. Really? <laughs> so the, really? No, the rabbit is me. I had no idea. Yeah, I've hung out with Adam a couple of times. Yeah. I had no Walrus. idea. No, he now seemed perfectly normal, all? right? Why is it, Scott, at some point, why, why is Adam not hearing Robin? Would you address that? You guys hear Robin? I hear him. Yeah. In your headphones? Maybe, Adam, just you just don't, don't know. know. Maybe he's yeah. tuned you out like yeah. your boyfriend with those long stories. Hey, take it oh, easy. Oh, there's Howard's company. I see. I see. All right, now you got it. All right. Oh, okay. Am I there now? Am I yeah, in your Yeah, you are. Head? Thank you. I'm, welcome back. Adam, I had no idea. I'd like to welcome you to the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Well, I didn't want to tell anybody. You know, it's, these guys knew, but, you know. Wow. So he came to you and said, look, I'm in big trouble. I don't know what's reality and what is uh, fantasy. Do you really have a band? Maybe you just see these guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adam, what's the worst? Seriously. What <laughs> Adam, what's the worst of it? Honestly. Well, you know, hey, as, well, as messed up as it was, I still went on tour for, for 12 years. Yeah, right. you did. Uh, wow, yeah. I had no idea. You balls were. of steel. I'm not hanging out with you anymore. I had no idea. I bought them. They're, they're, ben, they're, called, they're called Benoit something. I don't know. But they're, they're, they're steel, and they, they, I can do that thing. There's four of them, so they can do that clack, 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 back and forth thing. It's, it's, it's Adam, thing. remember when we were in California at the hot chick party? Yeah, yeah. Was it happening back then, too? Yeah, it was 25 years, sort of decline. Wow. Wow. getting worse and worse. It was getting worse. It did got you, a lot better when I moved to New York, actually, for a while. Did you ever think it was because the LSD? Because of the LSD? Well, I think the LSD taught my mind a very interesting way to recreate it. I yeah. That was a bad lesson to have learned. I think you could do enough drugs where you start to... You know, your mind gets so fucked up that you can't recover sure, from it. Sure, you can't re-jumble. Uh, that I, could I, be it. I tried <laughs> when I was younger. To, uh, no do, his, do enough to, to, to ruin it, right? Well, I, I had I no it idea. it was fun at the time. Uh, just stop being... Now, I read you moved a woman into your home. Not a sexual thing. 21-year-old girl. She lives with you. She was... Uh, is this true? Emily? Is that who you moved in with you? Yeah, yeah. But she's not your girlfriend. No, and Tom. And Gardner lives there, too. Oh, he does? Yeah, in Tom your house? house? But Emily went out to California because Tom's training her for, uh, for, uh, to work at his, his fund right now. You moved a 21-year-old girl into your house, but no sex. Just well, strictly so I'd she known was her from college, and, and her mother had passed away. And uh, oh. she needed to get out of uh, you know, California, and, and she wanted to study for law school. And I said, why so don't you just come to New York? So it was a kind of fatherly thing? Father Liam, not that old. Not that old. No, it's, but I'm saying it's called it, a you slightly weren't... older, lecherous brother thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't I want to say fatherly. I, I have not read a G-rated life, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to get into it being fatherly. <laughs> she's a she's a very nice, wonderful person, and that's why Tom's kind of she's out in Laguna, you know, working. Tom's training her to. I see. She's a very, very intelligent, smart girl. Very smart, like you know, I don't know, three point eight at Berkeley. Oh, so your she penis still Division works. Division one soccer. So there, your penis. You know. still your works. penis still works, though, right? Because when you're on a lot of medication. It can stop working. Or uh, take long time. Yeah, it take a long yeah. time to get it Why up. do you think I wear this bunny outfit? This is a metaphor. <laughs> here's, here's what I'm I've a, got a on I'm a walking costume metaphor right now. Comment on some of these women. It says here you dated actresses following women. These are, this is a new list. This is not the Courtney Cox, Jennifer You've Anderson updated list. the list? Oh, it's a new That's list. Right. It's a new list. Monica Potter. True? Oh, what do you want me to say? Yes or no? Wrote a great song. Mrs. Potter's Lullaby. So? Great song. Is that... It, that's a true thought. It's a fantastic song. Mary Louise Parker. Mary Louise is my best friend. I've known her for 25 years. She's not a lover. 
No, she's my best friend. I've known her, she did a play at Berkeley Rep when I was in my first band. She did Prelude to a Kiss that came to Broadway. And so she's not a lover? No, no. She's like my best friend in the world. Samantha Mathis, who's that? Well, Another actress, right? You got her? She's one of my best friends. Friend or lover? She's one of my best friends. You're lying now? What are you doing? She don't give me, don't, of, don't clam one up of my on me. best friends. <laughs> I've known her since I moved to L.A. Lindsay Lohan, did you bang her? Lindsay Lohan? Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Are you fucking kidding me? Nope. I'm not kidding you. Did well, you hang with her? I, I have met her. Uh-huh. Where'd you get that one? I got it right I, here. I once, walked up, newspaper. I once walked up to her and introduced her to a friend of mine. That's but the you do most not, interaction I've had with her. So you've been, you, you know her? I walked up to her in a club. A friend of mine said, wow, Lindsay Lohan, I'd love to meet her. I walked up to her and said, hey, I'm Adam from Counting Crows. My friend wants to meet you, and I introduced him. Mandy Moore. And I walked off. Uh, well, she did a movie with Mary Louise, so I knew her. Uh, I was never banged her. To write songs. No, Mandy's like, well, how old is Mandy? No, of course you, not. Do you tell me you're making love to her? I am not making love to her. <laughs> there's, uh, there's what no, about this? this? Is like a giant merkin. There's actually no front. Ho- a stupid bunny outfit doesn't have a hole in the front. Nicole Kidman. Ah. Nicole Kidman. I've never even met Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Winona Ryder. God, no. No, really? That was all over the papers two weeks ago. No, God, no. I, a friend of mine did date her. Playboy model and TV star Trishel Canatella. No, but uh, we wrote each other on MySpace. You I didn't. had coffee with her once. But no, no, uh, you weren't interested in her romantic. No, she's a funny girl, though. All right. Ivanka Trump. I, I know Ivanka really well, yeah. You want her? If she said Come to you, on, who Adam, want Ivanka? but do you want her? Smart, went to pen, nice, incredibly hot, and let's face it, I could retire. Right. <laughs> could, that, you re- that girl, could you boys retire now? I mean, have you made enough money in County Crows? If I settled down with Ivanka, we could all retire. Right. The whole band would retire. The whole sit, band we, could marry We her. could sit at home, make music, masturbate all day long. So you'd be interested in her, but... but she's you, one of my, she's another close friend of mine. I met her when I first moved to New York. That is a, a wonderful girl. You hung out with Terry Hatcher. Uh, what happened there? Why didn't you close that deal? Or you did. <laughs> you got to ask Gardner about that, not me. Well, oh. I never dated Terry Hatcher. You hung out with her for a whole weekend. I heard the stories. At Gardner's house. Okay, and what happened? You're the rock star. You didn't uh, bed that thing? I did not. Nothing. She brought. She had her kid with her. She's very nice. We all spent. We met her in, at the Tigers uh, benefit. She was in Laguna the next. So weekend, nothing and we happened. All hung out at Tom's. Do, house. Are you are you tied to the Olsen twins at all? Mary Kate and Ashley oh, Olsen. Absolutely, absolutely. You are. You are absolutely. friends with them. Oh no, them. I, you know. You you get. <laughs> Oh, you gave it to me. No, okay. no. Good. My, my, How was that? My goddaughter's, you know, godmother is Lori Lachlan. So, you know, she was on Full oh, House. Right. So, uh, you know, the whole Full House crew was coming to our gigs from the very beginning. So I've known Mary and Kate since they were, like, I don't know, infants. You boys Saget are. Saget and Lori and Mary Kate they would all, and Ashley would all come to the gigs. So, so are you getting are like laid at sisters. all, or is it, is it all... By just, Mary Kate and Ashley? Not them, no, but are you getting somebody. laid by anyone? Are you having fun? I am dating a fantastic girl right now. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah, and, and she's, you know... Like Young girl, you are, you how old? Are, how old she's, is she? She's 26. Nice. She's fantastic. What does she do? She is very, very smart. And does she work? Yes. What does she do? She's an actress. Oh. She went to Harvard. No shit. Yes. Nice. She's smarter than me. No, there's no one smarter than you. I don't believe it. I tell you, I'm proving it today on the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will listen. tell you this. I have told you nothing but truth today. Good. I've not lied to you once. Well, That's I got to tell you. coming up in a minute. You could be having a lot more fun. <laughs> I could be having a hell of a lot more fun. Uh, I'm boys, not saying I haven't banged a lot of other people. Just none of the ones on your list. Boys, is he a difficult front man? They say all front men are difficult. Do you guys have a hard time with him? Careful how you answer. Used to it. Used to it. <laughs> is it really bad? It's really bad. It is. It's wow. That's I'm sorry to hear that. That's said. Friend. I've known these two. <laughs> I've known these two since since what 23, 24 yeah, years. I've known these two forever. We're and actually, we're actually just generations back of Adam. So. My very first, uh, very first forty five I ever recorded. Uh, my guitar player in the middle of it after we finished the first song joined the Navy. Wow. And my piano player brought in his like best friend in quotes doesn't actually respect him very much and it was Emmy wow. he charged me 40 bucks to play on that first song <laughs> I knew my dad was paying for it I'm having a flash here Natalie Portman's 26 years old and went to Harvard are you dating Natalie Portman? no <laughs> no no, no. Guys, well, we right that's a good guess that no, that was Robin? a very good that's guess I was like whoa look at her that's, that's, that's not bad <laughs> that's a, well done she's Jewish too right? Uh, yeah. yes yeah. she is yes, she Ooh, is. my mom would be happy but no no you're not getting no. her when you're not on tour uh, do you spend a lot of time just I mean I've read things about you you've never opened up to me but do you really spend a lot of time in your apartment just sort of like just wallowing and like kind of just like feeling bad 
I did a while ago. I used yeah. to. I mean, you getting I, out more now? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I go up to, you know, I, I got friends here. I you see do. my friends all the time. <laughs> you do. Yeah, I mean, the last month or two, I've been buried in work for the record, but this music is really, really... <laughs> right. Well, he's going to kill any, any kind of real moment. Uh, <laughs> not here. <laughs> you know you know you know you know you know tell me about, tell me about the you. Tell me about the new album. How long did it take you to put this new album together, boys? Uh, well, uh, time-wise a lot, but uh, only, only really about... Uh, 70 days 70 days of recording we did three like 25 day stints do you go in and are you a perfectionist you have to record it over and over and over again or you do it pretty much in one uh, well yeah one but we, we don't we don't like record from the bottom up we record all together and you then do. we like perfect some stuff but we get in a room together and we all play until we get it how it should feel and then we'll perfect things mm. most bands do it in layers one guy comes in and does the guitar one guy does the piano then the vocal but you do it all in a room together yeah I mean we'll, we'll do it different every, so every song has a different yeah, yeah. Right. whatever it takes template. some of the songs in the album especially on the second side where it's acoustic we would you know, it's based a lot on Emmy's guitars. So some of those we would just start with me and Emmy, because okay. we recorded like a, a folk song, and then we add things on. But mostly we play together. The new album is called Boys Saturday Nights and Sunday Mornings, and the single is You Can't Count on Me. And the tour is going on with Maroon Five. Kicks off July twenty fifth. CountingCrows dot com. Thanks, guys. You made a great morning. Oh, you really did. Howard, great stuff, Rob. Thanks. All right, we'll be back right after these words. Guys, can you again? How'd it go in there today? Good. It's rough. I thought it went really well. <laughs> Adam, what's what's with the uh, the bunny costume? What bunny costume? <laughs> with the you know the ears that you're wearing right now. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> I don't see him. You see him? No. Did it help you get into the mood better? Is that what it does? <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> this guy's crazy. I don't know. Now, is it weird talking you... to Howard about... Because he thinks you're a little crazy. Yeah. Did that bother you at all? You think that's funny? No, because I think he's perfectly sane. <laughs> 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 I, you know, I, I was... I, I meant to be unprepared for the sensitivity march. Yeah, he's I, all serious today. I, I wasn't I, used to that side. I stole a march on him. I showed, I showed up uh, yeah. prepared to be on Howard. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, got, I love being on the show, man. You gotta have your head about you. You gotta sack up and show up, and then you showed up for Howard, and they gave you meet the press. You got all these <laughs> quotes and stuff. Is it true? You said. <laughs> Report on you. Are you getting a little uh, full of yourself? Are you starting to be, get like a star attitude what are you at all? About? No. Gary had an observation about Artie. <laughs> I just heard this story today. I'm very full of myself. No, no, maybe you are. This, this might be. Tell well, me if this is maybe true. Maybe you should take a moment and look at yourself. I'm going to ask you to do some introspection right now. Okay. Okay. By the way, no heroin this weekend? No. All right, good man. <laughs> just you look good. Your eyes are sparkling. I actually heard good <laughs> things gambling. about Artie's performance down at the Brocada. They All right. said you can tell Artie's straight. There's such a, a much higher level of performance. You mean he's not falling asleep during his show? You're right. <laughs> yeah, they said you could actually, he gets through the show. Now, here's this fun quick story I heard from uh, Gary, who was like a little bit ticked off at this. Oh. Uh, after the show on Thursday, we were all leaving. Um... Gary was coming over to my area to pick up some papers and clean up some things, and he, it was wet by um, my right. by my area, very uh -huh. wet yeah. on the console. I remember. So Gary says to out loud, "Jesus Christ, it's so wet!" And Artie goes, "Oh yeah, I had an accident. I spilled high C all over the 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 console a little bit. I spilled some high C." And with that, Artie just gets up and leaves. He didn't try to clean up. Right. So Gary was kind of ticked because he goes, wow, Artie just announces he spilled high seal all over the place, and I got to go clean it up. And uh, now he had to run to the wrap-up show. So he, he said to Jason, listen, Jason, I'm really kind of upset about this, but I have to go in and do the wrap-up show. Do you mind cleaning up the high seal? And evidently it was a very big spill. Yeah, I saw people yeah. cleaning up, and they said something It took him a long Artie. time to get it up. And it was sticky, and it was all so over Artie, the place. what about that? Are you so used to your mom cleaning up, that, or your Mexican lady, or are you carried away with yourself? i got to know. Yes, I consider Gary a Mexican. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think of Gary as a Mexican. I, when, it, when I spilled it, I was trying to tell Gary. I said, oh, I just spilled that thing, and he, was, he wasn't paying attention to me. Right. And then he was sort of, like, moving papers, and he saw it, and I said, oh, my God, I spilt that. And I didn't think Gary cleaned that up. And I, I, I sopped it up with, a, with a, a napkin real quick, and it looked like, it didn't look like a huge spill. First of all, it wasn't a huge spill. <laughs> Jerry says it was. It was a big spill because Jason came in. It was bigger than you thought. But the funny, here's what I saw, Artie. You go, I go, I guess I didn't hear you. And I go, oh, it's all wet over here. You go, yeah, I guess you didn't hear me. I spilled some high C. And then you wheeled around and started talking to Benji, and then you just left. I didn't see you. 
look for a paper towel or make any effort to clean up. And you saw that I was cleaning it up, and you just left. No, you did. I, I, I start. Party thinks you're Mexican. I start grabbing for. I start grabbing for paper towels or anything. And you looked at me, and then you were like, "Okay." I, honestly, I didn't think it was that big of a spill. I didn't. You thought you'd you made, gotten it? If you, you, you made no effort to clean it up at all. I'm sorry, Gar. No, no, no. I'm just saying. It's like it's, might, it's, you, it's that that's a very star. It was move. just a weird thing. It was that's like a star move. That is. Yeah, he spills things and he walks away. I would have done that as a longshoreman way quicker. <laughs> <laughs> but that is sorry, a star man. move. You got to get that in check. I do. All yeah. right. It's either a star move or a slob move. It's, I, I, see, I don't think it's a star move. move. I think it's a slob move. I really do. Speaking take of slobs. Your speaking of slobs. I'll take either one. All right, so what's a bigger slob move? I think uh, Artie got beaten out on this. What? Because I'm listening <laughs> to the rap. I'll get back to the Super Bowl thing. I um, No, that's a star move, by the way. That's not a slob move. That's like, hey, I don't need to clean this up. Right. Someone else will. That's what I was thinking as I was yeah. strolling out. I'd right? rather be a star than a slob. <laughs> you peasant. Yeah, well, the slob doesn't care that it's going to stay there. The star is like someone else will clean it up. Clean up my high C, you bastard. I mean, I would never leave till I cleaned it up. I'm that kind of guy. Like I've seen, I have, to, I have to say that about myself. You, you know, know that about me. Yeah. I've seen times when you've spilled stuff where I've run to clean Howard. it up, and you're like, "No, no!" Like you make me hand you the well, paper towel it's because it's my fault, and I need to yeah, clean it up. Yeah, now you're being a bullshit. I'm not. You complain about his snot rags all the fucking but time. A, there. No, no, but there's a. You, I, I understand. What he you're saying, leaves but, booger rags in there for you to no, pick up. That's a star move. Out. When he spills oh, something, please. I do. Yeah, I'm in here all the time. You're bitching about. He put this under here, and but we're talking about two different things. I, I agree with you. Snot rag if, if Gary said to me, "There's a snot rag on the table," I'd clean it off. No, no, but he should be more thoughtful and not leave him there. You, I, okay. I clean up. Listen, let, wait a second. Here's the difference. That's I'll give you the difference. All right, I'll give you the difference. I'll give you the difference, Artie. I'll give you the difference. They're both stars. I sit in here and I do the show yeah. and I clean up afterwards. If I if I don't see a snot rag, if if Gary said to me, "Gee, boss, there's a snot rag on your console," I but wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Yes, he was. He, he said to me, hey, there's some toothpicks. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll what, pick it up. I'll tell you what the deal is now. So yeah. as long as we've got this so all out of the If you want to deflect, open. but I don't think it's the same it's, thing. And it's not the, the toothpicks. You leave the toothpicks around. But I don't think he leaves them there like Gary will clean this up. I agree. He well, who does he think is going to clean them up? I don't think he sees them. I don't. Well, that's a star move. You're not wait even in minute, his universe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are your toothpicks going? I put them down so I don't waste them. And sometimes, you know what he does, Robert? That's really weird. He sticks them in between the board. Like, you still lift up the board. No, I don't. Well, they, they, get they, stuck they in, roll under there They roll under during there. the show when I'm pushing papers around. Oh, and so you're saying you forget that no, they're there? No, I'm saying I don't see them. <laughs> you're saying you know you use the toothpick, but now it's gone. No, I'm doing the show, and I don't know what I'm using. Afterwards, I take all my stuff up, and I clean it off. If I miss something, I miss. I don't do it. I don't say, hey, I'm going to leave a toothpick there. How many toothpicks? Toothpicks what? did you find, Gary? I'd say one or two a week. Okay, so it's not every toothpick. No, and, and if it That's rolls bullshit. under the console, I mean, what's what's the, how am I going to see it? <laughs> well, you know you had a toothpick. But, but, but Artie intentionally walked out when oh, he knew I he I did not. I didn't, I didn't say, yeah, clean that up. But, no, but how, did you th how did you think I it was going to get cleaned up? I honestly didn't think it was that big of a spill. Okay, even if the it was way a, Howard forgets, he cleans it up. Artie, if it was a small spill, how was it going to get but cleaned Gary up? But Gary brought it to your attention. Listen, I did not know that you sat in here and cleaned up like that either. But say it was a tiny spill. How would it have gotten cleaned up? Even the smallest spill, how was it going to get cleaned up? I, I, you, I, I told you it was wet. You let noticed it, and then you left. It. <laughs> exactly. What did he say? He said, let, let an intern do it. No, they, 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 That's they, a star move. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yours is a Artists, way worse star move. Artists, Artists, you're, you're not even deflect, thinking of other deflect, people. Deflect, you're deflect, You're not even deflect. thinking of other people. Of course I am. No, you're You want to know how I am? If Look, I piss I in my toilet are, here, I, I, if I piss in my toilet here and I see some piss, yeah. you know, even get on the rim of the toilet, you know what I'm talking about when it pops up? Right. You mean I will take if you piss in the bathroom that only you're allowed to go in? Yes, <laughs> that's right. How nice for you to clean up for yourself. No, but I know there's a woman that goes in and cleans it, but How I clean you, it up we're myself. We're talking about star moves. How could you possibly bring up a private bathroom? A star, move, a star move for me is having a bathroom, and I'll admit that. But I don't, I don't make anybody do anything. Well, it's in nice for you to keep different. that clean for yourself. Yeah. But, but that's or, or, different. That's something. That's something. That's part of my, let's say, compensation. Right. Um, the the and then turn cleaning up my shit is part of you my. You think so? I don't. I think don't. So. I don't clean. I don't clean up all this shit. You back know, the here. interns say that 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 Artie's area is the one of the but worst. But it should ever. be cleaned. 
You should clean it. First of all, Benji has a, has a, every spice, including paprika, back here. I don't know who cleaned it. <laughs> no, he's not well, a paprika. <laughs> but, Artie, I just got to ask the question. Cause you have Listen, a, Gary, I'm no, so no, sorry about but it. Again, but I just, according I to Gary, you, it was the Exxon Valdez of high no. cheese spills. <laughs> but, like, but, Artie, here's, that's bullshit. No. Here's the question. Just and it was a lion punch, not high cheese. Answer this question. <laughs> I showed you that it was wet there, and you said, yeah, I had I knew it was wet already, But then well, how did you think it was going to get cleaned up? Uh, Gary, I didn't think it was, like, anything. Okay, but even if it was small, how did you think it would get cleaned up? I, I don't know, Gary. I, I thought it was not an issue. I really didn't think it was an issue. But you, you, I pointed that out to spill. You go, yeah, I spilled high You saw me trying to clean it up and not finishing. How did you think it would get finished getting cleaned up? You fi- you'd finish it. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no that's I, the I, I, No, no, no. I figured it was clean sufficiently to where you could go to the wrap-up show Artie, and not sit here and Did you and not see it. the part where I grabbed for tissues because there were no paper no, towels? No, I didn't see that. I did because you'd I, already I, turned I, around. I, I, it was just weird. His nose was already but too high in the air He is to used to that. his mom cleaning up. Stuff. No, I'm not. You are a little I'm bit. I'm used to my mom cleaning up. <laughs> Somehow things just get picked up in Artie's apartment. How's the back? Do you keep the back of your limo clean? Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. I respect it. In fact, I won't even like allow... Like I put a towel down for Bianca. you a star move. <laughs> no. I'm saying it's it's an it's a thing where you don't allow people to do that. I understand. I'm sorry. I agree. Man. It's a star, but listen, you don't like to be called a star, but that is a little bit. Star. No, I love it. I, oh my God. And as far as you thinking, Gary's Mexican. Are you Mexican? <laughs> no, but I look no. Mexican. I don't think. You're but I play one on radio. You play. I love. I love that. That's an insult. I don't <laughs> think you're Mexican. <laughs> it's a little Mexican. <laughs> Honestly, guy, I, I am sorry. I, I, I don't, I don't like people cleaning up after me. If it was a bigger thing than I thought, I'm, I'm really sorry. I am. It's okay. I know. More fun to fuck with you on the air. Than I know it is. <laughs> I'm not like really mad, but I was a little insulted in the sense that like. He mentioned to me that there was a spill, and then he just turned his back and started talking to Benji. It wasn't like he was rushing out. Like, I could even take it more if he said, yeah, I got to catch a plane. But he just turned his back to me, and he started chatting with Benji. And I was like, oh, my God, he thinks I'm going to clean this up. So you took it as, hey, Gary, I spilled something. Clean it up. Well, how else would you take it? He told me he spilled something, and he made no effort to clean it up. And it didn't look like he was maybe, like, preoccupied, and it just... No, no, he wasn't cleaning it up. Is Gary overreacting to uh, your little spilled mess? Uh, no, uh, he's not. I, that, look, that is a shitty thing to do. I honestly, I was talking and I didn't realize that it was that bad of a spill and I didn't realize Gary was picking it up, so. Just an honest mistake? Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you had to do that. How long do they keep this urine when you're being tested for steroids in the NFL or the Major League, or in Major League Baseball? Because what do you mean? They have retested a sample of Bobby Bonds or Barry Bonds urine. Right. And now they say he tested positive. You know, these you urine are kidding samples me. they've been holding. What? They keep the urine all the... I mean, I would think they do the test and then they throw out the urine. Can no, I come clean about something? this urine is from 2004. Oh my God. Wow. I have, a great, I have a great revelation. And this is going to be one of those things where I shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm going to... I purchased urine. You're kidding. <laughs> when? <laughs> When did you purchase it? The day after I made that stupid promise to you. Are you serious? And I had to throw it the fuck out. I put it behind a bunch of liquor where you, bottles. Where do you go to get it? Oh, a kid sold it to me. Are you serious? Because I would think you could know someone who would just piss in a jar for What you. happened was uh, there's a bunch of kids mm. in the town I grew up. Uh, they're all fuck-ups, but they're trying to get on a fire department. Right. So to get But why a- did you ask me to give you a urine test? And I even protested. I said, Artie, I don't want to give you a urine test. Why did you? Like, you were nuts. Yeah. I, that, it. That, that, it sucked. You know you would fail. Well, no. I, I, I'd still be okay with it. I'd still be but clean. Except no. for Subutex the liquor. Next and, day. For Subutex liquor and what else? Uh, maybe weed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you're doing great. No, no, no. I, 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 I was He's next. Clean I was next to somebody who was smoking weed. But oh. I, I, no, that could fail. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm not on heroin. But I, I paid five hundred bucks. Oh. And I told the kid, uh, uh, he's trying to get on the fire department. You know, and uh. He's like, yeah, this is brutal. I've been, I haven't smoked pot or done anything for six months. And... Oh, so he's going to get urine from stuff. How yeah. gross is it? It's gross. To, I made I him. Mean, I, I, I mean, where do you? What did? What did they sell it to you in a jar? Well, he came over to my place and I made him piss in the. You know, I didn't. I didn't see dick in cup. But, right. Uh, 
he put it in like a Poland spring bottle, and then I transferred it with gloves oh to something else, God. and then I put tin foil around it because it's so gross to look at. Yeah, and then uh, I put it in the back of a bunch of whiskey bottles, and then um, <clears throat> I just threw it out like last week. I forgot. So what I had part it. of you insists to me? I said to Art, you, you don't have to do a urine test. I was I don't excited. I tried to. I tried to make it sound like I'm normal. Yeah, but I yearn <laughs> to be normal. I know, but I, I told you, you're never going to pass it. No, no, no. And, uh, I, I, you couldn't I, pass a urine test ever. Yes, I could. Why don't no, you we, couldn't. Yes, why I could. Don't we when? Just put Artie in rehab. Yeah. I'm not in rehab. Why? Because, I'm not, because, I'm because fine. someone. I, I talked to someone about that, yeah. and they explained to me Artie's got to want. You, could, right. you know, you know, there are yeah. people who go. You know, everyone acts like rehab's the cure. I'm totally you could go, fine. You could go into I'm 95 fine. rehabs and still not be better because you got to want it. Guys, I've been clean Look at off. Look, he bought well, it. Well, Steve's a whole. Can I just talk about Christ? The guy's bleeding and throwing shit at the. And that may I add they. Waited till that happened. Can I just talk about how um, it's just so funny? Because I want to go pull the tape of how <laughs> insulted and indignant Artie was. This is what's great when, about when me, I said though. I had to watch Artie pee in a cup, and he goes, "Are you insane? Do you think I'm fucking crazy enough to go? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna buy urine." He fails his first drug test. I have already picked the date of his drug test. But he can't know the date. No, yeah, he okay. doesn't know. Right, it. Don't right. worry. <laughs> It no, should I be every know. other day or so. I don't what's, know. What are you yeah, waiting for? I don't know why there's a special a little, day. Yeah. It should be it's random. Ready. It's random. It's random drug tests. Right, I'll go do whatever the fuck you want. And it should be regular. He doesn't know, and Gary's going to watch his penis in the cup. No, go he's ahead. not. Yes, he is. No, yes. Yeah, well, he has then to. Somebody has to. He'll bring out a whiz in there. Then I'm not doing it. Then I Then you got to walk in the room naked. Then I quit the show. You have to walk in naked because you're going to get a bag of urine in there. You're I'm going to get a bag of urine in your pants. Where am I going to get a bag? We don't buy it. You could frisk me before you, I go in. People buy urine to pass drug tests. You seen the Wizenator? It's a fake penis with a bladder. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't have the Wizenator on. Sure, I don't you have don't. Your <laughs> Where do I have it? <laughs> you don't think you think it's ridiculous for us to think that you might try to beat a drug test? Uh, yeah, that you well, wouldn't pay I, Teddy I, I, for his urine or something? Uh, Teddy's not. Teddy's I'm just not, saying. I'm giving you. Teddy's you, urine is way too. You expensive. know a bunch of people. You, you throw money at everything. Then we'll have a girl. I don't know one person who doesn't do drugs or drink. Where am I getting urine from? No, I bought urine before you accused me of buying yes. I did. But if you but if you could go back to whatever those days are, I'm wearing a leather jacket and I have the urine in here in my breast pocket. Are you pocket. serious? Yes, yeah, so it might, if you look at the tape it might be like uh you, could see you mean you were carrying the urine with you because you thought we were going to do the yeah, urine test? Yeah, he didn't know when the test okay. was going to come. You're officially oh the funniest God. person so I've ever met. I came in here. Meanwhile, you day. weren't even clean when you said I'm going to take a urine test. Yes, I was. Then why would you buy urine? No, 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 no. It was the next day. I, 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 I was worried that stuff would show up. Oh. Okay, very worried. Art. Stuff that you take. But I, I haven't done heroin since December 24th. <laughs> but, but, but we were, I haven't. No, but we were giving you a drug test for everything. I know. I, that's why I made a mistake. I should have made it just heroin. Just heroin. I don't, I don't know if they make that test. <laughs> they do. You could just check for opiates. I, I, you know, ignore coke or anything. Like just, just, just yeah, heroin. you could, just you could see. Just there's heroin in you there. You could see specific that. stuff. Uh, uh, all right. Well, anyway, that's a very interesting revelation. But I was always wondering about if the urine stayed... Uh, stayed good. Because then the one guy said, you have a way to keep it warm because it can't be cold. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I would put it in a room with heat every <laughs> next to the boiler. Did you really? I, listen, Howard, I'm crazy. Oh, but my God. I don't want, you know, I want to keep my job here. It's very important to me. But that wasn't a condition of keeping yeah, you Yeah, it was just to go to rehab. See, I had to say it, but that's how mm. good of a person I am. I had to say it. All right, let's go to Robin because God, that I'm sounds sorry. crazy. Yeah, no, no, but the urine got real dark as right. the days it went on. Right, stay good. And I was like, does this even look like fresh urine? Right. Well, there were uh, flaws. I am shocked to hear that they saved his urine, but there you go. The samples are believed to contain traces of the previously undetectable designer steroid known as THG or the clear. It was called the clear because it wasn't supposed to show up on tests. The New York Times reported last week that federal authorities had detected anabolic steroids in a urine sample linked to bonds. However, it's unclear if that urine sample and the sample seized in the 2004 raid are the same. Well, an interest to uh, keep up with Artie on the show. I have a confession to make. In my jacket right now, I have a bottle of shit <laughs> I carry with me. What are you carrying that for? I can't tell you exactly why. Oh, and I, when 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 uh, Doctor Drew said the penis and cup thing, I had the urine on me. Oh, you did? Yeah. Jeez. I was gonna take it out. If you guys made me do the test, I was gonna take it out and put it on the table. Oh, that's good. Like, <laughs> I should have done that. Fuck. Wow. Well, we didn't test you. You're really an addict. No, Howard. I'm a, I'm a dedicated worker. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, sorry. Oh. Who uh, else? Bro? I'd break my ass. I'd break my ass. I wish I was a fucking uh, you're in a dark uh, place, longshoreman. Buddy. You're in a dark place. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah. You are. I'm, uh, But no, I'm okay. I'm okay, I think. Uh, because if I can stay away from the hard shit, my life won't become chaotic. But, uh, Artie, are you going to drink? Yes. No, I haven't had a drink. That's not true. How do you know? Because I know. Okay, well, let's go penis and cup right now. <laughs> I have to watch. I haven't. You ask anybody at my gigs, I'm totally sober. I'm fine. Then why don't you take a real urine test? Because I, the subutex, I was afraid I couldn't stay off the subutex long enough. And, oh. uh, you know, every once in a while you might have a drink. So you're saying there was no <laughs> entertainment lawyer? <laughs> No, he well, called the, you and the entertainment... said you shouldn't take a urine test? Yeah, he did call. Gee, for once, at least I didn't get fooled about that. No, he did call yeah. the guy. Sure Four in the morning. But he, he told me the second book deal was up to one five. <laughs> Harry, that is a great... Does this surprise you? No, nothing surprises really? me anymore. Nothing, I mean, nothing surprises me anymore. But um, the only thing that... I, I mean, Artie is the world's best liar. That's crazy. But although I wasn't buying into it, as soon as he said he didn't want to do it. I knew that there was something up. And uh, when he got indignant about, you know, what am I going to, I'm going to buy urine. But the fact that he had it on him in his pocket he was while, walking he's, yelling, around with a bottle while he's yelling at me for saying, you know, <laughs> just, it's great. I, I said, he's officially the funniest person I know. That is fucking funny. Now, you obviously can't believe anything now after, after. Oh, that. I used to believe it before, but this is just, this is, this is, it's, I think what he just said is actually one of the funniest things I've ever You're heard. You're taking this pretty well. <laughs> no, it's funny. Dude, so you're buying piss now? Yeah, man, it's terrible. It's one step above buying shit. Is that is that one of the low moments in your life? No, no, <laughs> buying no. Urine? No, the lowest moment in my life probably was, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Having dinner with DePace down at uh, Point Pleasant with uh, Scott and some of his kids. That was a low moment in my life. Drinking so, piss is second. Let's have a moment with Steve Langford, who's really dedicated... He's a dedicated newsman. You gotta, you gotta hand it to the guy. He takes his job seriously. Impressive. Go ahead. Let's see what you got. Is Eric the Midget's next public appearance soon to be a victim of this devastating economic crisis or just a complete and total lack of interest in meeting the angry little guy? Eric's set to meet and greet his fans at a Sacramento Kings game February 27. But so far, only two tickets for Eric's appearance have been sold. And the guy who bought those two lonely tickets, we are told, now wants his money back. A source... <laughs> Is that true? Uh, that's what we are told. A source in a position to know, now telling Howard 100 News, Eric the Midget's appearance is this close to being canceled. <laughs> Eric, I thought you said 200 people were going to be going to your appearance. Well, it's, uh, Johnny hasn't bought the tickets yet. That's what the 200 to 400 tickets to be sold, they were going to be bought by Johnny. Yeah, but I mean... If Johnny buys them, what's he going to do with them? I mean, that's how you're going to... So 200 people aren't buying tickets. It's just going to be Johnny Frado bailing you out. You know, what, what do you have to say, Steve? Well, Johnny told us yesterday there is 0.0, .0 chance of him buying any tickets. To this. Really? Yes. Eric, Johnny's telling the news he's not buying any tickets. How do you get that so wrong? <laughs> I don't have it wrong. Steve said, he, he said to me that he um, would consider it. Eric the loser. <laughs> and if the team was better than they were, are, then maybe people would go, come <laughs> see this meet and greet. Eric the loser. <laughs> maybe if I was doing it for the Lakers, which I've asked Johnny to set that up. <clears throat> yes, Gary. Hey, if you go to Gary page one, mm -hmm. this is a funny piece of tape. So this whole thing starts out where Eric calls Johnny Frado at like 2.30 in the morning mm. to say, hey, you got to buy up all these tickets. It's in the left hand. It's a, in the left hand corner. Don't play the first one. That's just Eric going on and on. Yeah. But Johnny calls back. It's the funniest thing because you can hear the baby screaming and wailing. Johnny's like, don't ever fucking call here at 2.30 in the morning. The second one? Yeah. Okay. Eric. How in the world do you wake me up at 2.30 in the morning? You want me to buy 200 tickets? What are you nuts? If you call late like this again, I swear to God, I'm going to get a fucking screwdriver 
I am like to come up there and I'm going to take you apart. So if you don't call in tonight, you fuck me up. I'm right, definitely going to get even with you now. All right. What are you doing? The guy's a family man. You're calling him at 2.30 in the morning? And bugging him about buying your tickets. Eric, you can't be for real. I am. Why did you call him at 2.30 in the morning? There's never been a problem with it in the past. Eddie, you know, if someone calls your house past 10 o'clock at night, they're fucking rude. 2.30 in the morning. And when you have a baby. Oh, my old. God. Well, he does. He has another baby. He has Eric the Midget. Mm -hmm. Eric, the Shut up, Mitch. You're a baby. Well, you don't no, make not, any you sense. You don't call someone's house with your needs at 2.30 in the morning. It's a babyish right. thing. It's like behaving like a baby. I mean, you're not even, it's not urgent to, to, to buy these tickets. You don't need to call him at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Eric, that's what it you is, sound like. It is urgent. I don't want this to be... You know, another thing where no one shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Oh, my goodness. Hey, it says here, Eric the Midget's forehead looks huge today. Let me take Let a look at that. Say. Put it up on screen, guys. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? Eric, what's going on? <laughs> I think combing your hair back that severe is a bad idea. Yeah, that's a lot of forehead. No one else stuck in the plane. Shut nope. up. No one else is honest with you. That's a lot of forehead. And a lot of big blotch there, too. Big, giant, square blotch like oh, that. shut up, you damn witch. Like that, that guy who ran Russia for yeah, a while? That, uh, big wine Lu stain? Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Gorbachev, that dude. Actually, it looks like a car peeled on on his forehead. Yeah, like, like a that, tire track. Like a tire track. Kind of just, <laughs> when he takes off. Eric, you're, you're fucked. And in the hair, every way. the hair color that he's dying his hair, there's no co real color like that. He must have just done that. That's a fresh. There is. That's a fresh dye job. Yeah. It's got to be. When did you dye your hair last? Last Thursday at Frederico's. Yeah. So you're getting it done by someone now. They did that at Frederico's. Yes. <laughs> wow. Did you say to Frederico, there's no color like that? What's there it? is color like that. It's in their fucking book, jackass. Yeah, but we're talking about on humans. <laughs> Yeah, that's horse hair. That's almost clown red, actually. Right. I know a clown has hair. Like I went Emmett Kelly red. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look like Boozo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you told them? Did you say no, you want to look like Emmett Kelly? Said. What? Did you tell me you want to look like Boozo? <laughs> I look like Boozo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to join Barnum and Bailey. No, nah, it's a little too red, Eric. Trust me, you should go a little... The way my hair color was when I was a kid. You look like Heat Miser. Yeah, but you're no kid. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. Sun. Da -da -da -da. You're an adult <laughs> male. Yeah, you're Mr. Fatass. Shut up. I'm Mr. 101. <laughs> What's going on with your forehead there with that big red square on it? I mean, I'm I'm concerned. Is that psoriasis? No, nothing's going on with it. Yeah, okay. You're very red and blotchy. But really, Eric, you know it's ridiculous to call Johnny to buy the tickets because that doesn't mean you're a success. It looks like you walked into a freshly painted stop mm. sign. Why is it Johnny's responsibility yeah. to, uh, to you Eric? You get yourself in these messes Eric, and the then he's supposed to... Midget. Yeah, it's out, out. it's out in the public uh, forum here that you're asking a friend to bail you out. So it would be more embarrassing than canceling. And did, so Johnny will have to get 200 of his friends to show up. Did you hear the guy who bought the two tickets for your appearance is, wants his money back? <laughs> I don't fucking think so. <laughs> Steve, how do you know that? <laughs> An extremely good source. Hear that? Oh, whatever, you Canadian jackass. The truth hurts? <laughs> not the truth. You ain't phasing Langford. <laughs> well, Johnny's not going to buy those tickets, not after Eric wakes him up at 2.30 in the morning. I know that. Johnny's not. I don't know not. how Johnny's still friends with him. He's so abusive. Johnny's a saint. 
Johnny's a wonderful man, but he, I think he's at his wit's end. I don't know. Uh, it sounds like he's done that with a screwdriver before to other people. Hey, why, do, why, does, um, why does the guy who bought the two tickets want his money back? Maybe we could get to the bottom of the problem that way. Do you have any ideas, Steve? I don't have the answer on that. You uh, didn't say to him, why do you want the money back? Uh, we'll have to look into that. All right, thank you. He came to his senses? <laughs> Wouldn't he have a lot of time with Eric? I mean, if he's the only guy who shows up. It'll be a night with Eric. Yeah, I mean, he could have exclusive time with Eric, you know. And this is a guy who gets $40 for just a phone message, so it seems like it would be a good deal. And, Eric, there's nothing worse than doing an appearance where it's one or two, like, really obsessed lunatics who show up. Which, by the way, visit my store at tfsc.tv slash ETA. Okay. By the way, you should know this. At, at my uh, book signing over the weekend, someone asked me to sign a picture they bought off your website, Eric, and... He like drew a bunch of cocks on your face and uh, really the cocks that Eric's sucking and oh my god yeah it was That's it was terrible. really defaming it. I don't think you're allowed to do that legally. I think for another draw five a cock onto Eric's mouth. Yeah, like big. It wasn't good art, but it was a cock clearly. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice. Yeah, and it has the cock. Eric, how do you feel? Your... People are buying your picture and drawing cocks on your face. <laughs> That's not cool. Right. <laughs> it looks better than the enormous red blotch on your head. <laughs> Actually, yeah, so you're just absolutely enormous, period. Mm. Actually, uh, you should sell it like that. I'd buy a picture of Eric with a big cock in his mouth. Oh, I'd pay an extra 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, maybe you ought to start drawing the cocks. Uh, thank you, Eric, and uh, appreciate the phone call. Bye-bye. Bye. Good luck getting some midget pussy this weekend. One? I don't know. What is this? What is this here now? Why do I have this? Maybe here? I'm not recording you. What is this? But why are you with me now? In our intro. You, you, you're never in our intro. What is this? I'm now you're, cu you're cutting in on our intro now? No, too? I'm not. You're cutting huh? in. What's going on here? I'm waiting for Flav. Who? Flav, Flav. Who's he? Old friend of the show. Flav. Yeah, Flav. man. <laughs> Flav, Flav. What's up, bro? What's up, baby boy? How you, how you doing, man? Like a cold in the closet. Hanging in there, baby. Nice. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks. So what brings you back to the show? My boy Howard, man. Not only that, but my brand new movie we got coming out called Night Tales. Night Tales. Nice, man. Are you yeah. excited to be back? Yeah, man. Yo, what's up? G -g 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 you nut? <laughs> it's been a while, man, right? Yeah, it's been a little minute, man, but it feel good to be back, man, and I can't wait to personally get face to face with my boy in there because y'all know howard's my man hi man for years howard's been my man and for years howard's gonna always be my man y'all know what time it is that's right flavors here and uh i gotta tell you uh, i feel responsible for his career i'll you tell do. you why wow. we used to have flavor on the show all the time i remember and this is back in the day, after Public Enemy was successful, that Flavor was kind of down on his luck. No, no one was paying attention to him. In fact, he was scalping tickets in the Bronx to make a living, Flavor was. Had him on the show a couple of times. Of course, Mark Cronin heard him, invited him on Surreal World. Wait a minute. You mean after Public Enemy, he was scalping tickets? Oh, yeah. I mean, they had kind of run Gone their course. Or, yeah, they're... And I'll tell you. And then we had him on, and then Mark heard him on our show, and then invited him on Surreal World. Right. And uh, Surreal World led to Flavor of Love. And now the whole world's in love with Flavor Flav. But he was down on his luck. And I feel that, you know, Cronin listens to the show every day. And when he hears something good, he, he grabs it. Look, there he is. That's the famous Flavor Flav. Howard. Yeah, man. How you doing? What? Come on. He's going right <laughs> past the mic. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> How you doing? Color. You look good, man. Thank you, man. You Thank good. you, man. Tickets, tickets. Anybody? Tickets? <laughs> You're shot out of a cannon flame. You know, I was taking. Man, you got your clock on, all your jewelry. Yeah, everything's making noise now. Calm down. Hey, what's hey, going hey. On? Hey, what's, what's going on? on, girl? How you doing I'm back good, there? I'm good, I'm good. Huh? Flav, Flav, I was taking. <laughs> Flav. You running for president, too? You behind the bulletproof booth. <laughs> wow. Yo, so Howard, what's up, man? How are you, my brother? I'm back. I'm back on the Howard Stern Show. What's I, going I'm on, G? I'm so happy to see you. I said, you know, your success, I'm very happy for you because, you know, I was a very big fan of Public Enemy. Thank you, And man. I would have you on the show back in the day. And a lot of people don't know this about you, but 
after the big success of Public Enemy, times got tough for you. And yeah. you were even you you were living in the Bronx and you were scalping tickets to make a living. Am I hey correct? man, not only that, but you was my first customer, Howard. Come on, you know right. I, I sold you a seat in the in the nosebleed section. You were having a tough <laughs> you were having a tough time, and you came on our show and a guy named Mark Cronin who used to work for me. Uh huh. He heard you on our show and he wow. invited you on Surreal World. Wow. And after Surreal World, you got Flavor of Love, which by the way, no, 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 no. After Surreal Life three. Right. Then I had Strange Love. Remember me and Bridget Nielsen came up to your show? Right. And everything, right? And y'all was, man, y'all was killing her, man. I was like, y'all give the lady a break, well, man. What's the deal? Were you really banging her? Huh? Were you really banging Bridget hey, Nielsen? Hey, come on. How would you know what time it is? I got the clock on, baby. Were you, don't you expect everyone to be like a racist and stuff? And she came out and she she could fall in love with a black man. And she, you know, I, I, that gave me hope for the world in a way. I mean, hey. Look, that and go, now we got a black president. Now we got hey, a, that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Hey, yo, and not only that, but let me show you this. Did you ever think? <laughs> yo, that's hot. You like that? I like that. Did you ever think there'd be a black president in your lifetime? Honestly. Honestly. Come I ain't on. think that it can ever happen, you know what I'm saying, you know, because of the way that the world is today, you know, but I figured that one day times would change. Did you think a Jew would be a president before a black guy? Hey, man, well, it was a few Jewish guys that was president anyway, right? No, never. Oh, word? No. Oh, well, it's, it's get, that's getting ready to happen, too. The Jews getting ready to <laughs> pop in the White House after Obama. <laughs> you think it's starting a trend, huh? Yay. Do you consider Obama to be black? Now, let me let me ask you this. This is a big controversy. You know, he had a white mother. He was raised by white people. You're a real black man. I mean, you're black. You have full, uh, you're full African descent. I'm trying to tell you now how it word up, man. I stay yeah. in the sun to keep my color. Right. You're never <laughs> embarrassed to be black. You are always the proudest to be black. Yes, you're always definitely. a man of pride. What, do you really consider this to be a black president or are we yet to see a black president? I sure do consider him to be a black president because he has black blood running through his veins. But, but will we ever get a real black president? I mean, like someone like yourself, who's a real yeah, black president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and you know who it's going to be? Oh. Flavor, Flav. Oh. I'm going to run for president, man. Please vote for me, <laughs> Howard Men, and I'll keep you on Sirius Radio for about 80 more years. Well, describe to me about TV, for example, when you were with Bridget Nielsen. Get back to that. When you were on that show with Bridget Nielsen, who used to be married to Sylvester Stallone, right. she was considered a great beauty in her day. And, and when you got her, okay, she had let it, she let it go a little bit. You know, she wasn't the Bridget Nielsen when she was younger. Right. Was it tough banging her? You've had a lot of beautiful women. Well, see, let me say it like this, Howard. You know what I'm saying? You know, Bridget Nielsen, man, she's a great person, man. We had a great relationship. Was it a love? Was it real? A great, was it real? A, a great friendship relationship, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, it was real. It, it was in real. Other words, it was and the reason why and the reason why it was real, Howard, is because you know me, man. I'm I don't I don't discriminate, man. I no. don't see color. No, I you like that I'm about saying? you. You always Yeah, uh, you know like what I'm that. saying? Who ended it? Who went you ended the relationship, I guess. Um, well honestly you, honestly we both did, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, you know, she had a family over in Italy you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then I got my family here in New York, you know. And How was the pussy, though? Was it good? Hey, well, see, let me say it like this, you know. Um, be you honest, Flav. Huh? Be hey, honest. hey, hey, I'm going to always it, be honest. Was and it I'm too big? always be nice. Was and, it and, too and, big? Was it too and, big? I mean, hey, check this out. Honestly, you yeah. know, that, that, that area right there, man, I got to stay away from. And the reason why is because, you know, that ain't. That's you not know. cool. You're a gentleman. Yeah, man. Yeah, Did you yeah, go yeah. Down and I love Bridget. Did you man. go down on her? I love Bridget, man. Did you go down on Bridget? I was already down on her. She's six two, yeah. man, and I'm five eight. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> so you made a lot of people thought it was just for the cameras and all this. You know. I mean, well, 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 it was for the cameras too. You know, right. we had to do our thing and make our, our money and survive, and right. feed our families and everything. But yeah, it was real though. So when you went on, when you were doing this show with Bridget Nielsen stuff. Uh, VH1 is infamously cheap. They don't pay a lot of money for their shows. You had the number, you have like whatever show you're in, whatever reality show you're in, it's number one on the network schedule. Thanks, and that's man. the truth. Did they really give you the money, though? Did you see the money? I didn't see it like I wanted to see it, but I got to see something. 
All right. And uh, as I described, you were down on your luck at that point. You were having a, you know, you have to make ends meet and all Around that. Around at what time was I down on my luck? When you went to the reality surreal show, life. Surreal Life, yeah. right? I mean, um, you, you weren't rolling well, well, in dough. Well, it's not like I was, yeah, I wasn't really rolling in dough, but right. I wasn't really okay. down on the luck. Yeah, because yeah. I was still moving around with Public Enemy. We right. still moved moved around across seas and everything, you but know what I'm saying? But this has made you, like, internationally famous, right? Hey, man, this, uh, I'm the brand new Howard Stern of the business. It is. Baby. It's the truth. And you're a great personality. You know how to mix it up in front of the camera. You always were dynamic. You always were a little bit crazy. And people like that. And you're able to be interesting. People like to watch you. And this guy, he's always had the type of life that was interesting. Tell Robin and my audience how old you were the first time you banged a girl. Were you not six years old? I'm trying to tell you now. I sure was six years old. Wow, man. How a did very, you know that? Very, I oh, know I said Because I told you all a long time ago. We have the girl yeah. here. Yeah, she's going to uh, walk in right now. Huh? No, I'm joking. <laughs> hey, that would be you amazing. That's How the old? first time I've seen him uh, look afraid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Robin, you crazy, lady. <laughs> How, old was she? How old was the girl you were with? Six you? years old, six too. Six years old. But How it was an ex Hey, we was experimenting, man. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, you know, we, it was just an experiment. Experiment, but How did you know what to do? Hey, man, look. Porno. Check, no, porno. it wasn't, a, wasn't no porno, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, natural instincts. Where were you that this, I mean, say, to be six years old, did you uh, ejaculate? And where was I? Did you ejaculate? Nah, man, I wasn't come. old enough to do that, but 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 my little joint did get hard, though, and it, it did penetrate. It did. Really? Yeah, because, you know, come on, man, what, all little kids pop a boner. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah, Robin? Yeah, yeah. I, have one I right popped now. a boner. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was on the bone, brother, and it happened, but man. Clave, I worry about your lifestyle. I mean, you have, I believe, eight children now, right? No, I have seven. You have seven kids. Seven kids. You've announced to the world that you want to have three more. You want to have I ten sure children. I sure do. Yeah, it's just a personal want, though, but, Howard. But, but, wait, but a Flav, minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you going to try living with the last three? Hey, well, I live with my last one. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I'm trying to add two more. What do you say? You say Flav doesn't mother. live with his kids? Uh, no, he doesn't live with all you these don't play? kids. Nah, see, oh. see, my three oldest, right? My three oldest, <laughs> Janique, yeah. Man, and KK, yes. they live out on Long Island, right? All right, that's where you, aren't you on Long Island? Well, come on, me and you You're from Rose Roosevelt, Are you still man. In Roosevelt? No, or my you mom, sold out? my mom is still in Roosevelt, and I still got my room there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then my middle three, because I met a young lady in the Bronx, right? right? But then they moved up to Albany, but Designer, Quan, and Kayla. A designer is is fifteen. Designer? Yeah, designer. Oh, everything an yeah. African name with you? Is it got to be African what name? Is huh? Designer, an African designer. Name? Hey, hey, I'm an African. So what y'all expect? Mean... You are African? What you expect? No, 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 no. I'm just like designer. I've never heard of designer. How's that an African name? Designer. You made that up. Yeah, I love you too, Robin. The, 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 when I was a kid, I knew a girl named Designer. She used to ride around on a zebra. That's how African she is. I'm not kidding. You, you mean Designer? But, yeah, but, but let me finish. How well, is, go ahead. There's a lot you, to cover. You ask me, right? So let me tell you. So Designer, she's 15. Quan is 13. And right. my daughter Kayla is 11. Go ahead. And then my last one, his name is Karma, K A R M A. He's uh, and Karma is real. And he lives with you. Uh, yes, he okay. lives with me in Las Vegas, and I got him here in New York. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? They're at the hotel right now. Are you, you know a good I mean? dad? You advise these <clears throat> children. You're able I'm a to. Very, I've always been a good father, right. and I'm gonna always be a very good father. And I hope that there's a lot of other men in the world like me. But why three more, Flav? It's enough. Because it's a personal want. How is it's do just the, a do, personal do want. The, any but, of the kids wear clocks like you do, or are you the only one? Just the last one, because he, he takes. My clock and he puts it on and he ah. runs around the house and dad 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 oh, yo for Flav, real. why the clock honestly what, you've never really explained it because why? time is the most important element that we have in our life and we can't afford to waste none of it Howard when did time, you realize this and huh when did you realize the this? time when I first came on your show and we no. were killing each other but why not wear a calendar <laughs> why not wear a, a calendar? calendar I've often huh? thought about it why not wear a calendar because I'm here? representing time not the days of the month that's for you, women do, 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 wait, before. <laughs> Public enemy. Did you always walk around with a clock? A woman should nah. wear a calendar. That's <laughs> right. That's right, Robin. I'm going to get you a calendar. You know what I'm saying? We're going to mark that day right, down, okay? Right, Slave, right. uh, do, do, when, when did you start wearing the clock? I started wearing the clock. Um, well, well, first, Howard, you got to remember back in the days, the fad was stopwatches because right. we used to all wear stopwatches. But then as a joke, 
son of Berserk, my boy T.A., you know, he took the stopwatch off, <laughs> put this clock around my neck. That's a, that's a kitchen clock. Hey, yeah. it's a shower clock. It's a shower clock. Yeah, why the wrong but no time? battery. Yeah, why the wrong no time? No battery in it. And the reason why is because, you know, I, 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 I turned this into a statue. You know, statues don't move. And it's on 6 o'clock. Yeah, why And the six? reason why it's on 6 o'clock, because 6 o'clock points straight up and down. And right now, I'm straight up and down with you, Howard. Thank you for having me in private part. Do you always? Yeah, uh, I love that. Yeah, boy. You... That's right. Your movie was my fifth movie ever in my life, G. Thank you, thank you, did G. You, did you... Yo, where's Fart Man at? Yo, is he still around? You don't want to see him. Huh? You know he's disgusting, Fart I know, man. man. I know. That was my Flav, boy, man. Flav was in my movie, and <laughs> as I walk by, he smacks me in my fat cellulite. That's minute. right, with the broom bristles, Have man. Have you ever seen an ass like that on a man? Hey, man, and I don't want to ever see it either. It was horrible, right? Word up, man. I had to... I, I wanted to cover my eyes, man, but I had to see what I was doing. Uh, you know what it is? That's, that's an ass that, uh, of the life of a veal. I mean, I sat there basically on my ass my whole life. You're very active. Word up, man. Uh, I was not active. I you sat crazy. in my room and hid. So you, you, um, let, let's get back to this now. So, All right, so, let's get, so back, let's to get it. back to the life of Flavor Flav because I have many, many things to cover with you. Come on, let's do it, baby All right, boy. And let me just say and then something. At the end, I got a lot to cover, man, on a, hi on a, on a history of my man Howard Stern. Well, let's just say, say you've got to see Flavor Flav in uh, Dion Taylor's Night Tales, available on DVD. D tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Now, now yeah, that's man. why Flav is here. He didn't come in for his health. health. You understand that. So I'll get into the project last. We'll, we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a, we'll get into I didn't it. come in here for my health. I came in here for my wealth. Hey, that, you, that was good. That was good. Did you, did you, you can write a song. Did you, uh, did you leave this dating show where all the women were trying to get a date with you? Did you leave because you actually had a real girlfriend and, and the fact is she put pressure on you. She said, look, Flav, it's great that you got a hit television show, but if you love me, you're going to leave this TV show. Is that what happened? Um, honestly, to tell you the truth, no, that's not what happened. What really, really happened is, you know, I, you know, I realized, man, you know what I had at home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which was the real, real love. You know what I'm right. saying? And, you know, I'm like, yo, man, later for all of this experiment and dip yeah, and, and, and checking this girl out, check all these different women, you know what I'm saying? And trying to get to know them when I already got one that I know. So it, you, you, this was your way of professing love for the woman that you live with and you want to have more kids with. You said, I'm willing to give up this TV show because it was a huge hit. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, definitely. Plus, besides, too, Howard, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was getting a little burnt out with it, too. And the reason why I say that is because it was starting to be repetitious. Yeah. Is you it, know what I'm saying? And, and, you said, people, hey. and people thought that I really, really couldn't find love. Right. And you, you know what it. I'm saying? And and I didn't really want that image about me not being able to find love. But I find love every day. As soon as I walk out my door, I get love, man, from people. Man. And what's it like for a guy like you to have a camera on him all the time? Does that feed your ego? Your narcissism does it feed hey, it honestly it's it, it you like it sometimes it creeps me out but then again i love it man i, I just love it did I there love ever the camera, come, but did there ever come a time you say to the network look we just shot something i'm not proud of or i'm not comfortable putting on tv were there moments like that where you said no way yes there were moments like that what, uh, were, what were what was an example of your worst moment in front of the camera that you said i want this hey if i away. tell you that it would have been on tv howard do you actually bang some of the girls from the television See, show? here we go again why <laughs> why not go there let's find out how are you going to question my manhood howard do you bang some of these girls from the tv show hey man nah man it, cause my show ain't about sex no, man it's about on, me dating come on come it's on it's about me dating howard I, hey, I ain't banging nobody, man. I don't believe it. Now, listen to me. I love you, too, Howard. You recently <laughs> had a roast. Flavor, Flav, Flav, Howard Stern. Okay. Flav, you recently had a roast. You've become so big now that they roasted you on Comedy Central. Yeah, and you know what? And I want part two because I want to get them back. And I'm going to tell you something, Howard. The only jokes that I said were the jokes that they wrote for me. Right. But I didn't know exactly what a, what a roast was. You didn't grow up in that environment where you learned about I mean, a roast. I mean, I, mean I, I watched roasts before and everything, but mm. I didn't really know exactly what to do with it myself. But then once I watched the show, 
then I'm like, hey, wait a minute. This ain't nothing but playing the dozens. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And I should have did just did my own flavor flavor. You're thing. referring to so the that's fact why I want part two. I want part two, and I want to call this the revenge of Flav. You're talking about but, the I mean, fact the that when you Flav's were young, revenge. when you were a young man growing up, the way that you would roast somebody in your neighborhood was you'd make fun of their mother. Yeah, come right. on. And so this is basically the same thing. And you didn't understand the concept, and you think that you could have gotten them a lot. Yeah, worse. I could have gotten gotten them a lot better than I did. Now the N word was used eleven times on the Comedy Central roast were you upset about that that people were using the n-word and i know comedy central was upset about it weren't they well honestly to tell you the truth howard i didn't even think about it first of all because i mean you know it's natural in my vocabulary you use the n-word you know hey howard you my nigga man really yeah, you my nigga, G. N-I-G-G-A. <laughs> N-I-G-G-E-R. But nigga, 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 nigga. Everybody saying it. Everybody playing it. Loaded on the scale because everybody weighing it. Toby said, yo, I be good nigga. Nigga, get a shovel, nigga, be good digger. I don't care how small or bigger, but I don't want to be called yo, nigga. That was on the Public Enemy album. A fantastic album. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Thanks, man. Thanks for that. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Uh, I've, I've told you that 911 is a joke in my town. I'm trying to tell you now, and if you don't believe it, go out there, get hit by a car, and see how long it takes them to come. Uh, Duran Duran, <laughs> did you know Duran Duran covered 911's a joke? Yeah, I heard, time? yeah, but I haven't heard the record. But thank you. Never heard. It's a Duran little fruity. Duran. It's not great. <laughs> oh, okay. When you do it, it ain't it's great. Like hey, it. He hey, might like hey, it. He might like it. No, he wouldn't like it. I'll tell you why. Why? Because when he sang. 911's a joke in my town, he meant it. He was, he was angry. He was angry in it. It yeah. was done with real emotion. Uh, as we yeah, pointed out this you morning, do another version? Duran Duran sounds like they're at a party <laughs> saying 911's a joke. Why a white guy Play saying that? Play him a little of it. Here is a little of it. You tell the truth about what you feel about this song. Go ahead, Fred. Hit it. <laughs> See if you can find it. Go ahead. Come on. Listen to it for the first time in your life. I can't believe you weren't curious to hear it. Hey, yo, one thing I love about you, Howard, you are very stern. Howard Stern! Flavor, flavor. <laughs> when did you start that flavor, flavor thing? Honestly, man, um, Chuck D started it because he's the one that named me Flavor, flavor. He did. Yeah, like Carmen you know. Electra was named Carmen Electra by Prince, and Chuck D named you Flavor, flavor. Yeah, because back in the days, you know, like everything was like, yo, Howie, how, yo, Chucky, Chuck. Was well, Chuck, you know, is Chuck D jealous of your uh, success on reality nah, television? Chuck is very proud of me, man. You Are, know what I'm saying? And there was times when he was trying to get up on my show. Are you now a millionaire again as a, as a result of these shows? I'm I, almost there, Howard. You're almost there. I could really be a millionaire if you stick me in one of them rooms back there on your radio station. Give me about two million, Howard. Stick me in a room. I'll be there for about a year, well, man. Well, let me understand something. What about a radio show for Flavor Flavor? Have you ever considered that? You're a fascinating human being. Got... Uh, I mean, well, I've started. That's how I started off doing radio. That's you know, right. And I started off at BAU. The next thing you know, I ended up at... I ended up at Hot 97. The next thing you know, I ended up at 105.1 with Ed and Lisa and Dre. Lisa G. Yeah, and Lisa G. She works here now. Yeah, you yeah. You never I made did. love to Lisa G? No, nah, I never made you love never to Lisa up? G, man. But we've always been great friends, though, you know. But, but hey, Lisa always been single, man. Lisa, she's... <laughs> Does she like men or does she Lisa. like women? What is her story? Now, that you got to ask Lisa, okay? Right. I what do you think? Huh? You should get it with her. Honestly, I think Lisa's scared. Of you. Scared of what? Huh? What is she scared I of? Think, I, I think she's scared of love from a man. And the reason why is because she's been single for a very, very long time. And I've very been like, long. come on, Lise, you need to hook up, G. No, but I just want to be single. Okay? Yeah. So I got to... That's interesting take yeah, on She that. gives us the same fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. And she's very hot for Artie, but he's thinking uh, of filing uh, a lawsuit. Hey, hey, so that means that yeah. ain't nobody else getting nothing from Lisa G. Gary, what did you want to say? <laughs> Lisa was just telling me a great story about Flavor Flav. She said that when they worked together at the radio station, yeah. if Flav wasn't in on time, her job was to start Ooh. calling... Rikers and some of the local oh. prisons to see if that's where he was. Oh. <laughs> hey, yo, and not only that, but can I tell you something, G? <laughs> I'm the only one in radio history that ever did his radio show from a jail cell. You know, speaking about jail, they I was on Rikers. I was on Rikers. Cell? Yeah, I was on Rikers Island, and I had the um, the um, um, home jams show, uh -huh. and that's when I I was um, playing people's tapes and stuff over the right. radio yeah. and everything, long as it was clean. And then I had got in trouble because you know me, man, driving around with no license and all of this you, stuff. You had, and that's you, what I kept going to jail for. Hey, check this well, out. You had Howard. forty-eight suspensions of your license. Forty-eight. Yeah. But 
but wait, but but wait, Howard, let me finish telling you. Please let me finish telling you how it man. So anyway, I was locked up on Rikers Island. You know what I'm saying? And I had to do my radio show. So I had the guards call the radio station and everything. And then they um, brought me the phone to my cell and everything. And I was doing my radio show from a jail cell, G. I'm the only one in hot 97 history ever did it, man. <laughs> a radio but, history, period. But, Flav, this is why I worry about you. How do, first of all, you think about the court system. They've actually been kind to you. If you had your license suspended 48 times, you would think after three times they would say, listen, you, you can no, never drive a car I, again. I never got 48 suspensions. Yeah, so I, never had it, I never had it suspended 48 times. I just got caught over 48 times driving without the license, Howard. Oh, I see. Do you have a license now? A license to drive people crazy. Yeah. So, you <laughs> so you don't have a driver's license? You do not have a driver's uh, license? No, nah, I don't have a driver's license yet, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Howard. How what do you mean? How far are we from getting a driver's license? Uh, we're about maybe four more minutes. <laughs> yeah, you, passed, you passed the written test, right? I passed the written test. I passed all of that, man. It's just that I just got to just get the license. So Howard. did you ever have a license? I sure did. Matter of fact, my license was a class two because before I started doing all of this, I was a school bus driver so why so why did you just all you have to do is carry your license with you when you're driving i mean it's so simple i know howard but if you it's know, suspended howard you can't that's carry right a and if it oh, and if oh. it's revoked you can't right. carry oh, i see your license would get revoked and then yes, you would go driving anyway and i had to get around howard. and then you'd go to jail are you afraid of jail i mean is jail scare flavor flavor at all i'm not scared of jail but i'm smart enough not to go back there like because the, you know yeah. i already was there i know what it's about you know i mean i do want to go back to the jail and, and and give back to a lot of the inmates, you know what I'm right, saying? I just right. want to go back and let everybody know how good that it is on this side of the wall, you know what I'm saying? And when they get your, out, they should be able to stay here. What was your longest stint in jail? My longest extent was uh, two and a half. Two and a half years? Yeah. Wow, that's heavy time. Yeah. Two yeah, and a half years? Yeah, two and a half. What? For the license? For, no, this was back in the day. Oh, the gun man. possession? Way, way before the gun possession. I'm what talking was it? About, talking about, I, I was, you know, doing some burglaries. Oh, and no shit. Pick ups and all of that. Way back in my, and way back in my day. Cause, yeah, oh, hey, man, I was a gangster. Wow. I was in a gang, man, and following behind my peers and everything. I used to get in a lot of stuff, man. Next thing you know, yes, I had to do time upstate in Onondaga wow. County Jail. What was the actual charge? Huh? Robbery? Oh, it was a whole bunch of things that ran into concurrent. When you did armed robbery, were you at least nice to the people? I mean, you didn't, uh, like... You said, Yeah, I was nice to the people. Hey, give me your money or I'm going to shoot don't you. Make me shoot no you. kidding. <laughs> With a smile on my face. Did you feel guilt or remorse over doing stuff like that? Not then. No. Now I do, though. Right. Now I do because I know it was wrong. You know what I did. What but back in the days, I was the man. What do you think it was, like, in your background that said to you that that was okay to do? Like, like, like did you just... Is that What's Said, you, you know what said to me? It was okay to do my friends. Everyone was doing it. Yeah, what about not your only parents? that. Your parents and and not only that, but, but the gang that I was in, some some of the stuff I had to do. If I didn't do Initiation it. Initiation kind of stuff. Hey, and if you didn't my do it, man, they'll, they'll clip you. There you go. Did you ever hurt anybody? No, I never hurt nobody. Sure, he did, but listen, oh, you can't bring did. that up can't on the air. Are you kidding? I love you, Howard. You the man. <laughs> but you the man. See, <laughs> see, that goes to show you from Roosevelt, Long Island. When you, you know what time it is. That place is Howard a nightmare. Stern. That place was a nightmare. You know, 60 Minutes brought me back to my hometown where Flavor is from. I didn't, you were in ninth grade with Eddie Murphy? Did you? Did, yeah, you man. Any? We had Miss Muckle. You guys uh, are younger than I am. Yeah, right? man. But then I had to go back to Freeport High again because Roosevelt High School wasn't trying to stomach me. Yeah, they threw you out of Roosevelt. You know how bad yeah, you must have been to man. be thrown out of Roosevelt? Yeah, I was kind of bad there, Howard. You man. know, Roosevelt is one of the toughest schools in the world. If he was so bad that they, they threw, him threw him out of Roosevelt. Out of Roosevelt. You yeah. have no idea what a problem he is. We, we, <laughs> did you get any supervision from your parents? Could they have any control sure, over you? Sure, man. They, yo, man, listen. My mom and my dad... Yo, man, they supervised me the best. They taught me the best and everything. What happened? But when I got with my friends, that's mm -hmm. what happened. You know what I'm saying? When I was by myself. Was it I hard, mean, was it hard mean, to get out of the game? You know how it is, man. You know, when you're around your parents, you don't curse. But then when you get around your friends, you let it fly, G, you know? So that, but that's once your After you would go to jail and be in the game, once your parents say to you, listen, Flav, this is it. We're done with you. You didn't they give you tough no. love? They did not. No. As soon as I got done. home. No. After I got out of jail and I got home, I got a beating. What, you did. <laughs> yeah. They, they beat you. And I did not try to hit back either, man. You took your beating. Yeah, I took my beating like a man. And not only that, but Howard, 
Back in the days, those were beatings, man. I got beaten butt naked with all my clothes off, extension cord or the cord from the iron. Oh, yeah, man, those was beatings, uh, How G. old were you when and the beatings then I would, started? I would go to school with all kinds of weps all over my body, man. Looked like worms, man. So I, it didn't work. Huh? <laughs> how old were you? How old After were you? While like, again. How old were you when you would get beaten like that? Were you a young child? From a young child all the way up until I was about. And, and your father would get you nude in a room and whip and you. And whip my butt, man. Yeah, man. And my mom's too. My mom's would be like, I, oh, my, my dad, take it off. Take it all off. Take the drawers off, too. It's not now, humiliating. Get over here. Bang, bang, bang. I'd be like, ah, ah, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, ah, ah. Then I start laughing and shit. Then when I start laughing, then they beat me more. And you know, let me ask you something. You ever been to a psychiatrist? <laughs> yeah. One time before. Yeah, and, I, and did and, you ever sit and down guess and what? think about and how sad that is? And when I sat down with the psychiatrist, I ain't going to lie, Howard, I ended up shrinking him. Hold it. Flav. <laughs> I'm serious, did you, man. Do you ever think about your life seriously without the smile, without the laugh, and without laughing at it, the severe beatings and abuse you took, do you ever sit and think about it and just say, Jesus Christ, this was wrong, I was mistreated, and do you ever feel bad about it? No, You're not going to let you that You know what enter. I feel? Honestly, I feel like, hey, man, you know, I think I better stop doing what I'm doing because my mom is really getting tired of this, and I'm tired of feeling this. You know what I'm saying? But but when I you never, got out of prison, but I never wait a was, second. But, but listen, but I never was mistreated by my parents but ever. I never was. You abused. don't think that's mistreated? I never you was don't abused think that's abuse. by my no. That's abuse, that's, Flav. You said that's you had not welts abuse. all right. over your body. Yes, but Flav, still would you no, beat that, your but children? But that wasn't abuse Flav, to me. Would that you was, beat your children? Huh? Will you beat your children? No, because I'll go to jail. No. If, if I could, I would. You would. Oh. But I would can't. You, would you beat your children with a wire? Forget jail. I'm taking all the rules away for society. Would you strip your child naked and then take a cord, an electric cord, and hit him on his fucking ass as hard as you could? Would you do that? No, to I wouldn't why do not? that today. Why? The reason why I wouldn't do that today why? is because there's better ways to discipline your child. Ah, than what? Those so. ways didn't exist there's, then? No, they didn't exist, man. You People didn't wasn't. Time out. Hey, hey, but Robin, but Flav, check this out, Robin. Flav, you're kidding yourself. People wasn't even thinking like that back in well, the day. Just the they only didn't thing think they, that hey, way. Robin, Robin, listen, I swear back to God. Back in the day, I swear wasn't to so God, long Robin, ago. The only thing that they thought about Robin was just getting that belt or that switch and just wearing your I butt out. I understand that. I understand that. And but you, think... you have to understand that it hurt. Yes, it, it hurt. It was humiliating. Don't you think that's why you took it? But you know what? But it was a learning lesson, and I learned from but it. But don't you think the reason you felt no remorse robbing people and all that anger that comes into robbing people... Maybe that was from the beatings I was getting. Well, what do you think? <laughs> you see, you're laughing because you're, you're laughing, uncomfortable you with it. You did it. You're uncomfortable hey, with Hey, this. I'm not uncomfortable with nothing, man. Yes, I'm real you are. comfortable. This, this is a comfortable something you couch, can't face. Kid. You're a brave man, but you're not brave <laughs> enough to face this. You were angry, and you said, fuck everyone else because I got got to take these beatings. Life sucks. I'm going to go fucking take it out on someone else instead of taking it out on your parents or you should have. Hey, you know what, Howard? That's good. You're really trying, but it ain't working. <laughs> no, it is. The laugh, you can hide behind that laugh. Hey, yo, check this out. Hide no, behind I'm the laugh all you behind want. The laugh. I'm not hiding behind the laugh. You're, You're hiding. hiding behind the microphone. No, I'm not. You're hiding, Howard. Come out wherever right, you I'm are. I'm hiding a little bit. No, nah, Howard, everything's good, man. I'm not, I mean, you know, I was never abused, man. I never you were. was mistreated Flav, by look my at me. Ma, also, let's stop ma, the show, bitch. Howard Stern is trying to say you abuse me, ma. Yes. Come up here. Come up here. Bring her up. Come up here. Bring her up. Yep. And when my mom talk to her. And when my mom's come up here, she's gonna strip you naked, Howard. Let and her try. she's gonna beat you with the extension I'll cord break her and arm. the iron cord. I'll break and, her arm. And then the whole world is gonna break your arm. No. And you would you listen to me. Listen to me, my friend. Go uh, ahead, man. And we are we came from the same neighborhood. Let's do it. We both grew up black. And we know what it's like. <laughs> so listen no, to no, me. No, no, no. We both grew up in a black neighborhood, but you never grew up black. You grew I up white. I wish I had been black. Being My white, man. Being white in a black neighborhood is the toughest thing ever. I well, know then you would have had a real but. tough time at camp during the summer. I know. Well, <laughs> they would have thrown me out. Listen to me. Flay. You, uh, you, now you're living in the Bronx? Nah, I live really? in Las Vegas and, oh, you do? and L.A. I lived in the Bronx for 14 years, though. So you're doing well. I'm yeah, really I'm happy doing, about it. I'm doing the East well, Coast, Howard, huh? man. Here, yeah, I was going to play you. Giving up the East Coast. Um, kind of, yeah. The yeah. reason why is because I'm having more fun out on the West. Right. What's the worst thing ever happened to you in jail? Um, me getting jumped by the guards, by Who? the CEOs. Really? 
Yeah, yeah. Were Madam, you being a pain in the ass or you were just No, nah, I was business? just chilling, man. You know what I'm saying? And they wanted to make a name for themselves. So, hey, let's beat up Flavor Flav. So now they can run around jail saying they beat my ass. How bad was the beating? Uh, they kind of stomped me in the head, kicked me in the chest and in the face and all that. You know what I'm saying? This was um, in the 6th building. And you have to take and, it, don't and, you? And the 6th building on Rikers Island. And do you know what? I tried to take it to court and still didn't win. But it was okay for your mom to do that to you? Huh? It's okay for your mom to do yeah, that. Yeah, right. Only my moms can do that to me. Anybody else, believe me, I catch them, they're dead. So you were a grown man when you came home from prison and your parents whipped you naked. I mean, they saw your cock and balls and everything. Well, I wasn't a, I wasn't a grown man. Last time I got beat like that, I was like 15. 15, 15 right, or 16 right. well, like right. that. Well, I mean, listen, it's a tough life. You but, yeah, but not as a grown man. I mean, you know, as a mm. grown man, then, you know, I might end up trying to strike back, bro. I'm so shocked you never, out of curiosity, listened to Duran Duran's version of 911's A Joke in My Town, a song you, of course, made famous and, and yeah. wrote. I heard that Duran Duran did it over. I'm going to play a little. Tell me, I want your honest opinion on it, because I listened to it for the first time myself this morning, and uh, I had a problem with it, but I want to see what you think. Okay. I don't think it captured what you meant in that song, but listen and you tell me. A little okay. bit, Fred. I know, Okay. Too happy. What do we think? What do we think? Hey, I ain't going live, but, <laughs> yo, that's hot to me. You I like, like it. it. You I like, like it. it. You like it. It's an honor when someone takes a song of yours and yeah, covers man. it like that. It's not like the King of England <laughs> trying to sing the blues. You, didn't, you don't think so? No, I don't think. I don't, like yeah, it. I don't think the King of England can sing what B.B. King does. So let me understand this. You are now happily in a romance. You're not married. I'm not married, but I'm setting a date, though. You are? are you? Yeah, I'm going to set a date. Not only that, but the reason why I'm taking my time with this is because I want this to be real, real big. You Who is this girl? How, how long you known this girl? Well, I've been knowing this girl now. We've been together about for about five years. Five years? About five years. Joe, now, she must be super saying. hot. Oh, yeah. She is super hot. She's super beautiful. She got the prettiest eyes, prettiest personality, man. That's why I had to Big, stick. Big uh, that's, that's why I had to stick with her, man. You know what I'm Real saying? Real breasts are fake. Oh, no, nah, everything is real about my girl. You'll mm -hmm. never find nothing fake on her. I see. And nothing fake, man. She's real. And what decade will the date be that you said? <laughs> um, Anytime soon? Come on. Um, well, it's going to definitely be in this 09. You know what I'm 09. saying? Probably this is the year. Probably, huh? yeah, yeah. And you're going to be faithful. And, and, and the reason why I want it to be big, I'm taking my time, is because, you know, I want everybody to shoot this, Howard. I want, I want this to be on... Channel 2, 4, 5, ah. 9, 11, 13, turn CNN, it into a BET, NET, Yo TV, everything. You want I it want to be everybody. A big event. Yep, and I want all radio stations to be covering it, just like they did the inauguration. Did you hear Chris Rock's <laughs> latest routine where he says, hey, Flav, you got to stop running around with the clock and everything. Now that Obama might be the president, this was before <laughs> he got elected. You got to stop being Flav of Flav. It's not good for black people, this kind of thing. Did you hear? Was it, it was done in comedy. Did you hear it? No. I, I took a Did you know anything because, about it? Did you know about that? I was watching it, and uh, I love Chris Rock. He's my favorite comedian, but uh, I thought he was a little tough on you. Did you uh, hear anything, any feedback about this? No. Nah. Are you friends with Chris? Uh, we are. I. You're all right. I mean, yeah, man. I always liked Chris Rock, man. Yeah. You know what I'm I think saying? he was just goofing around. I heard, I heard that 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 he was bashing me down a little bit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, wow, what do Chris Rock got against Flavor Flav? I never did nothing to Chris Rock. You know what I mean? The whole you're a night. brother trying to make it too. But check that. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But I spoke with my boy Bill Stephanie. You know, Bill Stephanie and Nelson George are the ones that really got Chris Rock's ball rolling. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, right. And Bill was like, Yo, man, no, nah, I don't believe that. Chris Rock. 
loves you, man. I'm like, well, how could he love me if he's going around the country bashing me? That's he's right. like, yo, well, he's not bashing you, man. Chris Rock loves you. So I got to see what my boy Bill is talking about because Bill would never stare me wrong. Mm. Right, well, you know, I didn't hear it. I don't know what I you're did. talking about. I, uh, I, I heard it, but, uh, you know. So why didn't you get him for me, Howard? You my boy. I haven't seen him Why don't you see, be like, yo, why you talk about my man Flay? Pow. I will. <laughs> you yeah, know we what I'm saying? I'm saying, Howard. I will stick up for you. Come on, man. I love you. Come on, man. When they was trying to bash you, how would you? You I was stuck up, up for me. You, you I damn remember right. That. Thank God. You're for you doggone right. And I'm going to keep sticking up for you. You were in jail, so. Yeah, that's right. Huh? You were nowhere to be found. <laughs> when? Yeah. You were always in jail. I could never get a hold of you. Oh, okay, but 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 at the time when they was trying to trying to ex you, Howard, your boy was out of jail, and I was sticking up for you, Howard. Right, do you ever hear from your old gang members? Do they ever say to you, Flav, look, man, you've made it. You've got some dough now. You gotta give us some. How money. do we get out of there? No. Nah, nah, some, nah, and that's because, you know, my, 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 my gangsterhood ended a long time ago. I always you know heard that I'm once saying? you're in a gang, you can't get out. Um, that's true in some cases, but some cases, that ain't true. Who did you go to? The head council there? The consigliere? Well, I can't really talk about that on the radio, because right. I might start a fire that I can't put out. I understand. You bought your way out, I bet. Nah, right. I didn't or buy do, my way know, out. Did you get did beat you, in and beat out? Did you, hey, did I love you, you too, Robin. Did you fight your way out? Huh? Did you have to fight your way out? Kinda. No kidding. Kinda, man. Yeah, man. You mean you went to them and said, "Look, I got to get out," and they said, "Okay, kick this brother's and ass." And they kicked my butt to get out. All right. But really? I made it out. I made it out, and I'm here with you today. You've Howard. taken a lot of beatings in your life, haven't you? Hey, man, and I might have to take more one day. So when Chris Rock says something about you, you say, "Hey, man, haven't I gotten the shit beat out of me enough? Can you stop, please?" Huh? You too, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Rock got beat up too? No, 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 no. no, no. Huh? Yeah. Wait, so what in other words, in, <laughs> Lake, in a gang, in other words, in a gang, they give you a final task. If you were to get out of the gang, you've got to perform the final task. Right? In other words, you've got to prove to the gang, and then you have to fight your way out. Yeah, man. Damn, yeah, that doesn't yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. fun. Yeah, they, you got, they beat hey, your hey, ass to get hey, in. I ain't going to lie. It was out. fun getting in, but it wasn't fun getting out. Can but don't they a, beat you up on the way in, too? Yes, ma'am, they sure Jeez. do. They wow. sure do, Robin. Yeah. I've seen that in, in videos where, like, you, like the whole gang just stomps and on And it's real. Why, though? Why do they have to beat you That's up? That's called initiation. And not only that, but they got to see if you man enough to be be with the crew. If you man enough to be with the... If you can make it through this, you man enough to be with the crew. If you don't make it through this, hey, you can't hang. Did you feel bad when you had to beat up some guy who wanted to be in the gang once you were in? No, because yeah. that, cause they didn't feel bad when they beat me up, so I didn't feel bad when I had to beat somebody else up. I always say that about doctors. They always complain about they have to do rounds, you know, when they're interning and they work 15, 16 hours a day. And they go, well, why don't you stop that? You go, well, we had to do it, so now, now we're doing it. And, and that's, that's true. It. That's true, Howard. Your life's tough, huh? Yeah, not it's now, been a struggle. though. Not now, man. Now Life is place. easy. Life is a lot easy now, you know what I mean? It'd be a lot easier, man, if I had your money. Well, you are the man, Howard. Wow. Right. Come on, man. Stick me in that room back there, man. About two, about, I'll do about a year, man. <laughs> I'll do about a year back there for Howard, man, on stress. Serious radio. Well, Yo, you think I would be good on radio, though, Howard? I think, here's what I think about you. Serious, man. Do you think I would be good on radio, Howard? I think if you got real like you were here today, the way that you, when you got real about your parents and your life and you got real about the, you know, all the flavor, flavor shtick, I get it. But when you are yourself and you start to talk about gangs, you start to talk about what went on in your life, the beatings, everything. If you could just sit down and, and treat it like that, you would be one of the greatest radio performers of all time. Hey, can but, I tell you something, Howard? Yeah. I know how to do that. You do? So I do. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to uh, give Tim Sabian the call. I'm going to tell him, give Flav an hour of his own. Let's see him get on there. And I guarantee you, you will be great. I think so, though. You know, I, I probably will blow up serious radio, too, like you did. Imagine you just talked to some kid who's trapped in a gang on the radio who says, I don't know how to get out, Flav, and you advised him. And then he ended up getting out. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would want to hear about this stuff. You've lived a life most people think is insane. Yeah. And they want to hear about it. And not only that, but I'm grateful, man. I'm, I thank God, man, that I still got this life. You ever right been locked now. up in a mental institution? Never, ever in my life. Anyone ever tried to commit you? Never ever in my life. Ever been so down that you didn't want to go on? Never ever. Wow. Here, Never, I'll give you ever, I'll man. give you a sample show. I'll be a caller. I'll call into the Flavor Flav show and see how you handle it. You ready? I... Okay. <clears throat> Hello, Flav. Um, I know I'm you got a gang. I know That's you got. Crazy. Wait a second. I know you got lead when you were six. 
I'm seven years old and I still haven't gotten any pussy. What should I do? Well, honestly, to tell you the truth, I think you should just pop a bone and keep it in your pants. <laughs> Don't Wait, try you're telling it. the kids to wear it. Uh, wrap it uh, up. Uh, Dominic, you're on the air with Flavor Flav. you got to see Flavor Flav in Dion Taylor's Night Tales, available on DVD what is tomorrow. Night Tales? I'm going to tell you that in one second, All but first, right. Dominic, go ahead. Flavor Flav, do you remember when I was representing your wife? Huh? Do you remember when I was representing your wife in family court? Oh, wow. You, you're you back again? Where did this guy... Where did y'all... What grave did y'all dig this guy up from? You always, hey, 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 are you in my movie, Night Tales? <laughs> well, he was He's the in the against, movie, Night Tales. Dominic, you were the lawyer against Flav and his divorce? Uh, it was actually a, a family court proceeding, and Flav and Flav happens to have the nicest kids in the world. Are you seeing them now? Thank you, man. Word up. I, I see all my kids, man. I be with and all my kids. really nice son and really nice kids that I met. And I hope he's being part of their lives. Are you? I sure am. He said bro. he is. Big I time. And my grandkids, too. You got right. grandkids? I got four of them. How old are you now? I'll be 50 years old in March. Flavor and you got grandkids? 50? Yes, I'll be 50 in March. Hey, and guess what? You look good. They're having a 50th birthday party for me at BB King's on the 15th of March, and then as a special request, I want my group to perform. Am so I, that's how I'm going to bring in the 16th, my birthday. Right. Am I invited? Gonna be Am I invited to Is Dominic going to be invited? He represented uh, the opposition. Uh. Sure, sure, he can be invited. <laughs> come on come on down. Yeah, he'll introduce He'd you. like to see you, actually. I I'd love, right. I'd love <laughs> to see him. <laughs> uh, what is it, Jen? Go ahead and say hi to Flavor Flav, whose uh, Night Tales is available on DVD tomorrow, and we're going to find out what that is. Jen, go ahead. Hey, uh, Flav, Flav, I wanted to ask you if you feel, you know, any, uh, I mean, do you feel bad for hitting that puppy, beating that puppy on the surreal life? Do you have any remorse for doing oh, that? Oh, yeah, the see? puppy. No, I think wow, that's... Wow, that's big. That's big right there. But see, let me tell you all something. You Go know, ahead. the average discipline for a puppy when he pees on the floor, you hit him all across the nose with some newspaper. That's all I did. But then, you know, TV... They going to beef it up, so they kept running it and running it and running it and made it look like I was killing the poor dog. Flav, isn't it true in a way, though, this ties in with what you were talking about earlier, that when you're abused so much as a kid yourself, I mean, you, what you describe is But really I never bad. was abused. Stop saying I was abused, Flav, Howard. you're being a denier. You uh, were no, abused. No, I never was abused How can ever you say in that? my life. How but, can you say that? You were but, beaten but, naked with, with, a, with, a, with, 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 with electrical cords. I still, but that wasn't abuse. That what was is discipline. It, uh, it was called on. discipline. Discipline, Howard. See, that's why well, you don't so care about the dog. There's a difference slave. between discipline and abuse. The slave master used to call it discipline. Yep. Hey, no, that was abuse. The master. Uh, you recognize I don't care what the slave You recognize it. Listen, the slave master is abuse. Masa, wait, let me educate slave you here. Slave master's abuse, if but the my masa, mom, she disciplined. If the master was abusing... Then your parents are abusing you. Know, no different than the massa. Wrong. Oh, come on. Doesn't come on. matter yeah, who's man. wielding it, it the court. Doesn't matter who the massa is. The massa comes in many colors, my friend. Yes, he does. Sing that. <laughs> he comes Make, in many colors. That's right. The massa comes in many colors. That's now right. He comes in many colors. But you know what, though? That's my right. mom, she only comes in one color. And she ain't. She don't come into the color of the master. Chris, go ahead quickly. You're the last one in on Flavor Flav. Uh, Dion Taylor's Night Tales available on DVD tomorrow, and then we're going to find out about the project. Go ahead, Chris. Hey now, Howard. How are you? All right. Flav, Flav, late, late night. First of all, Howard, if if you think you're a bad looking man, you ought to feel good sitting next to him. Who? Oh, Flav's a handsome man. Flav Flav is Flav, he's a handsome man. Anyway, back in the early 90s, the late 80s, I had to spend 28 days. I got a 28 day deal in Nassau County Jail. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I could have paid a fine or did the time. I figured, nice 20, 28 days, nice and quiet in, in county jail in a barracks. Who's in there? Flav or Flav? This guy never shuts up. He talks. He talks nonstop. He talks in his sleep. Flav. Talks in his sleep. Hey, yo, I asked him about, and the sounds about, and the sounds of this story, I think you stole my style. Right. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, did you and Flav did you did you and Flav get along in prison? I mean, I think it would be exciting to be near Flav in prison. Uh, it was it was a it was a horror. It was a horror. I mean, <laughs> just like <laughs> night tales. Just like night tales. I asked him about the clock around his neck. I said, what's with the clock? And he says, that's to let you know that I know, to let you know that I know what time it is. Well, first of all, I doubt in prison they let you wear a clock. Am I correct? <laughs> no, nah, they took it away from me, Howell. Exactly. So don't even listen to this guy, man. He... Uh, Flav, 
So let's talk about this thing that you're promoting. This is called Night Tales. Yeah. What is this? You, now a movie Well, star, see, right? Night Tales, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a TV movie series, you know what I'm right. saying? And, um, you know, you know, um, you know, developed by my boy Dion Taylor, you know, and... Um, and it's like um, a twist of the Twilight Zone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, a twist good. of the, like the Alfred Hitchcock show or Rocky uh, Horror. So what happens you know to what you I'm in saying? this? You're Suspense, and see, mystery, uh, yeah. thriller. And see, and see, you know, you got a lot of celebs, you know, coming through. You know what I'm saying? Other celebs, you know, coming through, doing the act, putting on the acting skills and everything. What part do you play? Are you, what, what I happens? play, I, I'm the Rod Sterling of the movie, baby. I, I start the show off. I tell you what it's about. And then you see the show. And oh, you're the host. It. Right. And then at the end of the show, then I come back on and I close the show. All right. So you're not in so one I'm of the, the stories. I'm the narrator, baby. I'm no the narrator. Kidding. I'm the storyteller. You know what and I'm saying? And you're behind this. You've been paid I'm for this. I'm the brand, baby. I'm the brand. You're the brand. If this takes off, you'll be the Rod Serling of, uh, yeah, of Night Tales. There you go. Word. Interesting. And not only that, but Howard, we got a part for you. Would you come do Night Tales? I have no idea. I'm a very, okay. very big star. All right. Well, check this out. I'm going to submit something to you, man. Just well, don't say no. Come be in my movie, man. All right. Let Come me on, take be a look in my at movie. It. You know I don't just do any project. I know that. I my know that. My name's above the title. And, and not only demands. that, and when you do another project, Howard, you got to have your boy Flavor will, on board, I man. Always, I, I put you in all my films. You know that. Thank you, man. Well, put me in your next one, too. You know how Ron Howard always puts his brother in? I yes, put in Flavor Flavor Flavor's Flav. uh, your go-to That's right. Guy. You're Howard. <laughs> That's my guy. Uh, That's my guy. He was very He was very good on set. I'll tell you this. Flav on set was a professional. He was not a pain in the ass like was some of these other time? rock stars. He know? was on time. He got the clock. <laughs> Thanks, he thinks man. it's 6 o'clock all the time. So I told him, all time is 6 o'clock. He was there for all three right. days. All right, well, Howard, well, well, guess what, Howard? All of that right now is about to change, Howard. Six. Uh, what time is that? Midnight. It's, at, it's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> you, know, you know why I put it on 12? Why? Because 12 o'clock points straight up. And right now, I'm straight up with you, Howard. All right. Thank you, Flav. That, that was good. That was good, Robin. That, that was, was good. good. That was good. Flavor, Flav. Flavor, Flav. Flav's the new Rod <laughs> Serling. He's on a roll. He's nice in yeah, Vegas. He's in love, and he's happy. And now he says, please. Check out Night Tales. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure having you, my hey, friend. Hey, Howard, and it's always a pleasure seeing you, my man. Don't may, stay away so long. And, and may God continue to keep you successful, bro. Mm, and the Real, same with man. You. And, 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 what are you and, now? And Christian? may he keep you having me come back to your show. What are you now, Christian or are you Muslim? What are huh? you? What All are of you? that, man. I just believe in God, man. God is my boy. Really? I know Allah you know what for I'm you. Saying? Yeah, you? But I'm a Muslim. I'm a you Christian. You are a Muslim. You're a Muslim. Yep. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. All right. Man, I love you, big brother. You be good, man. Great, man. Radio, too. Thank you, man. Good. Everything's good. Yeah, everything's good. I you promise great. you, man. I Thanks, man. You yeah, man. I'll be 50 in March. Man, I'm about... Hey, listen. And then if you're around, if you're around, come by my birthday party. Okay, great. I'd love all right, at BB King. We'll get all the information. Yeah, I'll make sure you right. get everything, Thanks. Howard. I'd love to. Okay. All right. You, continued success, my friend. Thanks, Howard. Right. You take care, it's man. Great seeing you. All right. Hey, yo, don't be surprised, right. man. I might end up doing a radio show. Well, there's a the guy, Tim Sayers. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on. We talked about our underdog woman, Howard. Right. Call him. Seriously. Okay. We'd love to have you. Love to. Are you serious? Wow. What do you like about doing Howard's show, man? You seem like it's, you're still laid back. You guys get along so easy. Hey, well, well, you know, first of all, man, you know, me and Howard, man, we got a natural chemistry going, you know what I'm saying? That's called natural chemistry. A lot of people ain't got that, you know what I'm saying? But then again, also, another reason why I like doing Howard's show, Howard's show is because the personalities, man, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what makes a good radio show, great personalities. Yeah, He's might. got a great personality. I got great personality. Personality walks, personality <laughs> talks, personality smiles. Now, you might want to have your own uh, radio show on, on Sirius, you said, right? Hey, man, do y'all think that I would make a real good radio show host? Yeah, I think it would be the best radio show on Sirius. Just behind For real? Yeah. Hey, yo, you know what? I'm going to have a brand new show. It's called Ask Lisa G. <laughs> hey, you yo, too. Lisa, yeah, I love you, G. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Me and Lisa you G, y'all better right watch here. out. That's all right. Back together again. I know. Yes, Boy. sir. But yeah, uh, Howard said that you're really great when you're real. Hey, well, I'm always real. I'm uh, never fake. Well, you know what, you know what I'm he's saying. I'm never fake. Hey, yo, and you know what? He was asking me about you on radio. I know. And I told him, 
that you might be scared of me. No. But I don't think you're scared of me. No. But Lisa, I gotta say one thing. You are dynamite in a bathing suit. That's Boy, why you she, saw me in a bathing suit. Man, she puts on a bathing suit. All oh, right, at, and... Wow. Yo, what's up, money? Hey, man. How you doing, man? I'm right. I'm Benji. Nice to meet you. Benji? Yeah. All right, Benji. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, no doubt. you the man, baby. Man. Man, Benji. That's right, Benji. <laughs> that was one of my favorite shows. Benji. To Benji. <laughs> Hold it down, baby. All right. Woo, that's right. This is the longest handshake and handshake history. Yes, and we're still shaking, folks. Still shaking. And we're still shaking. Bacon! It's bacon. I smell bacon. Don't be cool, G. Not me, I'm kosher. Huh? Not me, I'm kosher. Okay, you kosher? Yeah. I'm beef, baby, I'm beef. All the pork that I eat, I eat beef. Keep it halal, man. That's right, keep it halal. <laughs> halal! Yo, peace, G. Here today, I'm going to take a test to see how stupid I am. I mean, I think all they had to do was call me, and I could have answered that, but eh, what's next? I walk in the studio, and a, and a machine kicks me in the balls? I mean, what else is going? This man's smarter than me. So, it's, Bob, what kind of test are they going to give you today? I don't know. It's, a, it's like an IQ. It's a, they're going to find out what, what level I'm at as a human being. Like, you know, what grade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm street smart. I don't give a fuck what the test says. It doesn't matter. Because I'm fucking, I'm street smart. And that's what matters. And if we took the test, if we take the test out in the street, I'll get 100. So what level do you think you're on? I would say eighth grade because it's been a while from school. And I don't read books and I don't fucking, uh, I don't care about anything but comedy, how it's stern, and stuff like that, really. Have you been brushing up on your uh, reading? Yes, I'm always reading. I have a bookshelf at home, you fucking stupid bastard. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I'm uh, John, king of all grammar. Uh, down here to test Bob Levy today, uh, given the, uh, it's called the IRI, Informal Reading Inventory. Basically, it's a uh, reading test that I would administer to uh, kids that I teach and uh, see how he does on it, see what grade level he reads at. It's the ultimate goal. Now, have you heard Bob Weavey on the show before? I have, yeah. What level do you think he's going to be at? When he was reading Artie's book, I uh, I was really surprised that he was reading. Pro I would I would guess probably second grade, maybe third grade. Oh Jesus, that bad, really? I would say so, yeah. Oh my God! So how long is this test going to take? It's probably going to take half an hour, forty-five minutes. And then we'll find out how stupid he is. We'll find out exactly how stupid Bob Levy is. All right, man. We'll see you in there. All right, thanks. King of all grammar is here. This is a guy who professionally administers tests. We're going to find out two things. You know, when Artie's audiobook came out, Artie asked Bob Levy to read a chapter. And we saw that Bob's reading ability was very, very, let's say, poor. Well, it had been suspect for some time, <clears> but that sort of brought it front and center. It sure did. King of all grammar is here. Thanks, <laughs> King, for stopping by and Absolutely. helping us with this uh, bit, if yeah. you want to call Bob's life a bit. <laughs> I know. Uh, Bob, are you nervous about the results at all? And also, uh, no. I, I really, I, I live my life outside without reading, and that's how I live. I mean, I don't care about this shit. It doesn't mean... Well, you don't care about is obvious. I mean, no. But is that a defense mechanism? Isn't it something that maybe you want to work on? Maybe I will after we've, you know, if this comes out real... How do you feel about, you know, like you have a child. Yeah. Do you want him to live a life without no, reading? No, I told him stay in ability? school. I said, I got lucky. You will not get lucky. Like, what do you, you know, think happened to you? Like, did you, like, were you a poor reader and everyone just ignored the fact I that you... I think school... School was easy to pass back then. There was so many kids in the in the class. How exactly just let did you, you go. Get, How exactly did you get lucky? Uh, I don't have to work with you anymore. <laughs> oh, is that true? We're not working. Again? Is it true you're trying to have a baby now with a yeah. new wife? Yes, yes. Why would you do that? I know you're low on money. You're like the octo. Uh, the Why am I low? Everybody, I'm low on money. Uh, I, I, I live in the basement. Money. I mean, where the fuck you, you guys? You perpetuate all that. You say that. I, I, that was three years ago. Are you doing better? I've, I've been. I'm doing better. I, li I got. I live in a nice place. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm doing good. And uh, she wants to have a kid. I dropped one in last night. Hopefully, it took. 
Oh, are you having trouble conceiving? No, we only tried for two months now. She's got this kit and all that shit that yeah. go by. And what does the kit tell you? Her, her it says that she's uh, ovulating or whatever. She's what? Ovulating. Ovulating. That was one of the words on the test. You oh, is it? That, yeah, ovulating? All right. Uh, well, um... Bob, it's time to find out now. You should be able to pass a reading test to become a father. I think. King of all grammar. What is this? Really. Re what is this reading test? Do you, uh, you give this to elementary school kids? I do. You do. All right. Yeah. That's what you do professionally. Right. So and he should have uh, just whizzed through this. I did whiz through it. <laughs> it didn't take him long. He whizzed on it. Yeah, he did, uh, <laughs> all right. So all we, 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 we we understand. We're going to find out two things about Bob's ability right now. We're going to find out. Not only what his reading level is, but also his comprehension level. Not only his ability to say the words and read them, but really what he understands. And um, <laughs> we have, uh, we took I don't a guess. he understands what you're saying. <laughs> do you want to hear the tape first, Howard? Yeah, I do want to hear the tape. Okay. All right, here is Bob taking the tape. So here's how it goes. Go to yeah. Gary, page one. Oh, right. Okay, the first thing, in the, it's on the far right-hand side. Okay, the first right. thing is just Bob reading words, not paragraphs or phrases, just right. words. Just here words. is King of All Grammar administering the test as Bob reads words. Let's find out. Piana, p pianisismo. We we dent we we desvirus uh re repatriate. Oh, Sharp this is a great game. Temmer. <laughs> By the way, I'm trying to figure out what word. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a great game. Try to figure out what right. word Bob I'm is trying start, to say. I'm going to start. I'm going to start out again, and then I'm going to let me see if I can play that. That last word was cat. <laughs> I'm going to start again because the first word I could not figure I out. I got the I, first word. I, I do think. too. Yeah. I don't think I do. Hold on. All right. Piana, p pianisismo. <laughs> Might have been pancreas. P p pianisismo. Is, is it pianisimo? No. What? I think it's pianisimo. That's yes. correct. Yeah. 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 What is it? Pianissimo. <laughs> pianissimo. And, okay. So Can't blame a guy for not knowing that. Yeah. Who the fuck knows that? That's one of the tougher words, right? The guy's not gay. That's a little bit of a Repatriate. Repatriate? What is he trying to say? Repatriate. Repatriate. Okay. Shrapnel. Shrapnel? Shrapnel. Wow, he can't even say shrapnel, huh? Shrapnel. Shrap. Shrapnel. Sharp, sharp, sharp. I can't say, you know what I mean? I can't get the words together. I know what it is. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Is he dyslexic? Like dyslexia. I, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, no, wait a second. Dyslexic is reading, isn't it? If you tell a guy a word and he can't repeat it, what's that called? Like, say, Retard. Like, like, like Bob, say shrimp. <laughs> a shrimp. I, that's, I'm from New York and we say shrimp. Right. You know, it's just a word that we grew up with. I've talked to New Yorkers a lot. Say I've that word again. Shrimp. shrimp. No, the other one. The what? Shrapnel. Strap metal. What? <laughs> Strap metal. What? Strap. No. Shrapnel. Strap metal. Listen to me. Look at me. Shrap. Shrap. Now. Pretending. Shrap. No. Shrapnel. Shrapnel. I'm pretending. <laughs> this is what I wanted you know to what do. What shrapnel is? Strap. What? What is what? What do you say? Shrapnel. Yeah. What is that? Strap. It's like uh, shrapnel. It's like the extra, extra like parts of a. Like when you shoot somebody. Shrapnel. Right. Okay. It's like when you shoot somebody. We'll take that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. All right. All right. King, uh, this has to be some case, huh? This was, uh, yeah, mm. none like I've ever seen. Oh, really? Really? Is uh, yeah, that well, true? I don't have much experience with adults. Right. But, uh, I mean, you wouldn't expect it. <laughs> Bob, I don't know. I don't know what to say. All right. Let's see. Let's Bob is adult. Yeah. That sounded weird saying that anyway. <laughs> he's a big, he's a big adult. <laughs> Major Damn adult. A, po a whole, a poultry. Upholstery. Wow. Okay. Facetious. Facetious. I think that's facetious, right? Facetious? Or fictitious. I think I got that after a while. Yeah, that was yeah, that was facetious. Yeah. Facetious. Feudalism. Garrulous. Renaissance. Renaissance. Synopsis. Oh, man. Wow. Can you say that word, synopsis? Synops oh, now, synopsis. What? S say synopsis. S synopsis. 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 Right. Synopsis. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Oh, Cross that go. one off. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Veranda. Ver veranda, you know. Oh, Anachronism. You know. Anachronism? Anachronism. All right. <laughs> Did you say anachronism? Anachronism. Anachronism? Right. <laughs> 
Why don't you just get a machine that just kicks me in the balls every time I come in here? Uh, what was that last one? Anachronism. Anachronism. Yeah, fuck this. Uh, anachronism. Pick up the audio book, Too Fat to Fit. <laughs> hey, I did good on that. I was there for fucking 10 days. I know. Oh, yuck. What? Sus. Oh. Sus. Sus. Tense. Sustenance. 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 Substance. No, no, no. no. Sustenance. Sustenance. Yeah. Mm. Sustenance. Yeah. And yeah. you know what it is, right? When you hear it. No. Do you know what sustenance no? means? <laughs> I know it's sustenance. No. No. I know it's no. substance. Mean. What does that mean? What does that mean? Substance. It's like a substance. Like you. Like you know. You, this is like you got shit on the table over there. Substance. <laughs> no. What is it? I don't know. He, there is no substance. <laughs> sustenance. I don't know that word. So, but never, think about it. What is what word would it be uh, derived from? And like in the language. Oh, why are you saying that? Most He's like, what it. is derived? Like right. sustain it, right? Sustain. So, oh, you, you 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 held you 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 didn't come. Like it's like I you know I didn't I lasted long. <laughs> you didn't come, right? No, I didn't come. No, right? Right? Sustenance is when you don't come. <laughs> I lasted long, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. no. King of all grammar, uh, oh, you you great. are shocked, are you not? I am. Uh, all right, yeah. Let's continue He's with the test. going to be shot after this. <laughs> Here is Bob reading, taking his reading comprehension test. Is I did better. Right, so this is not him reading uh, paragraphs, paragraphs of thoughts. Okay. okay. Thoughts. Punctuality at midday with obscure, obscure, resplendent, resplendent with with scarred ash and. Verminon, and his eyes sparkled with a sharp, ad ab ab abnormal gleam, <laughs> which was really an outcome of a, of a constant, a, con a con continual search and look for customers. <laughs> he wound he, to, to crown the effect. He wound a saffron, saffron-colored turban around his head. This colors. I know that fucking word. This color screen seam seem never failed. People were attracted to him and the the Helia the 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 Helia the the Helia stalks. Okay. The what? Punctuality what? at midday. The Helia stalks? What they're, is that? So no, what do you do? No. What do you do after you give him that to read? Do you ask him what it means? I ask him questions right. about it. Right. That's ah. the next. The next tape is. Wh right. What does it mean that you just okay. heard, Bob? <sighs> what is the main idea of this story? <laughs> to fucking make me crazy. Possible. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I really. Uh, th I think th this guy had a lot of shit. He definitely had a lot of stuff with him that I have no idea what the fuck it was. You know? But when did the man open his bag and spread out his professional equipment? When did he? When did he? At the beginning. Is that wrong? That's wrong. That's what yeah. fucked me up. <laughs> you didn't even get that right, right? At the beginning of the story, it happened. But right. They... That's what I meant. Yeah, but no, it's wrong. What does the word uh, resplendent mean? Resplendent. 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 I have no fucking clue. Resplendent. No. What caused his eyes to sparkle with a sharp, abnormal gleam? When he looked in, uh, into his bag, was that wrong? That was incorrect as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he what, had no uh, understanding of what he read, is what you're saying? On this uh, particular uh, one, I did good on the other ones. You got uh, two out of ten correct. Wow. Were, all right. So now it's time to find out. Now it's time. Uh, King of all grammar. You do this with uh, school-age children. Yeah, grammar school. You can school. actually give him a grade of uh, the actually, level at which right. he is. What are we going to? What are we going to learn first? His comprehension or what? What grade level he reads at? What grade level he reads at? All right. I'm going to now. I'm going to tell you. Howard we guessed. Took uh, guesses. Yeah. Fifth I did. Grade, fifth grade. Robin guessed third grade. Artie guessed second grade. And Fred <laughs> guessed sixth grade. Who, who is closest, and, and what is the actual reading level of Reverend Bob Levy, the very well-known stand-up comic? Uh, the actual reading level of Reverend Bob Levy is grade six. Oh, grade wow. Six. You're kidding. Yes. Fred, you win that I one. I knew my customer. Wow. <laughs> That's better than I thought. You reached wow. frustration level, which means five or more words wrong at grade seven. So you move one back, grade six. is So he reads level. on a sixth grade reading level. Uh, Bob, you're happy. I'm uh, fucking thrilled.
Wow. What did you think, Bob? You thought you were like a second. I grade? thought it was like fourth. So this is fucking. This, this, right. I'm celebrating it's like today. Graduated so you're from saying high school. just the ability to read the words. You don't even have to understand them. Just the ability to sound out and read words. Basic he, he decoding reads. skills. You're right. kidding me that sixth graders can't read any better than that? That's what's wrong. Yeah, go ahead. First of all, I know my kid can read better than that. But second of all, yeah, there are kids who can read better than that because there are sixth graders that read at a tenth grade reading level. Bob's not. Not, Bob's not being really genuine when saying he's happy because yesterday at the pre-interview, he told Will he thought he read at an eighth grade level. Oh, yeah, but I said I would probably be a fourth. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, I, I'm happy with sex. Believe me, <laughs> that is that is very. All right. What else my can son's going to be proud of me. What when you went we for learn? your reading test, the, the written test on the driver's license, were you able to pass it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I knew I knew how to drive. Before. What did you memorize? Yeah, we would take it home. I'd have somebody, you know, and I knew what to do. Right. Cheesy. Right. Right. Okay. Cheat. That's cheat. cheat. That's all you got to do. <laughs> all right, go ahead. King of Old Grammar. Now, here's the real one. What does Bob understand and what level is Reading he comprehension. All right, you want right. me to start from the beginning and just tell you, we did the pre-primer first, which is basically uh, like pre-K, like kindergarten type uh -huh. reading. Okay. Got all the questions right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so he, he, so he's kindergarten, kindergarten. kindergarten reading, he's uh, great. Yeah. Okay. He's great at it. Piece of cake. Uh, first grade, he uh, got two out of eight questions correct. All right. What? Comprehension. Two at first grade reading level, two out of eight. So that would put him somewhere between kindergarten and first grade. And retarded. But wow. second grade, he did better. So oh, there's, really? Yeah, second grade, he did better. Answered the questions. He got uh, seven out of eight. So uh -huh. his actual level, uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say is a third grade reading level. See, that's what I, I wow. put him at about third grade. Yeah. Hey, Bob, way to go. I thought it was going to be like a comprehension, like first grade. So I think you're way ahead of the game. I don't know how I get through life. I mean, I, I, I can. I I do you it do without well. this. Do I do well. well without this, truthfully. Yeah. Well, uh, you're on the level of a third grader, and third graders can get through life. I exactly. Mean, yeah. <laughs> if you throw them outside. Yeah, and, uh, uh, how much reading do you really need to do? You don't. I, uh, my wife walks around in a book. I'm like, get that out of the house. We don't need that shit around. <laughs> so we finally know. So, so is Bob retarded? Yeah. I would say Bob's retarded. Bob's, uh, Bob's a street smart guy. That's right. basically what it comes down to. Right. He just doesn't but understand reading. But what happened reading. to him in school? They let me go by. Probably just, let... just like they do. They just pass you on if they if there's no hope for you i will say well, well, you know not there's no hope but no you know. i'm maybe i'll want nowadays to they sort of take these kids give them special programs and mm -hmm. trying to help them out so that they don't get like bob but somehow each teacher kept passing him through because with a third grade uh, uh comprehension it's no way he could have passed eighth ninth tenth right, 11th he couldn't grade. do the rest of the school work right. yeah right. they just let you through i would did get you, a 65 all the time and that's just passing did you graduate high school uh, no I, but i did go for like five years oh my God. Yeah. what grade did you get up to uh well, i got up to like 11 uh, many times many like, times a few times right. and then like the kids were like five years younger than me and i just dropped out i couldn't right. take was it that traumatizing yeah it was being, do you know what traumatizing means yes okay, uh, right. it was sort of like right now <laughs> right uh gary what do you want to say I, Bob, I got a question for you how yeah. do you does somebody read your contracts for you in other words when a comedy club sends you a contract do you look at it or do you read it? I it's very simple the contracts. Uh, I tell them what to put down on it, and it's, it's like a third grader. But wrong. do you right. know yeah. if they did? Oh like, yeah, no, I definitely do. Have you ever been screwed because you couldn't read the contract? No, never. I've signed some Levy contracts, and he's right. They literally say you get yep. fifteen hundred. I get two hundred. <laughs> he gets two drink minimum. Right. She no. gets Jane she runs spot, fast. Run. <laughs> no, but I can't yeah. laugh at Bob because you talk about in the eighties when we went to school, maybe mm -hmm. they did let people through. They I, really screwed up on him, though. Well, I, I mean, had summer on. school. I had summer yeah, school with this but... woman, and the woman said to us because she was afraid of us. She said because we misbehaved mm -hmm. all the time. Remember the woman I told you I sprayed her with a water pistol right. and that right. shit. She was my summer school teacher. She told four of us, "Look, sit in the back. Don't say a thing. Don't bother me. We'll give. I'll give you a D, and you'll you'll get out of high school." Well, but wow. look, I mean, you're able to read. You wrote a book. I read very well. <laughs> Bob, um, are you back to drinking? I heard you are back to drinking. I had I I drank a few times since I threw out my shoulder. Yeah. And the pills are not working with yeah. the shoulder. And yeah, I got a little fucked up. Are you back to using coke? No. What? I'm fine. No, I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm on a lot of pills. You want to swear on the life of your child? You're not I, back Why am I always swearing on the life of my child every Are time? Are you using coke again? I might have slipped once in two years. In two years. When? Recently. Last night. Last night. No, right? no, no. 
Come on. No, I've, Come clean. I've been great. I'm Don't telling be you. Don't A-Rod. No, I've been great. I'm, I'm, I'm on. I'm reports on t- about you. Th- what reports? I heard you were very messed up. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I am the most normal person out of all those fuckheads back there. Want to take a drug test? No. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, what, uh, wait, we got a drug test? Liar! <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, he's sounding just like those guys on Celebrity Rehab. Yeah. No, I mean, I my had life is... shoulder what? pain. So well, listen, I if the guy says he doesn't do coke, I mean, why he bust his balls apart? No, no, yeah. no, it's just that it, the reason for the drinking, <laughs> oh, I have shoulder pain. Or do you believe Bob? Yeah, if Bob tells me he didn't do coke, if Bob I'm tells me to... he did coke once in the last two years... You clearly, clearly, I've been seeing things. <laughs> what is this, Gary? Here we go. Here comes the bus. No, 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 no. It's all good. Hey, first of all, yeah. uh, I should mention that Bob... Uh, what are you sipping on? Every water. Minute? He's just water. slurping. Is that what it is? That's all they give you. Why are you so here? thirsty? Jesus. Because I, I had to fucking read. <laughs> guy well, trying to make me read. Show Howard the, the the new drink that you think is the best thing ever. Oh, this is for Artie. I got him this. It, it actually it's five. It, it's a uh, oh, five, five hour energy, energy, and it'll get him through the show. He won't have to sleep uh, anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, you, I need that. You live. Yeah, by, you that live by No, it. It's, it actually works, and it doesn't get you fucked up. I might try that. Five hour energy. First of all, see Bob Levy with Colin Quinn. That's a good lineup. We, we have a huge lineup now. Uh, Bob is funny as hell, and you know Colin Quinn's funny. And also, see Bob with the Killers of Comedy. You are really on fire. Yes, yeah, so this whole month we're everywhere. You might not read well, but you're funny. That's and it. That's that, what counts. That's it. Bring no wonder he money. gets along so well with Beetlejuice. If, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't that far off. No, him, definitely not. You talk to him a lot and get along? Oh, no. He comes to my house. He stayed off my house. He's so polite. I mean, you, you, I understand him. He understands me. Wow. <laughs> I find that hard to believe that Beetlejuice is actually a normal guy. Yeah, well, uh, to, yeah, compared well, to not. Bobby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, for tickets, go to see RevBobLevy.com. RevBobLevy.com. You know, I've worked with Bob and mm-hmm. Colin Quinn on these on the road a couple of times, and it's a great show, but it is. it's another another reason to see this is because you're going to... It's entertaining in a morbid way. To see Colin working on one of Levy's shows is kind of like when Joe Lewis was forced to wrestle. Oh, no, yeah. he loves it. At I the mean, end of his career. The, you know? the new lineup is uh, me, Florentine, Nick, and Colin. And, oh. and we're selling great. When you're Since Audie doesn't call us anymore. So when we, you're we around Florentine, thing. do you see him with women or is he still No, he, not... he just talks about Robin. Oh, please. Does he really? Is no, he still no, mention Robin? No, he says that, you know, he's talking, you get along great, and that's great. You know, yeah. a breakup's yeah. a breakup, right? right? And what the fuck? You should have banged me when I told you. <laughs> you You'd still be with her. Yeah. Listen, you can't read. That's true, and you can't understand what you read. That's even more true. But you are a Isn't funny guy. Isn't it good yeah. if you can't read that you don't understand what you read? Yeah. That's great. You can make up excuses. Thanks. Yeah, you can make up anything you want. Exactly. Hey, by the way, don't miss Bob on Miserable Men. I should mention that on Sunday nights at seven o'clock he on Howard One Hundred. Every Sunday, I love it's that show. It's a great show. It is. You guys do a good job. And, Bob, I would call you for gigs. I mean, I love paying an opener 5Gs. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Bob, you for making us all feel smart today. <laughs> thank I really you. And if any time you guys want to feel good Can about I, yourself, I'll be back. King of Old Grammar, do you want to say something? Can I uh, throw a plug out there real quick? Do King of Old Grammar has a plug? Well, not for myself. He'll be uh, at the treehouse with me this Saturday. Giving you what a reading now? test. <laughs> what is it, King? Um, I brought uh, some cookies down. From uh, friends of mine that own a cookie company up in uh, Saratoga, uh, Park, 19, Park 19 cookiescom They're really good. Artie, you should try them out. They, they look fantastic. Thank mm-hmm. you. I saw them out. Park19.com? Park19cookies.com. Park19cookies.com. Artie will try them out. I'm, I'm sure that he will, he will eat every one. <laughs> that, and if I there. fall asleep by, after the third cookie, I'll take Bob's five-hour energy, and I'll there you go. get wow. enough energy to Man. eat the last two. What is it, Dan? Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, I sort of feel bo- bad for Bob. I mean, I know he brings it upon himself, but I mean, I, I don't know how a man that can't read can, can't read like this can survive in the world uh, like today. So it's sort of amazing at the same time. Well, listen, he has a skill. He's a yeah. funny guy. He, uh, despite the fact that he can't read, he's managed his stand-up career, which is very funny. And so. as yeah. King of Old Grammar said, he's street smart. If you yeah. saw his stand-up, you'd think he was at a fifth-grade reading level. <laughs> You want to know, everyone says Bob's street smart, but I think if you gave him a, a comprehension of street smarts, he'd probably be third grade level. No, I'd Just I'd to reiterate fit. to the kids out there, though, yeah. 
It's a once in a lifetime thing to have something like that happen. I think, right? You, right. you stay need to know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I tell kids. And Bob is missing out a lot <laughs> in his life. Like when you read kids. the paper, it's fun to comprehend it. Well, I know I can yeah. read the sports. I, I can kind he of. Doesn't read the paper. Do you kind of understand the yeah, sports? Yeah, yeah, a I little get. bit. You know what's going on with A Rod and all that. Kind yeah, of? I read yeah. it. I, I right. get the guy delivering. Nobody reads right. it. Like it's entire generation. Well, Bob is older, but uh, of, like, Bob is nobody older? reads. The, nobody reads the newspaper. Barely one. It's true. Like guys like Teddy and JD, I'm on the road with them, and I go pick me up a newspaper. Paper, and I go, don't you guys ever read the paper? They're like, no. <laughs> they play video games. Like, yeah. Teddy plays video yeah. games. <laughs> a lot you know, of gay you guys. Know what's a lot of gay guys. <laughs> but you, know what, you know what's amazing? Uh, I was just speaking of newspapers. I was reading that Cablevision, of course, bought Newsday, which is a newspaper on Long Island. It is the most successful newspaper. When I was a kid, we'd get Newsday. Yeah. This newspaper was so thick with ads, you couldn't even find any news. Yeah, the, it was hard to find the news. It was just all ads. It well, sucks. it says here today in the paper that Newsday is doing so badly that Cablevision doesn't even know what to do with it. Wow. And I can't believe this. That was a license to print money, that thing. If you own Newsday, you were going to be a billionaire. That was the end of it. There's no competition. It's the only paper. Long Island's the 11th largest market in the United States. Why are States. you screaming? Well, because Bob doesn't understand the thing I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just looking at him. I'm like, what the fuck? All right, never mind. Oh, were you checking the light? Well, good for you. <laughs> King of all grammar, thank you. Thank you. And Reverend Bob Levy, continued success. Really? Thank you. And kill, kills and comedy on the road on Howard TV. Oh, it's, hey, by uh, the way, i got to mention uh, that. There was a great series of Killers of Comedy on the Road on Howard TV, several episodes. I think it's like a, like a lot of episodes. Yeah, right? there's yeah, three right now, and there'll be right. one uh, each week coming. And it's airing on Howard TV exclusively. It features behind-the-scenes antics, the comedians as they travel across the country. See Bob Levy handle Beetlejuice. You know, that's a whole show in itself. Yeah. The way they have to uh, get him around. Shuley's on there, Yucko. Uh, Gary the Retard is on there, Iron Sheik. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, see Colin Quinn weeping. No, <laughs> that's why I'm with Colin. You, you will never get an inside look at that. We nah. even had an outside company do this whole piece, yeah. And it's pretty spectacular. So that's just another thing on Howard TV. Yeah. All right, thanks, boys. So, Bob, you uh, you read on the level of a sixth grader, yeah, and you have the comprehension of a third grader. Yeah, that's right, baby. And you are excited, aren't you? Yeah, that's why I get the young <laughs> chicks, you know what I mean? He's living the life. I am living the life. Look. My wife's 37. She looks like she's 29. You're, you're not disappointed at all? I am not disappointed. I have a great life. Why would I just be disappointed in words? Words. Words are for pussies. I make a living. I got a nice house. I got a jacuzzi, okay? You know? What, where did reading get me? Reading got me nothing, all right? I got everything on my own. Not reading. Not books. Me. Basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a word list. Mm -hmm. I just want you to read down the word list read out it. loud. Okay. All right. Um, and that's it. So start on the left, left-hand column, 1 through 20, mm -hmm. right-hand column, 1 through 20, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. Sounds easy enough. All right, when you're ready. Air, cold, deer, drink, every, food, hold, learn, move, number, often, several, start, such, table, today. Try, wash, wrong, yellow, absurd, affairs, appeal, appeal, association, cavity, complicated, crucial, crucial, deliberatory, deliberate, the deliberate, the deliberatory, you know, you did it on purpose, deliberatory, you know. What is it? Deliberate. Deliberty. Deliberty? Deliberty. You did it on purpose. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty? No, 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 no. This deli deliberate. Uh, despite. Ridiculous. Routine. Spe specific. Strenuous. Oof. What's that? My head hurts. Comprehend. Delegated. De de delegate ah, fuck it. Ritual. Ritual. Ritual a uh, ritual. A ritual, like it's a ritual, you know, we do it all the time. It's a ritual. Incredulous. Intricate. In 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 intrite. Intricate. In, in, Sorry, it intricate. No. Intricate. Intricate, and 
Uh, and try, could say, fuck it. Knock, knock your no, knock your normal. Knock your normal. What the fuck is that? Reluctant, re reluctantly, reluctantly. Like, I don't want to do that. Shiftless, tactful, tangible, sort of like bangable, exaggerated, ex, ethnic, ethnic, ec ethnic, ethnic, like, you know, like, you know, ethnic, like, uh, uh, the I'm white, somebody's black, ethnic. Lethargic. Lethargic. When you, you, you're lazy, you're lethargic. Rever, reverie? Rever, rever, reverie? Reverie. Simu, uh, simultaneous. Sim, sim, simultaneous. When, it happens at the same time. Simul, uh, It happens. You know that word happens at the same time. Simultaneous time. Simul. Yeah. Sus. 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 Tense. Sus. Sus. Tenses. Taunt. Valiant. Monotonous. Periphery. Piano. P. Pianisismo. P. Redesverus. Rent a fuck. Redesverus. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. I'm getting a little. Uh, re. Repartriate. Sharp no. Temer, temerity. A po, a whole, a poultry, a po, upholstery, <laughs> upholstery, like stuff in your uh, yeah. Whiz end, whiz ended. When you're done pissing. When you're done <laughs> <laughs> blast, blast for for me, blast, <laughs> blast for me. Blast, no, blast, blast for me. You know, it's like blast for, uh, fucking blast for, blast for me. Well, you know what I mean. I know the fucking word. Bot, botatious. Botatious. Clandestine. Plan, plans. Clandy. Clandestine. Face, facetious. Face, 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 facious. Feudalism, garrulous, irony, that's what this is, <laughs> synopsis, veranda, veranda, you know, it's like I can see the veranda, that may not be the right word, you but, got it. okay, <laughs> I'm stupid, god damn it, you know, what am I going to do, you know, I didn't do much school, I didn't, you know what I mean? I'm street smart. If I should have done this shit in the street, I would have done better. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, like retarded. I'm going to, this is going to, this is going to be like, forget it. Why don't they have a thing that just kicks me in the balls when I walk in the <laughs> studio? Why, why, why can't you just make it easier for me? All right, can I take, can I, can I go to the bathroom? All right, we got time, Sal? Sal, I got a pass. I can't even open a door. This is ridiculous. I love you, Richie Wilson. The Howard Stern Show is on vacation. But don't worry, we'll return next week with all new serious shows. So for now, enjoy this new episode. Good, how you doing? Well, oh, this early in the morning, I'm, I'm functioning. I, I urinated this morning, I'm happy it didn't burn. Good, Life good. is great, that's it. That's, that's the end of the that's story. That's for. That's, that's the end of the story. My leg's working, go to the bathroom, doesn't burn. Hey, life's great.
So it sounds like everything's good. Are you excited to be back? Yeah, I'm always excited to be back. 20-some years of doing this, and I'm so excited to do it. Now you're here for your uh, your final comedy tour, right? Maybe. It may be. If it maybe. wears me out, if it wears me out, it's going to be the final one. But so I'm, you're going to test in the waters? Yeah, well, what I'm doing is that, you know, the country's, you know, going to, you know, we're going to the dumper. People are depressed, so they need the laughter. The last time I did a grand tour was after 9-11. I went out on 9-14, stayed out over a year. So that's what I'm doing again, make people laugh. That's simple. All right, cool. All right, man, we'll see you in there. All right, see you in there. All right, David Brenner's here, old friend of the show, comedian. Funny dude. Always stuck up for me. He should have been the host of The Tonight Show. Something went wrong, though. I don't know what happened. What happened to you? You were so close to being you, you Johnny Carson. Yeah. How many times did you fill in for Johnny? Uh, about seventy five, something 75 like that. Seventy five times yeah. and it looked like it was the, the lock was in, it was gonna be your job. <clears throat> it, I was up there for it, but it, it, I and was you fucked it up. What no, happened? I didn't fuck it up. I got involved in a custody battle. I wasn't allowed to work mm. more than fifty nights a year. Why? Because it's against the law. You become an absentee father, you lose your oh. kid. You What's know the whole story. You didn't, you want, be, the, you you didn't want the Tonight Show more than your kid? No, I, I wanted the kid to be free. That's why I didn't I took more my than name the Tonight Show. Yeah, and I took my name off the uh, list. Oh, it's insane. Yeah, it's nuts. Don't you think your son would have been a lot prouder of you if you? He'd were be a lot richer, tonight? that's for that's sure. Right? Yeah. I, I, all right. Hey, I fucked up, man. What can I tell you? Do you have regrets? No, I didn't. <laughs> would you like to be the host of the Tonight Show? Sure, in a second. You think Jay Leno's doing a good job? He's doing all right. Nothing great. No, he's never had me on. Oh, he won't have you on. Why? No, I, I don't know. I, you know, and we're friends. I mean, you well, know, I'm friendly really with friends? the guy. I mean, the guy well, well, I'm young. friendly with the guy. I run in him. I go to NBC for other things. I it's see him. We talk. You're not uh, good enough for you. You host the goddamn thing. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Why don't you know these <laughs> things? Well, I, what am I going to do? If I know, if I know the reason, hey, you know, he, if I know the reason, is that going to change anything? You ever run into him? Do you ever see him? I see him. Yeah, he, he go, go Jay. What's he the deal? even put. He even gave me a, a blurb for my uh, last book. Yeah, really, very nice thing. Yeah, but did you ever say to him, Jay, why can't I be on your show? Well, we, yeah, I talked to him. He's, you know, well, you know, I got to ask the staff, you know, and <laughs> find out from the staff what to no, do. No, he yeah. doesn't. I said, wait a minute. I have my own show. You don't have to ask the staff. Right. You're the boss. Right. I mean, do, look, if I, if I wanted to come on your show, would you ever say to me, well, you know, I got to talk to Gary no, and the guys? I mean, and, no. Yeah. Yeah. But no. I don't want to talk about this shit. It's, you know, this is history. It's upsetting me. Yeah, well, it upset me then. So listen, yeah. so, so uh, you're here to admit that you... I mean, admit. What do you mean admit? admit? What does this admit? Yeah, go ahead. You, I mean, you're making it like no one knew you were lying about your well, age. Wait a minute. Everyone, the, the, everyone wait. here knew you were lying about wait, your age. you knew because you had some kind of proof and you were no, generous not to do it? No, I knew you were. All right, but you, not by looking at me. an outrageous wait, lie. Howard, by looking at David. me, what would you say by looking at me? No, 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 no. no How old you are, you mean? Yeah, I mean, don't do not do a joke. No, I would say you're about... I don't know. I don't want to be... What? <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh, yeah, no, strong. Right? By the way, Thin. next week Gilbert Gottfried's coming on here to admit that he's Jewish, but uh, and short. All right, no, 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 Robin. Short. We always knew David was lying about his of age, course. right? We yeah, knew that. Well, but yeah, I had. Oh, you want to know why? Well, how old Wait do you think he looks right now? Seriously, Robin. Be serious. Don't, no, don't lie. Don't, no, don't go for a joke. <laughs> Don't go for it. Yeah. Don't go for it. He's thin. Okay. He's, he looks right. good. Yeah, he always looked good. He right. always kept himself in shape. Right, right. And I would say... Yeah. Now, be serious. Let's say 64. Yeah. 64, yeah. 65, okay. somewhere there. That's it. In there. Now, think about that. 64. Remember that number. All right. When I was doing in, 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 at college concerts, I started comedy 40 years ago, 1969. Right. In fact, so, a lot of people don't know this. David... You know, you know him from the Tonight Show. You know him when he had his, you know, he, he comedy. But he was a su successful television producer for Merv Griffin. Is that right? Not yeah. No, not Griffin. Who was it for? I, I was a. I, I wrote, produced, and doc did documentaries for NBC, CBS. I was the head of documentaries for Westinghouse. Yeah, I mean, he had Metro a media. career before yeah. he started comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so he didn't get into comedy as a young. No, man. no. But I looked young. I looked like right. I was twenty-one right. when I went. So yeah. now. I'm doing college concerts. I'm making a lot of money. I was the, like the number one comedian on college campuses. And you don't want people to know you're an no, older guy. I don't care. You want to be a young. Wait, no, hip my manager. Came, my manager comes to me. He says, we're, we're, "There's a rumor going around about you, and we're losing dates on the, in the colleges." I said, "What's?" They said that you're over thirty. I said, "So what's wrong with that?" I never said I wasn't. Right. He said, "Well, the, you know how it's like the Abby Hoffman. Don't trust anyone over, over 30. thirty. Right. So I said, "Well, back well, then, all the hippies, all the yeah, assholes right. in my Didn't generation. Yeah, we're anybody, all yeah. over thirty. Right. So he said, "We got to, we got to say you're younger." I said, well, "Well, how much younger?" He says, "I don't know. You pick it, but you got to be young. You got to be in your twenties." <laughs> I was at that time. Ready? I was at that time thirty-three years old. Right. 
So this is what a schmuck I am. So you normally you're going to really do a chop job. You do 10 years. Right. So I do just to be different. Like I set my alarm at 7:02, not seven in the morning. Right. You know, I, I, I eight sixteen. I, I everyone else is doing it on the quarter hours. Right. I don't want to be like everyone else. I've always been this way. So I decide to chop it nine years. It made <laughs> sense, right? Now I chop it nine years. Now when I had a lie, I had to do math. Right. You, you know, like someone say, when did when did you do your first Tonight Show? How old were you? Right. Well, I I know I was 35. So one lie feeds <laughs> so into another lie. It got. And then doctors, wait, doctors don't know how old I am. So I would, you would lie to a doctor. I had to lie to everyone, Howard. <laughs> it's going to come but out. Wait, are you being honest here? Uh, well, you, listen, now I'm no being one, honest. No you one don't can believe tell me. you yeah. to change your age. You were vain, and you no, wanted to. No, that be... isn't it. I and then I wanted to go back after all the colleges. And everything, I said, you know what? I'm going to go back. This is ridiculous. Right. But by that time. I had everybody covered. I had it covered because it couldn't leak out. That would but be worse. But did people who went to high school with you say, hey, wait a second. No, I went to high school no, with they did. I'm they, 87 look, years old. No, they, right. were, they were good guys. I mean, right. one of them made one joke. That someone interviewed him. He said, no, I remember we were, we were about 12, 10 years old, something like that. And we were standing on the street corner, hanging out. And this little baby crawled up. And he was very funny <laughs> with a big nose. And right. It was a funny joke. But did you lie to the women you dated as well? Yes, they I lied to everyone. 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 You lived a lie. I lived a m massive lie. Lie. Right, nine but, years. But going to doctors, and I would say this after I got a, a physical, I'd say to the doctor, tell, he'd say, hey, you're in great shape. Boy, heart, lungs, everything, boy, every, great shape, great, wonderful shape. I'd say, well, how about like in, I don't know, like nine years from now, will, will I be in, the, you know, how will I be then? If I had all this now, what you're showing me, nine years from now, he said, you won't be in this good a shape nine years from now. <laughs> so you what, know what so, I mean? So, 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 so wait a <clears> second. <throat> yeah. So it gets back to the question, how old are you? All right, you want you know, the Can truth? You say Do it? you feel funny saying well, it? I, I'm ready to vomit, but I don't feel funny. <laughs> all right, I, no, I, I will tell you exactly. Okay, okay. You, all right. No I mean, jokes. I used to do. People would try to trap me. I'd say, "Well, I'm exactly nine months older than my teeth." You know, right. that stupid joke thing. Right. Okay, I hear the drum roll. <laughs> this is great. I will be the next birthday. Which is very close yeah. to now. I'm, I'm, He's fucking, having, I'm having a fucking it. fit. If you want to know the truth, Howard, you and I have been through. Are you? You have gotten me in so many corners in, did you in my life. To, did you start huh? to believe your age? Like now? Do you, yes. Yeah. And I'm, I, now, but what happened is my real age. I got depressed thinking about my real age. Of let course. alone, the, you know, the lie. I mean, the lie got depressing. <laughs> right. When I was lying, like a, when I was lying, when the I was real, like 55, yeah. when I was really 55 and I was saying, you know, I was a, a 40, whatever, for four, you know, 46, right. 46 was starting to bother me. As the years went by, by the time I was really like 60, oh my God, and I was saying I was 51. Well, how 51 old are you? All right. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's, Tomorrow's your, your birthday. birthday. Yeah, but I don't celebrate my birthday. I, right. I, that's, I never did. But tomorrow, I'm going to be... Uh, give, me, give me a chance. I'm going to be um, 73. You're oh, kidding! Man. Oh, my God. You know, you could pass for 71. Really? Wow. I, know, I know. In the morning. And that's in the morning, Howard. 73? Yeah, I'm going to be... Seven, my uh, let me, God, David. This. I was born, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, 30, I was afraid 70, you were going to yeah. see like 87. No, 73. <laughs> hey, that's, look, that's, now, 73. We need to call you Mr. David. You're a senior. You said 64. You, you still said, get it up? Wait, wait, you, you, oh, yeah. But you both said 64. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Because yeah. that's, that's the lie age. Right. Right. So I looked at, no one challenged me. But then I even got, I even got phony ID. So I got phony. I got it on me. I still carry it. Wow! You really went. No, I'll show away. you my ID. I'll show. Yeah, I went You're all kidding. the way. But so we no. always knew you were lying. Well, well, yeah, you know but, how but we that's knew. A... It was because David's age didn't change while everybody else's did. Yeah, yeah I well, kept I, getting older. I, and David was I still kept, a young comedian. I kept, no, I kept. Yeah. <laughs> now I mean, here, it's unbelievable. This is now this. This worked. 9-11 screwed this up, Careful, okay? You can break a bone. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait. All right, don't do old jokes. Jesus, oh, you yeah. want to start doing old jokes, you know? Yeah, you know this, this don't do old this, jokes you're in your 60s. Now, now, this says you were born in 1995. You're like 13 no, years 94, old. Look at your eyes. 1945 uh, is my fake year. Yeah. Now, you see it? It's an yeah. ID. Now, I go to the airport. First of all, it's so funny. Good. Yeah, it's, ID. read what it like, says. Read what it says on the back. Drive. The identity card, card is solely used for your personal use. Carry your card at all times. Do not discard without first mutilating or otherwise rendering this card unseeable. So, unusable. It's this not is, a driver's license. No, no, no it's look, nothing. Look, Who would look, show this? Look at the title of it. 
Identification card. Identification <laughs> card. So now, so now I'm in an airport one time, and I have a photostat of my of my uh, uh, b b passport. Right. So I go up, and they say we don't accept photostats. This is after 9/11. Yeah. So I said, I, be, I always use photostats. They yeah. said, we don't accept it. I don't have any other ID. So they said, do you have any other ID? You don't drive? Uh, no, yeah, but I didn't have it with me. I'm ah. not driving. So I, I said, uh, yes, I do. And I take this out. <laughs> and I get through card. security. Wow. It cost me $3 <laughs> on 6th <laughs> Avenue. Wow. <laughs> there, there are a few Lebanese guys who sell these. Anything you want, CIA, FBI, it's a joke. Yeah. It, looks, it looks actually official in a weird I got way. Into, I, hey, I got into all the radio and TV stations that have security. I got into the, the government building here in New York with that. Wow. So what do you, hey, did you marry that broad, the Thai Babylonia? No, t the broad. Yeah. No, Todd Babylonia and I are engaged, and she knows my real age. <laughs> and she knows my real age. What's her so story? So you're engaged. You're huh? getting married again. That doesn't mean anything. Oh. Yeah. Now, I don't want to get divorced a million times. Not, Not a million. million. How many times? 480,000. No, come on. Why How do many you times? exaggerate? No, what, about three times three already? Three times. Yeah. Twice when I was in my early, real early 20s. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't know you as a married man. And then that other brother. I didn't know me as a married man. <laughs> he, uh, you, you know how I he knew He married my... a really hot chick, oh, but he said gorgeous. he woke up a year later and she was just totally different than yeah, the girl a stranger. Met. A stranger. A stranger. Yeah, no, a stranger. She looked the same. Everything. Beautiful. She was a complete but... stranger. How many kids did you when have? We, had tw we were together 12 and a half years and had two kids. Yeah. And how old are those kids now? The truth? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I say, I say one year, one too? year, four years, and six. But the truth is, Cole, who you know, yeah. when I brought him in as a little boy when he was two years old, when he used to come in. Yeah, he's like 40 now. He's 26 years old, wow. right. six, five. Right. And then Slade is 13, and Wyatt's 10. Wow. I give him my ID because I'm going to a government building in Washington. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you make sure you Thanks. get in? I, I'll get in with this. So so uh, now that you're 71, are you going to retire? So, no. I'm going I'm out. 73. On, no, I'm actually going out on a major tour. I'm serious now. Yeah. I haven't been out on a, on a grand tour in, until when 9-11 happened. I went out on 9-14. Are you going out on tour because you're out of money? Because no, you the said country's me, you, out of money. No, you said you spend everything you yeah, make. Yeah, but, but that's Have okay. Have you stopped that? Yeah. No, I won't stop that. Why should I stop that? He says when he dies, he'll be penniless. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the idea. Now, I'm going out. I'm going out on a tour because of the recession or mm -hmm. depression, according to how you want to look at it, realistically or not. And it's time for people to laugh, like it was after 9-11. And I'm starting it in Philadelphia, May 15th and 16th, at, at the uh, Prince uh, Music Theater. And I'm going to go all over the country, maybe does, for a year. Does Thai Babylonia have money? Yeah, Thai's all right. What, I mean, what, 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 like, well, she's a skater, right? Yeah, she what was a skater. Well, a skater. A she, what does she do? Greatest pair skater ever with Ty skater. and Ty and Randy. Right. And so she's got to have a lot of dough. Only world champion we ever had against the Russians. You know the world skating. She's a five-time national champion. She, does she still skate at all? Well, what she does now? No, no, no. She not anymore. Well, she she does little seminars with the kids, but mm -hmm. what she really does, she has a clothing company selling her own line of uh, skating clothes. She has that. She uh, writes for uh, a skating magazine. Man, you're satisfied yeah. sexually. Oh, she's fabulous. Oh, really? my God. What is oh, fabulous to you in bed? Seriously, you've been with a lot of beautiful women. I'll tell you women. what fabulous is to, uh, uh, with me. Yeah, what is fabulous? When you have your orgasm, yeah. you don't feel like beating the shit out of her. That's <laughs> fabulous. That's fabulous. Is that, but is that really huh? fabulous? Like, what is fabulous sex to a, to, to a man like yourself? Where, if, when you think about what you just did, you can't think of one more thing you wanted to do. You mean because she does a lot of things in bed to you? Not in bed. She's just so sexy and beautiful, and we're right. just compatible. You know, it's it's two, oh, two never squirrels heard chasing like a nut. Wow. Oh yeah. Well, look, I've, I've. Would she ever pretend to be other women? Would she ever put on outfits? Like a nun, like a nun thing. A nun. Do you need any of that? A rabbi, you know, we have a what do you need sexually? Hasidic Jew. What makes you happy? Jew. I need a Jew. Do you need, a <laughs> do, you need a, do you need to get uh, licked? Uh, no, yeah, what do I need sexually? Yeah, yeah. I, I need whatever's on the menu. It's one of these things. I'll take every appetizer, entree, dessert. I'll Anal? take it all. You like that? What? I don't like anyone touching me in the back. No, no. I mean, you putting it in the anus. I, well, I, I don't say. I, I, you know, I'm not a proctologist, a human proctologist. <laughs> but you but hey, it, look, if an ass comes ties, along, I'm not going to turn ties, it down. You, like I, you know, I walk into a place and there's an ass there. I, hey, you'll you know. give Thai Babylonia anal? I didn't say I give Thai Babylonia. I'm not going to say that. Say no, it, Howard. No, Howard, you always. Now you got a do new you trap. Do that? You're done with my age. Now you're going to fuck up my sex life. <laughs> no, no, you no, know, no. this has been going on 25 years. Thai Babylonia blow you. Uh, who said she blew me? Do, do you need that? Do I need it? Yeah. I don't need it. I need food, what but I need? sure as hell would like, like it. You like insertion with a woman, mostly? In, you I like, to, I, I like everything. I like taking my pants off. Right. I like everything about it. There's nothing. Look, I have At been, 73, you get you, it up just fine. You, you know, yeah, absolutely. How often you, do you have sex with Thai Babylonia? Every night I'm with her. Like really? I do with others, yeah. Seriously. 
Uh, yeah, of Every course. night you're with Ty yeah, Babylon. Yeah. That's Once a in lot. a great while. No, honestly. Once in a How great many, while. Are you away a lot? A whale? Do you, no. No. Are, you, are you away a lot? <laughs> like, in other words, are you with her every night of the no, week? No, I'm away a lot, but, you know, sometimes we're, we're, we're together a month or whatever it is. I and mean, every night you're with yeah. her? Yeah, yeah. What the, wow. what the, the culmination of a great relationship. I don't know if I can That's believe That's a capper. That. I swear to you. That's a capper. Once in a while, you know, we might be out real late, and that's the kind of thing. Or, or, or my right. back goes, if my back goes out, I have a little bit of trouble. Right. You know? You with that back. <laughs> well, then I do position 27. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that position where you hang no from kidding. your ankles. Yeah. Well... Look, here, my mother, when I was a kid, nine, nine, ten years old, you know, everyone has a dipic. That's Yiddish for a monster inside of you. Right. Some people, it's going to be drugs. You know, some people lazy. Whatever it is, they're going to ruin their life. There's a dipic. Mm -hmm. You got this monster. So it goes back Yours to biblical days. Mine was women. She said that when I was a little boy because the little girls were always coming around. Where's David? Oh, he's at work, you know, when I was a kid. You know, I started working when I was eight and a half. You know. He's at work, you know, and they come up to the supermarket and, and wave through the window and all that stuff. So I've always loved this guy, I've loved he, women. He would walk down the street and pick up the hottest women oh, I've ever seen. Yeah, crazy. always. Yeah. The street was number one. Then, then if you want a, a, higher, a higher breed, you go to the library. That was good. The museum, yeah. Metropolitan, was great. All the libraries in town were all great. Right. Man, you got laid a lot. Yeah. You know, and I can't believe you banged Ty Babylonia every single night that you're with her. Boy, she must be good in bed then. Well, no, she's bad. I'm she's just an I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a masochist. I'm going I'm <laughs> to suffer. What makes a woman good in bed? That's what I'm trying to find well, out. Well, you're in bed. You, look, you've got I'm a gorgeous you, wife though. now. Yeah, but what do you, well, what what is, what's your definition? Well, I'm asking yours. Oh, you're asking mine? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, well, that says your show. You're the interviewer. Oh, I forgot I that mean, I'm shit. the interviewer. I forgot that. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. What is the, what, what, what makes a woman good in bed? What may, uh, to me, what makes a woman good in bed is that Everything is compatible. It's like one of those days where everything you do turns out right. You, you go back and you think, well, you know, if I would have stayed longer in this place or if I would have talked to this guy, you know, nothing. You can't think of how you could have improved the day. Do you still perform... Um um, what do you call that? I thought Before I came here to talk about my age. You know, no, age. He got off of that real well, fast. I'll get to he that. got off my tour real fast. Do you still now he's, get back he's to banging it. me on sex again. <laughs> he's you? Been, you know, the first time I did his show, and he was playing fucking music for an hour. Right. You got like two words in, and then mu music. He would right away. So how much how much sex you getting now? And then you know, and now we have the Beatles. <laughs> you know, this is when the beginning. But let me, it, all let me, these but, years later, he doesn't but, fucking no, no, stop. No, I want to ask you. Why? Something. Yes, I'm go ahead, Howard. I'm not busting your balls. I'm really serious. Yeah. Because you've had this wealth of experience, more than yeah. most men, yeah. I'm saying How to you. How many women would you say you've had, as a matter of fact? Well, I said that the last time I was on the show, he cornered me. How, How many? I, I guess your number? I guessed over, a little over 2,000, I guess. <laughs> All right, you got some experience. <laughs> so now I want to know. At the that end, was one night. <laughs> then the other night, you, you, you got, got one, bang, you bang, got, bang. Why? You why? admitted your age. Why? You got one foot in the grave. It's time <laughs> now. But, you know, it's, it's the right foot. Right. It's not the wrong foot in it's the grave. It's time to discuss this. Why is it time now? It's been this time for the will last 25 years. Will you still perform foreplay on Thai Babylonia? In other words, yeah, will you, 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 have will, to, you will lick no. a vagina, you will do everything. You, you must have foreplay. You yeah. always must have foreplay. What do you mean you must have? Because it's like, just right, you just can't I'm, climb on no, top. Right. It's like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to take a shower, and you don't take your clothes off. No, you no, walk no, in the no. shower. I mean, is, you, you got, there are things you got to do. Some women don't require a lot of foreplay. It, look, if they're saying that, they're they're bullshitting. Really? But yeah, because the women they want to get the whole mood going. You got to be. You got to be romantic. You got to be right? romantic. You got to. You got to satisfy the woman. You yeah. must satisfy the woman first before you get satisfied. It's only fair. It's right. And you know, it, guys don't do that. They, I'm, I'm only bam, bam, bam. Yeah, and, but I'm dwelling on this because I'm curious. I really am. <laughs> How long do you last? Right. Now, when you when you go inside Thai Babylonia, it's a very sexy, attractive woman. How long can you keep it in there without coming? I I can stay in you know, long. I mean, really? Yeah. Always were you like that? Yeah, I think of my grandmother on the toilet, and I do you really down. have to do <laughs> something like that? Do you have to think about gross no, things? No, no. What I had to do is I realized it's getting you know. And I had to slow, slow it down. down. Yeah, because it's going to go. And I don't want to pop yet. I'm but you've been, with, but you've been with women who are so beautiful yeah, your right, whole life. Yeah. It's very right. hard to hold back. I it never is. can hold back. It is hard to I hold back. I go in and it but feels good. No, no, you've got to put it in your head. You've got to put it in your head. You do. You're selfish. Yeah. I'm now seeing that. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not You're selfish. selfish. I You're want to be a good lover. You're thinking about yourself. Wow. Like David you know. said, you got to think about her. Oh, Ty, no, let me tell you something. He, have... he must. He must. <laughs> his, wife is, able... his wife is so in love with him and so dedicated to him. And it isn't because, uh, you know, it's everything that makes him him. Yeah. And that includes his sex life. So he's bullshitting. So, no, no, no. So can what? you go like three or four minutes and hold Three or out? four minutes? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Howard. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What are you saying? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not you a... Like 15, 20 minutes? 
What are you talking about, Howard? What are you saying? I'm not. What? I can go. I can keep going. Wow. Yeah. Always. Well, I tell you, this is what you're supposed to do. If I hold out three minutes, it's a miracle. I mean, I don't believe the, you. Oh, it's come true. On. Yes, Beth. Do you, Sometimes you, I hold out like a minute. Oh, stop! And it feels good to me. There's some I'm monkey, heterosexual. There's so, some sorry. monkeys, monkeys who who, who who have an orgasm. They come in four seconds. Wow. Some monkeys. Me too. You're a monkey. I've done that with women. You're a monkey. I've done that. I've been with beautiful women who... Four seconds. Four seconds. Not even one stroke and I come. Uh, I can't help it. It feels oh good. You know, sometimes you, right before you get your pants off when you're, oh when you're a teenager. No, right. When you're a teenager and you're, you're, you're dry humping wow. in the back of a car and now you're going to get it and it's too late. You, you know what I mean? You just ruined your pants. You mean you know you're, you're doing you know? it and huh? then you just slow down. Now, yeah, slow down and you know, yeah, right. Change the position, whatever wow. it is. You just you keep it going. If like a woman a, goes on all fours with me that's it uh, that's it i can't hold back <laughs> even just the thought of it well you know <laughs> she's crazy he just right. it's the great yeah, yeah right he right. just he I mean, just came i'm the opposite of gay whatever he, that even, is yeah even if it's a woman's like a cleaning lady in the buildings at night <laughs> and they're scrubbing <laughs> the floor scrubbing. you see that i bet you i bet you wet your pants in what position right. do you have the least control in other words, uh, well, you, you know, I, I I don't particularly like a woman on top of me. I I don't I'm a I don't control. Like I like no, I control. Like I don't I don't like that. I mean, yeah, it isn't like. I mean, it's better than you know having a bad apple. But wow. you know, it's not, and yeah. you're faithful to Thai Babylonian. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, look at see, you. I'm wild. See, that's the thing about me. I I'm I've always been wild. You know that. Howard. Yeah, I know. But you have when I settle down with someone, right? I I you're really I, I, yeah I do. I think it's you, you know. You never it's brought other women in. You never had uh, two women at the same time. Well, not with the, with the you not know, with no, but but yeah, I've, I've been. What about that hot piece of ass uh, that I was in love with? The one that oh uh, yeah, right, that yeah. One that was on your makeup, yeah, 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 yeah. She's I saw her about five years ago. Oh, yeah? She, she has look? not changed a bit. Why wow. the hell did you break I, up? I know she was looking to you know you know make she it married the to you, ring, but yeah. she was hot. Yeah, no, you know, we had we had we had some man. problems there, but but yeah, she was great. I mean, she look, guy, I man. I am I am a fan. He's a coxman, this guy. I'm a fan of women. Yeah. I love women. I have always loved them. What about that the means ex- I respect them. They're what about different. the most recent ex-wife? You communicating with her? You talked to her well, about he the kids? Okay, you. here's a, here's a, here's a. And, 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 we thank God for email. Yeah. Otherwise, there would be nothing said between us. Oh, it's amazing. It. It no, bad, I'm serious. Huh? Oh, it got that bad. Yeah. What? You, you well, so she, she took me. She took me. Yeah, she took me to uh, to court twice to win custody. <laughs> take the kid to Jeez. California. Same thing. I've been four four co- custody uh, uh, battles. These women don't want you around the kids. Yeah, you think I was a bad guy, but yeah, my kids nice love guy. me. My yeah. kids love me, man. I'm I'm crazy. I'm, I'm you know I'm not the greatest father. Like I go to school, I go to a play. Right. All right. My my this is when my little boy was about. He's ten now, so he's about seven. So I go to the play. It was that thing with the yellow brick road. I hate that shit. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I hate all that play. So I go. I mean, I never. I go, and I'm sitting there, and it was like a Tuesday, and I'm sitting there, and the place is crowded, and and I'm bored out of my mind, right. and I'm looking at the wizard. The kid, he has his home, his, combs his hair straight over his forehead, and he has a little square mustache under his nose. So I look at him, I turn to the guy next to me, I don't know him. Some father, I say to him, doesn't a wizard look like Adolf Hitler? <laughs> and, and the guy turns to me, Howard, and he goes, that's my son. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that a trap? Wow. Yeah. So, but look how I recovered. I said, am I the first one to tell you your son looks like Adolf Hitler? So he laughed. And he turned to his wife and says, look, he looks like Adolf Hitler. I went, oh, boy. Now, after all that, I get home after all that, and I say, and, and my kid was one of those urchins or elves or whatever the hell Munchkins. they are. Munchkins. Yeah, Munchkin. So he was one of the Munchkin. Well, they all wear the same hat. They all, you know, I couldn't, which one's my you son? Can't spot him. No. Right. So, so Wyatt comes home. I say, Wyatt, you were great. You were great, and, and I, yeah, I know you're a munchkin. I couldn't like really pick it out, but all the munchkins were good, so I know you were good. Hmm. He says, Dad, that's the other class. Mine's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you went to the wrong I said, I'm not, I'm not fucking coming back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you I went to through someone else's play. Yeah, right, are you kidding? I went to someone else's it's play hard, with, with a different Adolf Hitler. Boy, all these women want to get the kid away from you. <clears throat> and so you go through a lot with all of this. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, out of the last 21 years... Uh, 21 years, I have been involved in 19 years of either being in family court, Jesus. I had five years in the Supreme Court here, uh, I, be in court, preparing to be in court, trying to avoid being in court. I have files, legal files, trunks filled. What so said? I don't know what happened, but don't forget, I'm one of the few men that won back then with Cole when right. he was like yeah, 12. I and that. I have now won 
three custody battles it costs and a lot men of money, don't though. win well it isn't the money i know how to handle i'm a pro when i could be a lawyer you say you win a custody battle you yeah. have full custody of your children no no what happened is i i we had a, a perfect split on the on the two boys now Middle perfect split get, 50 50 two right, weeks two i weeks. get she gets the first two weeks i get them the second two weeks every right, month right right she wanted to move to california right. I'm, we're in vegas she wanted to move to california take the kids right i said you can't take the kids right can't do it. Right. Not not so much that you know, I, don't, I don't want to go see the wizard again, yeah, but, but what, what, they what? need a father. Right. It isn't you, me. It isn't about me. Because yeah. I can, can get, get along. along. Right. I would be fine. Right. Believe me, I'd be fine. I believe you. You know, none of this, why, why, my ass daddy, or there's something right. stuck here. Right. In fact, it would be easier that. for you. It would be. Right. It would be much easier. Right. And I could get out of Vegas maybe or something. I'd go do something. Anyway, it's the kid. The right. Kid, the kid needs a now, father. Mix it in with what we were talking about before. Look at my age. I'm 73 years old, man. Right. I take great care of my. I work out every day. I right. walk three miles a day, 15 minute mile. I really, I eat right. I do it all. Right. How much longer am I going to be around and to deprive me, you know, one thing, but to deprive the kids of having a father when he hits that certain age, it isn't right. Yeah. That's selfish. I mean, how long do I have? Do they have a father? I mean, how many? If I'm it's lucky, selfish. you know. It's yeah, selfish. It is. Well, you know, I found out something. All, all my custody battles. Here's what I found out. Yeah, what a did you woman want? who will. Uh, jump in front of a train to save her child's life. That same woman will throw that same child in front of the train to spite a man. <gasps> right. right. I'm right. serious. Right. I, you know, oh I'm, the pre I'm the honorary president of Children's Rights Council. With all the, you, sh you hear stories that men tell. It, 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 it'll it make you throw up. It's such tragedies how they're kept from their kids. We always hear the woman's side of it. With so the your, bad wife, was, guy, so you your wife was forced to stay in Vegas. Well, what she did, she got married right. to a guy in California. Yeah. So she commutes. She's two weeks with her husband in California and two weeks in Vegas being a mother. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's, and pretty, that's I, commendable. Yeah. And Ty, yeah. And yeah. Well, there's no choice. Right. And, and Ty, who was in L.A., Ty uh, has moved. She's in Oregon now. She has her kid and she has the same thing. Well, Ty's in Oregon. Yeah. She went and she went. Oh, so to, no one do you, so, yeah, fuck yeah, no wonder. you see her. You're yeah, not living you're, with her. You're in Vegas. Well, she, I never I, we never lived together. We never that. could. Oh, no wonder it's working out. No, yeah. I, no. Come I on. would live with her in, in a second. Are you kidding? I always wanted to. She's one of the few women in my life I wanted to live with. We get along so So what good. do you do when she's not around for a couple of weeks? You beat I off? I go fucking nuts. You beat off? No, I, I, don't, I, know, I haven't beat off since I'm 14. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't know why. Well, I never had to. Now I really should. Yeah. Yeah, I Maybe really should. Maybe should take that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah take it up. Very good. Thank yeah. you, Howard. Mary Ann from Brooklyn. Say hi to David Brenner. You can go to oh David Brenner. Oh, my Brennan. God, David Brenner. I am a long-time huge fan. I saw you years ago, maybe 100 years ago. At Pip. I can't believe you're 73 years old. Thank and you. Howard, he's got Facebook, Howard. I just Facebooked you, David. I love you, and I'm coming on your tour. And when are you going to be in New York City? New York. I'm going to start in Philly. It's my birthplace. And I'm going to end it in New York because it's the birthplace of my career. I'm coming to see you. I okay. All right, Mary. You, All right, are thanks you still friends with uh, Joan Rivers? Or you guys yeah, no, up? no. We're friends? No, we're friends. You got yeah. any enemies? Well, yeah, I must Showbiz have enemies. I, I must have enemies. Yeah. You know, you know, guys. I it, love it, feuds. I love showbiz. Yeah, feuds. I, I think they're. I think they're guys you who hate? pissed off at me. Anybody you hate? No, no. You, I never, did, you never banged Joan Rivers, did you? N no, no, thank no, God. no. I didn't no. bang Joan. You know, but uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know what? I, I didn't go with too many people in the business. I'm, no, I'm always. Did looking. you ever have any real famous girlfriends? You probably went that route for a while. Uh, you know, a little famous here or there. Yeah. I, I like. Look, I was with surgeons, secretaries, you know, part-time no work. No famous it, chicks besides no, time? No, very few. Very, very few. Very few. I like... I like women for what their essence. I don't like them because they're famous and all that. Right. I could have had all the famous women, but I'd rather have you know somebody who's a teacher in a school. But who's that one you keep thinking about? That one famous. Probably one. Moms Mabley. Work with her. <laughs> Moms Mabley, what a great comedian. <laughs> she was great. She actually, you know, she was at the Apollo doing a show, and you know, she always went, my husband, he's so ugly, I burn him upside down, let him dig his way out of that shit. You know, that was Moms Mabley. <laughs> so she suddenly collapses it on the stage. And everybody's like, and then she starts joking about being old, and she starts talking, and she does like 25, 30 minutes laying on the stage, wow. right? Wow. At place, they close the curtain. She had a heart attack. Yeah. And she went and through she her never, act. She finished oh, her act. Oh, oh, that's impressive. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. Your dad was in vaudeville? I didn't yes, know your dad was in show yes. He was, he was a comedian, song and dance man. He had a contract. Where his best friend was Vernon Dent, who did. He's the big guy in the Stooges, Three Stooges. He has the mustache. Yeah. Always, well, your dad worked with the Three Stooges. He had a contract to do movies with him. He came back to Philadelphia from California. He was a young guy, yeah. and my grandfather was a, one of the top rabbis in, in Philly. 
and gave him the speech. You can't work on Shabbat Friday nights. You can't do a job on You can't work Friday nights oh. until Saturday. But unlike like Eddie Cantor, Al Jolson, who defied their father, he my listened. father listened to his uh, father. And he didn't do the movies with the Three Stooges? No, he missed show. He never went on stage again. Wow. But then oh. he lived vicariously through me. Wow, how sad. I mean, yeah, to work I with know. the Three Stooges, to me, the Three yeah, Stooges I mean, were the Oh, greatest. yeah, they were Philly guys, you know, three right. Jews from Philly, I from, know. from South Street. I love those guys. Yeah, fabulous. All right, so listen, man, it's all yeah. good. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Honey. I mean, you're doing well. I mean, yeah. you seem like you're in a good you place. You give us hope. Yeah. It's not over after a certain age. And, yeah. and I ought to do commercial. Commercials and everything. Look yeah. and tell. I have nothing done to me. I mean, I'm afraid of a knife. You know, <laughs> I'm afraid. You never had a nose no. job or a what, uh, uh, coward. We, <laughs> Howard, we both had nose jobs. Okay, you want to yeah. fucking lie about things? There's a great lie. I had a nose job. Well, so did I. Mine was huge. Let me see. You Turn had a nose side. job. Turn it. My, mine was like should, I had a big nose. Turn uh, around. Let me see. Let me see the profile. See. Uh, oh. No, what the fuck? You got to sue the doctor if you had a nose job. I don't believe that. Oh, Jeez. Oh, please, Howard. What is it, Matthew? One last question for David Brenner. You have the floor. Go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, hi. Uh, hey, Howard. Thanks for taking my call. Richard, it was a great interview. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot about uh, your age and about your, your legal uh, stuff. I just hope it doesn't get you into trouble uh, getting into airports with a fake ID. <laughs> yeah, I'm, in, right. I'm in, in so much fucking trouble anyway. This is not going to add. There's a little salt on a potato. And by the way, his no. name is David. Yeah, you know I'm what it Howard. is? You know what it is? Richard Belzer. That Richard Belzer and I, get, they confuse us all oh, the time. Oh, they really? Yeah, they come up to Richard and they say, David Brenner. You know, I don't know why. He's, he's you know, he, He's an old <laughs> guy with big ears. I mean, what the hell? Is, what, what happened, Richard? Belzer. Uh, listen. Uh, I love Belzer. <laughs> yeah. Listen, let's go to um, Rob. Rob, you're on the air. You got the final word, Rob. Go ahead. Yeah. David, for yeah. years you've been lying about your age. Yeah. My mother went to your bar mitzvah. I know. She, age, no, no, wait. I'll tell you why. Same age. Born in 36. Yeah, but she didn't go to my bar mitzvah, and I'll tell you why. I wasn't bar mitzvah. Yes, you were, too. No. I, are you, you, you tell me. I wasn't bar mitzvah. <laughs> you weren't there. I, I wasn't bar mitzvah. If your mother, she probably came to a party. I lied about it, it being a bar mitzvah. The rabbi was a friend who lived down the street from me. It was an Italian guy. Uh, Dominic <laughs> Barber, you're on the air with David Brown. David, just yeah. give advice to Howard whether or not he should have a child later in life. Because you had to be 63 for your last child. Yeah, yeah, but you know my, you know my two boys know how old I am. I said, nah, don't right. get scared, and they, and they, you know, they <laughs> see me, don't get scared, <laughs> and they see, right. they see, they see me working out, right. and they see I got the muscles, right. and they say, you know, Dad, our, our friends' fathers who are in their 40s and all that, they're not built like you, they're not in your shape, they don't look as good as you, and the hair, you got the hair and all yeah, that. Yeah. Now I want to tell you something. My oldest boy called years ago. I said, look, I got to tell you something. He said to me, Dad, if you're going to tell me your real age, if, if that isn't your real age, because it's on his birth certificate. Right. He said, if that isn't your real I don't want to know about it. He said, I'm scared enough. Now, no. I, I had an old father, <laughs> so I was scared. With nine years shaved off, they you, were scared. You ready? Right, you right. ready for this? I, before I, I came here, I said, look, I got to, you know, I want to talk to you about one other thing, Cole. I said, you know, I'm going, I'm going on Howard Stern's show, and, and, you know, he's always cat and mouse with me with, with the age thing. He said, Dad... Say hello to Howard. Give him my best. He said, don't tell me. He doesn't want to know. Yeah, so I'm wondering. He might think you're 85. I I talked to him last night, and we didn't say anything, but I'm wondering if he's going to listen to radio. And if he doesn't, I want to tell him myself in case it came out. But uh, now I'm afraid one of his friends is going to come in and say, boy, your father's a fucking old guy. He had you. He must have had cobwebs on his dick when he had you. You know what I mean? It's going to be one of those things. But what about what Dominic is saying? Uh, he, he Dominic's hung up. He says he thinks I should have children. I'm at the happiest point. I had three kids. Howard, my wife is happy. Right. She's not looking for children. We're so happy together. Howard. It, it, I, we, I, I, it would ruin it. Let me tell you something, Howard. Thank they you. say that children change your life. You want to know something? They fucking ruin it. <laughs> you know, I love my no, I love my kids. Right. But my life would be. You remember my life? Uh, sailing yeah. the world, having you know, very, very much my life. Right. My life. All about and not you. living in the place because I have to. Where, where's the closest school? Who gives a shit? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I don't want the school near me. I don't want Close the kids school. even walking by my house on the way home. Right. I don't want the fucking kids around me. And 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 see, even, a lot of people don't admit this. Okay. Look, no, men feel this way. Right. Kids are even. They're they're like hemorrhoids. Even when they're perfect, they're a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? They're, they change your whole life to a right. point where, where you don't want to go. Right. If you're happy, look, someone wants to happy. Said, if you're, I, here's my definition of happy. It's not original. It, it's doing what you love to do in a place you don't want to leave. Right. Now, think about kids 
what they will do to interfere with your job, what they will do with where you live, you know, things like that. And you sacrifice, and then they get to be teenagers, and they're out there. They, Hating your guts. They, I'm lucky I look as good as I do. Right. My, my <laughs> Cole was of terror, and, and then he's, he's the most wonderful man. He's, right. he's, a, he's fabulous. Right. Best, best guy. Now Slade is 13. Right. What a terror. What a fucking pain. <laughs> He dry, you know, he's got the hip-hop music playing, blaring. He comes yeah, in, he's in arrogant. He won't do his schoolwork. He's right. a straight-A student. Now he's like, I said, you, I'm going to read your report card upside down because it's all like at the bottom of this fucking list. I mean, I mean he's so wonderful. He's so funny. So uh, the answer is... Don't have kids. Right. That's what I said. And I don't want you that. Got, look, you got your daughters. What do you need? I got daughters. But I know. What do you it. need? What do I need? You did it. Right. And you believe did me. It. So why did you do it? You know what? The first one was an accident. <laughs> Listen to this. The right. first one was an accident. But well, you're right. too old to be having well, accidents. No, okay. Accidents. Look, I haven't. I haven't you worn rubber. I when I was 14, I tried a rubber. And I said, what is it? This is fucking nuts. This is like putting a, a helmet over your head. Oh, wait a I second. Mean, With Thai nuts. Babylonia, no rubber? I haven't used one since I'm 14. What do you do? You pull out? No. You come inside a woman? I got three kids. Yeah, but why don't you have 50? <laughs> I, maybe I do. <laughs> Howard, I don't know. Are you I serious? Got, yeah. You would, like, no let's say you would pick up a chick yeah. and you go to bed with her. One nighter. You've had those. Well, before AIDS. Right. Yeah, when okay. I, and when you would come inside when, a woman? Yeah, when AIDS hit. When AIDS hit. I, that that scared me. Okay. Now I started to settle down with like one. Right. You know what I mean? Right, I, right, I stopped. You said, well, "I better you know, get serious." About I better this. start to you know understood. Really be yeah right. But yeah, you mean to tell me when you're with a woman? Yeah, you always ejaculate inside of her. Yeah, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, well, you know, you know, wow. a couple of them tell you stories. That's so crazy. Yeah, but they tell, they tell so you're stories. expecting the woman to be doing something about this? Well, they have the pill. They have a pill. You when they get a headache, them? they take two aspirin. Why can't they take the pill? You believe they have the pill? Well, that's the problem. They, they, sometimes they, 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 they lie to you. Look, I right. had the first one accidentally. The Why second was it an one, accident? Did she say she had her pill and she didn't? Uh, yeah, it's one of those, you know, uh, you know, if it happened 2,000 years ago, we'd have another savior. You know, you know what right. I mean? One of those jokes. Right, you right, know what right. I'm saying? So, but then the second one was because Elizabeth, after caring for Cole during the custody battle, she suddenly changed her mind and said she wanted to have a kid. And so we had, we had, we had uh, Slade. And then why it was a, a, another accident, oh an, a, an accident in this sense, we, we lost a child oh. and and going into the operating and she was really in bad shape and, and she uh, has embolism. So mm -hmm. she, she could have lost her life. So I held her hand and going into the operating room and she said, promise me that we'll, we'll have another. All of a sudden she said, promise me we'll, we'll have a child to replace the one we're losing. Right. That was an accident. The one we were losing was an accident. Uh -huh. And I said, hey, what are you going to say? No, go in there and good luck. I hope you live. But why, not pull, so, out, yeah. why not pull out and finish on their stomach? Because it, it's, a, it's a different feeling. Wow. It's like vomiting and, and keeping your mouth closed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, does, <laughs> it just doesn't Cleaning work. Wow. It, I always no wear a rubber. Always. Why? Always. You're with your one. Oh, I don't want her to get pregnant. Oh, but come on, you know, if she doesn't want a child, she'll tell you and she'll have the protection. No, she she seems like a abortion. lovely, honest she said, woman. She said one thing, I don't want to have a child, but if you got me pregnant, I would, I would not have an abortion. And I said, then i got to wear a rubber. Because yeah, well, I'm not, yeah, that's I a believe in abortion. thing. Yeah. I believe in abortion as birth control. Well, I, I believe, no, I believe that, that it's a woman's right. A woman's right. She has the final word. I'm not sure about it, you know. I was a mistake child. I was an accident. I, I had got, a feeling you were. Yeah, well, obviously, look at me with my with my madness and everything. Who wants this? You could tell. And when I was born, I was I, fucked up. I, I believe mean, I'm a mistake there must as well. Be a bunch yeah, of accidents yeah. in this. I've room. been a mistake ever since. I, I at the night of conception until this very moment, I am a mistake child. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it, it, the I whole feeling is different. Don't how, use how, a how, how do you not have fifty? How kids? do you use a rubber? Do you? Oh, I love I mean, it. I mean, you take like a bath with a suit on. Yeah, There's no I feeling. I don't. It's too much contact without the rubber. I like it. He's telling you I how mean, quick he is, and he's wearing a rubber. I, I, I'm so, I come so fast with the rubber. If I didn't have one on, it would be over before I even got in there. I mean, <laughs> well, it would be it would just the And what do you do? Then you go in and you, you pour it in the toilet? I mean, I mean what I are you know. doing with it? Yeah, I throw it in the toilet. Or say, here's to you. I and, throw it you in know, the toilet. Head toast, you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's I'm, telling the, you. I'm telling you, the feeling without it, it's day and night. I tried it when I was 14. Well, I had kids, so I know what it's like. Yeah, but, well, uh, well. And before uh, AIDS and all that in college, yeah, girls well. were on the pill. I would, yeah. I would bang them without anything. Yeah, right. Well, you know, well, hey, I mean, uh, it, 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 it's a price you're going to pay, but uh, the enjoyment's worth it. I mean, it's I real. can't believe you come yeah. inside chicks like that. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect strangers.
Well, they're not perfect strangers. But I'm just saying, girls, you meet we them. We said hello. We talked a few minutes. I mean, I said, where'd you go to school? I know things about them. It's time to have you, sex. But you can what? ruin your life if you have a kid with these. You know these women. No, you were well, a target. Look at, look you at were me. A target. Of course I was a target. Did. I did. No, Howard, you what do you mean I could have? What do you, you mean I could have? You should have had 50 based on wait, what you're telling Maybe I do. No, they would come after All the times in custody court. Uh, uh, pulling myself away from the Tonight Show, all that kind of stuff. I can't I mean, believe what you're telling from me. From a kid. But you know what? And the kid, to save a kid, is worth anything. To have a kid's another story, but right. once you have a kid, you do everything in the world to make that kid the happiest kid he could sure, ever, ever be. Sure, and I admire you for that, but I just can't That's believe the, what you're telling me. I can't well, even believe this. I, yeah. I, I, you're there shocking could be me. More yeah. The next time I'm with Ty, I'll call around. you at the right moment. I'll call you. you right. Please do. Say, We'd love to listen yeah, in. And put a little camera. We'll have a little camera We'd like in a taxi you. show. We'd you love know? to see what you do with Ty <laughs> Babylon. I'll do it in a taxi with that guy. I'll fake him out. I'll wear a mask. Listen, You know, I'll act drunk. He picks me up at night. What? We have learned a lot today. A lot to absorb and a lot to think about. You really done it now. How do you yeah. feel now? Yeah. You're going to walk out of here and everybody's going to know, you know your age. I, you know, I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm glad I got it off my chest and, and with Howard because, you know, he's been, he's, been, he's been a cat all the time and I've been uh, a mouse. I'm and glad finally you told he's me. a tiger and I'm caught. Great. I feel great about that we, because that's the only dishonest thing I ever said to the guy. I'll say anything that's right. truthful. No. But I think on the way back to the hotel, before I go to the airport, I'm going to start to have pains I've never had before. Uh, I think, we'll see. No, it could be Dorian Gray. There might be a picture of me you know, that looks so young. And when, now it's getting old, and, I, and I'm done. Uh -huh. You know, I, you I don't know. I, know. I don't now? know. I would start lying again. Let's pretend this never happened. I want to lie about something else, though. Yeah. I want to lie that I have a tube. I have fake hair. <laughs> you know, maybe that's general that's enough. That's a good one. Yeah. He's the greatest. David Brenner, everybody. Yeah, I got away with murder. I lied all. The whole show was nothing but lies. It's why, except for the tour. All lies. Isn't that great? And you finally got it off your chest. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he has been... Playing with this, maybe 20 years. Always suspicious. Then all of a sudden he'd bring up, he say, so how are you feeling? Now? So how old are you again? You know, he's been toying with me all these years. So uh, you know, I think he always knew. But I figured, you know, if I was ever going to open up and tell the truth, I have to do it with Howard. Because he, he, he earned it, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so how, how was it, man? It was fabulous. It's, a, it's another, you know, I, I have never been on a show where we haven't together hit... Each taking a bat and hit a home run. You know, it's just, it, it, this is what Howard, this separates him from everybody. It always has. You know, I used to do it when he had to play music over there at one of the network shows. I, I, I stopped in after a Studio 54 night because I heard him on the air. I heard him in Washington. I said, I got to do that guy's show. He's great. And I, and I just popped in on him. I think I was one of the first celebrities to do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's always good hanging out with Howard. Right? Oh, please. He's a gem. He's the best. He's, a, he's one of a kind. He's, he's, a, he's the greatest. Yeah. All right. This is the best of the wrap up show. Wrap -up show. A recap and behind the scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delabate, Baba Booey. On Monday's wrap up show, we talked about a guest we had on that morning, Brian McAmey. I uh, thought he was an interesting guest and there was a lot of baseball talk, and we found out some interesting things. The featured guest today, I would say, would be Brian McNamee of Roger Clemens Steroids fame. And, Gary, whenever something sports-related happens on the show, it's always, well, how is Howard going to interview this guy? Because he doesn't really know what's going on in the world of sports. See, I think that's a big plus for Howard when he's interviewing sports people. And the great thing with Brian McNamee today, Howard has no agenda. He's not a huge Yankee fan, so he doesn't fall on that side. He's not a huge Roger Clemens hater. He doesn't fall on that side. Howard really doesn't give a shit. He just wants to know what the story is. Now, what do you think McNamee expected today? Because halfway through, he gave him the look. Like, when are we going to talk about this other thing? i, I got to tell you, you, you know, they contacted me to come on the show, and I'm still not sure why. I mean, I'm glad that they did. Um, it was a weird interview. It's much more interesting visually. Yeah. Um, you know, he takes these long pauses. He's really trying not to say the wrong thing, which I'm not sure what that is. But, um, you know, it, I don't know why. I like, they, they contacted the Howard Stern Show of all the press. I thought that was a riot. So did, I felt I had to book him. Did you think he was nervous sitting there on the couch? Yes. He was, um, you could see he was physically, like, a little shaky. He was very nervous to be here. All right. Now, what do you do in his position? He says the feds came to him. He, he almost said he had no choice at that point, even though Clemens had bailed him out of something earlier on. I thought that when Howard was, you know, Howard was sort of taking the side, like, hey, he helped you out. He was a good friend to you. He helped out your kid. 
you know, you know, take the bullet from him. Like, I, I know for a fact Howard's not going to jail for anybody, no matter what. And I thought that was sort of a, a weird, you know, side to take. Um, I'm not saying that Brian McNamee is the greatest guy in the world, but I can't think of a situation where I'd go to jail for a friend. Do you think he was calculated in saving those needles or just doing his job? No, I think he was calculated. I think, I think he knew he was involved with something that was very wrong with somebody at a very large level, and he figured, I'm holding on to these in case I ever need to cover my ass. Now, a lot of people didn't realize that he was a former cop. And a cop yeah, I didn't a, either. A cop for a long time. He too. sounded like a cop, didn't he? He did. He <laughs> did. Um, all right. So, do you think that uh, McNamee was jealous of Clemens and the life he was leading? Howard asked him that question. I don't know. I mean, it. You know, it. McNamee didn't. If he would have just showed up one day and say, "Hey, look at me. I'll tell you a story. Here are these needles I got. I've got all these diaries. I've got these phone recordings." Then I would say yes. But he wasn't looking to get involved in this. The the um, the authorities found him, and they were like, "Listen, we got you. So start talking, or else." So I don't know if I if I feel like there was any sort of vengeful thing though. I think it got vengeful after it got started. Then it got like an ugly divorce. But I think that when he first got involved in it and, and throwing Roger under the bus, if that's what you want to call it, I don't. I think that was him saving his own ass. You think Clemens is a Hall of Famer? Yes. Regardless of how I, this, turns I out? really do not like Roger Clemens at all. Um, I didn't like him when he came to the Yankees. I, I'm a big Met fan. I hated when he threw the bat at Piazza and made up that bullshit that he thought it was the ball. Right. And you know, and that always pissed me off because if it was anybody but Roger Clemens and anybody any place but the World Series, he'd have been thrown out of the game. Absolutely. Don't you agree? So I thought that was a bullshit thing. I don't like him, but you can't argue with his numbers. Even you and I were talking. By the time he left, left Boston, he already had 187 wins, uh, a Cy Young. No, three Cy Young. Three Cy Young. An MVP. An MVP. And a lot of strikeouts. And I, I would guess that that's all pre-steroids. And and then, you know, the numbers he put up afterwards, yeah, he won another 120 games. But like you and I were saying, he was going to pitch for somebody. He was the dominant guy of his era. Even if he would have ended up with 260 or 270 wins, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Well, when he left Boston, I think it was Duquette, Steve, Steve Brandano, correct me if I'm wrong there, said he was done. I mean, they pretty much thought that Clemens had nothing Well, without left. steroids, he was. Well, he went to Toronto, and then he won the Cy Young two years later, and then, of course, he had the storied years with the Yankees. But we got a bunch of— oh. But already pointed something out today, which is, the, which is the rap that everybody used to say about Barry Bonds, which is also with Roger Clemens. He sort of defied the rule. You don't get better as you get older. And those two guys did. Well, the thing with Bonds was he was such a great five-tool player before he took a steroid. And he got caught up in the Sosa McGuire, who's the best home run right. hitter kind of thing. Well, that's a great book. That, you know, uh, The book that was written about him, that uh, Shadows of Darkness or mm -hmm. whatever, Game of Shadows, it starts out the first, the first chapter is that Bonds is in St. Louis with his... Uh, his side chick, no, his gumada, whatever they call it, his, his, his friend, his mistress, or whatever, and he's he's you know Mark Regarius hitting all these home runs, and that, that was like that did it for him. Like I'm great, and this guy's getting all the headlines. Fuck that! All right, let's go to the phones. Josh in Albany, you're on the wrap up show. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, Josh. How you doing? Good, good. Hey, look, this guy today, total rat douchebag. He kept those needles for one reason. He knew eventually he was going to get caught. He knew that he could use those needles as leverage. He used it to uh, benefit his career. He's a total rat. How's he, be how, but how's he benefiting his career? If anything, he's... He's, but he's on the Howard Stern show right now. Right, but how does Gary? that translate Would to... He be on the Howard how Stern is, show but Josh, wasn't? how does that translate to money? The guy's got his own website right now, right? Did he cut a book deal yet? No. Oh, yeah, well, why? No, but you I just asked... Wait, you just asked the deal. question. Did he cut a book deal yet? The answer is no. Well, when he does, Gary, then you can say that it's benefiting his career. But, but right? Josh, Josh, do you think that he went to somebody and squealed on Roger? Or do you think you don't believe that the authorities came no, to I him believe, and squeezed I him? That the, I believe that the feds came to him, Gary. So, what, so what, what, if you were in the same position, what would you have done? I would have taken the hit. And you can't tell you, me, wait, Gary, Josh, that you would have gone to jail. You would have gone to jail for like that guy. For a guy who helped me and my family out. Gary, you wouldn't go to jail for Howard? No. If, if the feds came to you and they said, after everything Howard's done for you and your family, after the fact that Howard is the reason why you have some bar stools in the back of an entertainment 
room that you have, you wouldn't go to jail for him for a year or two? No. If, if Howard did something wrong and he wanted wow, me to take... you know what, Gary? What? You're as big as an, of an asshole as this guy is. You know what, Josh? That guy, you're, you're Roger lo- Clemens took care of that guy's family. You're a lot of talk, Josh. I'd like to see you put on a uniform, put on the shackles, walk into jail, and get butt raped. For a guy for one or two years in federal prison getting butt raped in a, in, a, in a minimum security prison, Gary, I don't think that's happened. Nobody said it was going to be minimum security. I don't know that Bond's guy is in a minimum security. It's a white-collar security. crime. It's a white-collar crime. But, but, but Josh, now you're, make, now you're making up stuff. Jail. Josh, you're making up stuff. You don't know where he was going. Gary, you don't know me. And I'm telling <laughs> you, this guy's not going to maximum. He's not going to a maximum security how do you, jail. How do you know that? Because, Gary, I have ex- somewhat of a little bit of experience in this type of situation. I have a family member right I have a family member right now who's in federal prison for almost the exact same thing. And it's not a maximum security prison. I think there's one of three he must be one of three people in the whole United States who's in jail for the same exact thing. No, it's a very rare crime. Thing, but for not ratting on somebody. For keeping his mouth shut like he was supposed to, because he you, took care of a buddy of his who took care of him. But everything's not the same. Listen. If, you, if you're willing to go to jail, you're a better man than me. I'm a pussy. I'll tell you that right now. And if you're asking me to go to jail for Howard for something that he did wrong that I should take the rap for, I'm saying I love Howard. First of all, I know him well enough to know that he would never put me in that position. So it's, it's a weird question to ask. But I'm not going to jail for anybody. i got a fucking family. Yeah, but this guy wasn't innocent either, Gary. He got the drugs. No, I, I, mean, got, he, I got he it. Kept, he kept himself out of jail, probably. Absolutely. And I think most people would do the same. I don't know, Gary. I, I mean, I know I, my conscience wouldn't allow me to do that because just because of Good. what the guy you did You go to jail my with a clear conscience and a sore ass. What's up, guys? It's Teddy. On Tuesday's wrap-up show, we discussed Bob Levy's reading and comprehension test. And, uh, well, much to uh, no one's surprise, he reads at a sixth-grade level and comprehends at a third-grade level. But uh, regardless, the uh, conversation was pretty interesting, so check it out. With Levy and the reading test, can you explain what was going on there? Because Levy was here. I get in pretty early, and Levy was here before I was here yeah, this morning. So we brought him in early. Jason handled this mostly. You know, he kept me in the loop. So we had this guy that administer, administers reading tests to people, and he said he was going to need around 45 minutes or an hour or so. So we put him in the studio, in Sal and Richard's studio, probably at around 6.30, and I had Sal listening to the whole thing, taking notes, so that as soon as we thought we were done— so I could edit the tape up really quickly so we'd have the tape for the show as well as the results. Okay. And did you think Levy, he ended up reading at a sixth grade level but comprehending at a third grade level? That sounds about right. I mean, you've seen him. I mean, really, you've seen him. Well, yeah, he made a statement that he simply lives his life without reading and has no issue with it. And, and even the king of, what was he, king of all grammar, said that Bob's not retarded. He's right. extremely street smart. Right. But, I, like, how do you think Wendy would fare, Wendy the retard, seriously, would fare on that test? That's Better, a, or worse, or the same? I think on the, on the comprehension, I think she may fare a little bit worse. On the actual reading itself? About the same? About the same, if, yeah. not, if not better. Well, we were kicking around with Bob. I know he says he's dyslexic, but do you think he has a learning disability of some yeah. kind? Yeah, no, no. no. He, <laughs> dyslexic is you can't read the words on the page, but you repeat the words to Bob, and you tell him what they mean, and it goes. It, he forgets it you know, within the, a millisecond. Like you say, shrapnel. And he goes, shrapnel. No, shrapnel. Shrap, shrap shoe. No, shrapnel. Like, he doesn't, he's got a, I guess, you know, because you hear all this bullshit now, I guess Bob has a processing problem. Yeah, I know. Well, here's a little bit of Levy trying to do what Gary just did. Number one, Ted. Synopsis. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, the, the, yeah. the rain. Wow. The, Can you say that word, synopsis? Synopsis. Oh, now, synopsis. What? <laughs> say synopsis. Again. Synopsis. 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 Right. Synopsis. Right. Yes. All right. All right. Cross that one off. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Veranda. Ver- veranda, you know. Oh, Anachronism. You know. Anachronism? Anachronism. All right. Did you say anachronism? Anachronism. Anachronism? Right. <laughs> Why don't you just get a machine that just kicks me in the balls every time I come in here? <laughs> uh, what was that last one? Anachronism. Anachronism. <laughs> oh, fuck this. Uh, anachronism. It, got, it just a, kept going and going yeah. and going. Don't you think anachronism is a tough word for a sixth grader? Well, there were a few that I thought were it's a little a Bob's tricky. not a sixth grader. 
<laughs> yeah, believe me, I understand that. Now, do you think anyone here could give Bob? You mentioned Wendy the retard. Is there anybody out here that could give Bob a run for his money when it comes to the comprehension side of things? The big buzz around here was that we should have been giving that test to Sal as well. That's what a lot of people seem to think. Now, I think Sal would do a little bit better on the read. Well, he'd do a lot. I think he'd do a little bit better on the reading, but he has probably. But I think Sal probably can comprehend a little bit better. Yeah, I think. What do you think, Benji? Yeah, I, I think Sal would do better. Well, but I mean, look at look at the bar we set. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, do better than Levy? <laughs> I I've said it before. I think Sal. Like being better looking I think than Sal is definitely above average intelligence. Now, Levy again being a street smart guy, he runs the Killers. A com- I mean, he seems to put that comedy show on. So there's got to be some smarts there. You know, he, he's not like, you're right. He's got his act together. You know, he knows what he's doing. He's a hustler. I wonder. You know, we've concentrated so much on his on his English. I would love to work on his math a little bit. And see how that works. I'd be curious to know his math skills are. Well, I bet you he's good with numbers. Well, certainly better with numbers than he is with his reading. Well, no, you. you, you. Oh, he is. Well, they, definitely because they do like they do all their stand up and then and then they all go out and sell like merchandise and all this stuff and then at the end they're splitting it seventeen different ways and I've seen it firsthand. He's good with money. It's weird. It's kind of like an idiot savant. John in New York, you're on the wrap up show. John, are you there? Yeah, man. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? I'm well. I just wanted to make a comment about Bob Levy. Do you guys talk to him on a regular basis, like off the air? I do. How does he function? I mean, how how does he get through daily life just being so fucking ignorant? But but not being able to read, there's other things that he does know. And he, does, he gets through life, you know, he's clearly adjusted. If he needs somebody to help him read stuff or however it works or he reads what he needs to read... He gets by that way, but because he can't read, doesn't make him stupid. Right. I think people are misunderstanding something. I, 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 if sure. if the passage was read to him, he would probably understand it at the same level we would. Yeah, but that's uh, how many people get to have that done? Right. But what I'm saying, like, saying when, when you're discussions discussion? in everyday life, that's it's it's just that he can't read it. Right. But there's also a huge amount of everyday life that requires some amount of reading. So when he reads the paper, he doesn't understand what he's reading. He's not reading the paper. Based on this test today, he wouldn't have that great of comprehension. But if someone read it to him, I think he would understand it. Now let's go to Iowa and talk to Ken. Ken, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, Johnny, Gary, how are you guys this morning? Hey, hey Ken, what's up? Not a um, couple things for you, real quick. First of all, with Levy, when you played those clips of him actually like trying to read sentences, it almost sounds like when you guys do the phony phone calls and you take like. Soi khung cửa buồn, tình qua khu vườn vắng em làm mấy cuồn cuộn. Qua đời anh giang giang, sông trôi qua đồng bằng, mưa mịt mùng bên mộng em làm hoa dấu lặng, bài nhạc tình mênh mông. bình bông vẫn nằm thầm chẳng nói well, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> There can only be one Messiah, John, and you ain't in. No, clearly. But yet, every time it comes up, you're on the you're on the. We've talked about this. You're on the opposite end of things. You always think there's something afoot. But at this point, John, even you have to give up. <laughs> you know, if he didn't say what he said on the wrap-up show last week, I would agree with you. But it looked like there was something. How do you know that's true? I don't. As Gary would say. I don't. And it's drug-related, so it could be a lie. I understand how this works now. How do you know? It's drug-related. It can be a lie. Therefore, I don't know. John, it's how do... at work. It's at work, he's saying. How do you know Artie didn't do steroids in 2005? You don't. You don't. Although I saw him catch that pop-up in the softball game, so clearly he wasn't clearly, doing it. He's not doing steroids. All right, let's take a couple calls while we have Robin. Brian in Ohio, you're on the wrap up show hey now hi brian hey i just got a real problem with uh robin's definition of what a hero is as far as she has it laid out like our soldiers aren't heroes because they're trained in saving their own ass no 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 a soldier goes out of his way every day for his 
fellow soldiers. No, so he's, he's just, uh, always so... risking his life to save the life of another. But isn't that his job when he takes the job? Well, it's he... not the point. When you could be in safety and you risk your life for another, you're a hero. He, he, uh, a soldier volunteers to put themselves on a line of fire. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's you, now thing. you're having your own argument. This is my definition. Okay, I mean, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> a soldier volunteers to put themselves in the line of fire. And they play. volunteer to be heroes. Right, yeah. You're saying you hate the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is just saying what they're doing is not a big deal. <laughs> and, and Sully said, I was an Air Force trained pilot. Those guys get trained to do extraordinary things. They are as cool as cucumbers. That's what they do. Well, but while it was his job to do what he did, don't he you think, did it great? Don't you think he went above and beyond? That most people who are hired no, for that job can't, your can't own do life, that job. There is no above and beyond. That's the part you don't get. He couldn't get out of the plane without saving everybody. So if a soldier's on his back and a guy comes at him and he shoots him to save his own life, is that heroic? What? If a soldier's on his back, he's on the ground, and, yes. a, and the enemy's coming at him, and he shoots that guy to save his own life, because he's saving himself. He's not a hero. Really? No. All right. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? really? Robin's got a high standard. I appreciate it. If Robin ever calls anyone a hero, what if someone's like really, really something? They're going to be real heroes. <laughs> what if someone's like really, really good at that guitar game? Guitar hero, Benji. Do I have to talk to Benji? <laughs> no, you don't. We've been trying not to for weeks. Brandon in Virginia, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I, I got a question for Gary and uh, Robin. Uh, with the big picture scenario with everything going on uh, with Sirius and the economy, uh, yes, Artie should be gracious with this situation. But today, do you guys feel a little... Uh, Dignified that he uh, that he did not show up. I, mean, I don't even understand the that he's not here. I, I think he wants to know if we're happy Artie didn't come to work today, but I don't know why because of the economy. Yeah, why would they be happy? No, I'm just saying, like, uh, Artie, I mean, if you have a good-paying job right now, you should be happy. And you should be working to do whatever you can to keep that. I'm just wondering, with everything that's going on, uh, are you guys getting to a point where you're ready to step back, stop talking about Artie, and uh, watch him fall uh, just to prove your guys' point? No, if I I would if 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 I if we lived in a perfect world, I would like Artie to get better tomorrow and come in here every day. I don't I'm not looking for him to fail. I would like Artie to be happy. You know, while yes, we've all become disgusted with him with the way right. he's treating the show and how he's participating in the show the truth is the underlying thing is that Artie is miserable he's not having a gr if he was taking off to go to great adventure i'd be happy for him but he's taking off because he's miserable yeah when, so have you when, when have Artie, you guys got to the point where uh i mean it's personally starting to make you guys a little bit miserable because uh Personally, you're being affected. Is the fun being taken out of it? And, no, and it's no. kind of going from show to uh, Not actual from doing life. the show, no. 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 But I do feel for my comrade, my coworker. I think I feel horrible. I am depressed that I have to say these things about Artie. Yeah, and I, I was telling Artie when we spoke off the air last week, I said, listen, I'm, I'm a very, Robin will tell you, I'm a very orderly person. I like things to oh, go yeah. in, a, in an order. <laughs> I'm like, not OCD, but Robin used to make fun of me, like, Did you, don't you, the shoes go here? <laughs> and I'm sort of like that. And Ar I said this to Artie. Artie represents disorder. And just on that level alone, it makes me crazy. When I see somebody who's disorderly, I want them to, you know, walk between the lines. Right. And it's just, and Artie understands that. Do you hey, guys think it's fair to say that we've become desensitized to it? I, mean, could I call it cynical. Okay. I think it's, well, yeah, everybody is a bit cynical, yeah. but but really, Gary talked about it in the beginning of the show, it's almost accepted now when he's not in versus... Well, it's not almost, the, it's accepted. It's accepted. Right, versus the beginning where everyone was like, where is he, where can he be? And it's not that people aren't concerned, it's when just that... When I look over and I see Artie, I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could tell. Oh, that's it. how it's gotten. You You're going to get an ass kicker for that next week. <laughs> you can see how desensitized people are because when this first started happening, it would be the first hour of the show, and today it was five minutes. And, yeah. you know, so there's, there's your proof. Hey, Rob, a lot of people who have called in the rap show. Give, He's talking give, to me again. <laughs> have given, if you guys listen, I enjoy being on the rap show. If you guys don't want me here, I'll leave. Oh, come All right, on. Okay, now goodbye. he's going to be a victim. All right. Is that because I mean, you guys keep taking knocks at me and shit? I enjoy being part of it, but if you don't want me to, it's your show. I won't be part okay. of it. Okay. Go ahead. I, do you not want me to be part no, of no, it? No, no. Ask your question. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of people Make have, given, it a good one. have given Gary shit and Howard shit on the rap show saying that like Howard should put more of a structure down, that Howard needs to put a foot down, that Howard has a responsibility towards this. 
What's your reaction to that? My reaction to that is having, like I said, been a problem on this show. Howard never once said to me, Robin, get your shit together. In fact, I, I think I said once, remember that period of time when I was late all the time? Yeah. A la Benji? <laughs> Howard never said a word until I said, you know what? I'm putting myself on a curfew. Right. Because I am out, obviously out of control. I can't get to work on time anymore. I'm tired of walking in here, disappointing everybody, and, you know, like not really getting my work done. So for a month, I am grounded. And Howard said, thank God you said that, because I thought I was going to have to finally say something, and I don't want to do that. Well, what what drove you to that point? Like, what made you have that moment of re self-realization? I care about the people I work with. It's interesting because I think we're going through something similar right now, Robin, on a much lesser level. Oh, yeah? I think that Howard, he said it to you a couple of times on the air. He never talked to you about it off the air about the fact that you're not back in time from the breaks. Do you? Somebody no, I'm trying as hard as I can. The, right. You know, the few things that I need are now not um, not very convenient for but me. He would I go to the bathroom, somebody's in the bathroom, right. and I'm trying to get there and get back before the break is over. Or I need ice because I want to <laughs> just make something in my little blender, and you have to go all the way to the second floor to get it. Well, just for, for the second part, I can't help you too much on the first part. <laughs> But for the second part, just stick your head out and I'll send somebody up to get your ice. <sighs> you don't have to go to the second floor. But the point is... That doesn't work for me. I sense that Howard <laughs> wishes you were back on time, but would never say anything to you off the air about it. Wait, wait, well, he, I haven't gotten that. He, I, am I that much out of the uh, studio and not back on time? See, I think that you, well, like yesterday he played the song for you, and he was so excited, and you weren't there to react to it. Right. I think it's like, where the hell's Robin? But I, th I think it's happened maybe twice, Gary. I don't think it's happened a lot. The answer is Robin needs two buckets in her office, one filled with ice and, <laughs> and one, one for the other. For the <laughs> <urine>. <laughs> yeah. Done and done. I'll have it tomorrow. So it, it doesn't work for you because you need to get your own ice? I, I mean, yeah. But Robin, seriously, I'll get you ice or have an intern get you ice whenever no, you No, but it. see, I'm not that kind of person. I need to get it for me. Right, I can tell you right now I have a solution for you, and it's very easy. <laughs> Because I, well, I don't want it all the time. I want it when I want it. At Target, they make uh, this portable ice maker. It's $119. Oh, great. Then you I'll you get plug that. It in and you plug it in. It's then a fucking... I will get that. No, I'm just saying. It's, it's really... I will get that. I, I have no objection to that. I, that's a solution. You're going to be like... Radio station. <laughs> exactly. You're no, going to hear that no, 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 sound no, no, no. all it's, throughout the it's show. You're going to put it right in the studio. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a size of, it's a size of like a, like a steamer or a popcorn I will maker. get it because I really hate it when I can't get ice. Robin, what is that noise? <laughs> This is my ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not sure if we're hitting the over or the under here, but Ralph Sorella is back. Hi, well, Ralph. He's yeah, under. You know, what? I'm sorry. I just, I just couldn't help it. Uh, first of all, I, I want Benji to leave. If, uh, wasn't Benji asking? <laughs> if anybody's voting. Huh? Yeah, Benji, leave. And, and first of all, you know, and nobody should give Robin shit for doing what she wants. She is... Just as important to the show as Howard, and you know what? If she, if she gets ice or takes a dump or whatever she's doing for a couple <laughs> of minutes, you know, it's fine. Artie doesn't show up. He fucking he lies. He fucking shoots up. Whatever the fuck he does, and then you're going to give Robin shit for being like two minutes late because she's getting an ice cube? That's ridiculous. But I am, I am in the building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least you're showing up. But, Rob, it's, it, you're saying it's impossible to be bothered by both of those things? Uh, yes, if you put them in order and you you look at them in perspective. But what has nothing to do with the other? Yes, it does. Because to you, our, uh, Howard lets Artie get uh, away with whatever the fuck he wants to do, so you can't call. But that's other neither people. here nor there. I have my own personal right. work ethic. Well, and not just that. And I don't think Howard was legitimately upset, but think, it happened during the news when he turns to Rob. Like that was the thing. If it happened at seven o'clock, I don't think he would have said anything. But that I'll was just at the news. And I think that uh, I think that uh, Robin um, doesn't get as much credit as she should for you know just being there. You, you know what I mean? It's like she's gone. Now for we're a down to getting just being yeah. here. What am I, fucking Cal Ripken? <laughs> Robin, you're my hero for being out. <laughs> I've been six since February. That's of... what happens when you know you have Artie on. On the staff now just showing up <laughs> yeah. is good <laughs> it makes everybody look great but like listen i love you robin i love all this stuff and we went to the uh violinist the other day that's beautiful but 
you really upset me when you talk about this <laughs> pilot you not being what? a hero. You're, you're, you're playing you into... You will sit on any fucking news story that's miserable, but something that's happy, you dismiss. And Am say, I like, not telling the story? This is why Sully Sullenberg is a total hero. He walked that plane back and forth when it was sinking and made sure everybody was off the plane two times. That's true. All right, that's different than landing the plane. That's what people kept talking about, making him a hero. So job of the captain. landing the plane. It's the job it's of the captain. That nobody ever did that before. He's amazing. He's a miracle Nobody worker. ever walked on the moon before. Oh, stop it. You're being silly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so You're wait, being silly. You bring up a good example. The people went to the moon. Are they doing their jobs? Or are they now, heroes? those guys are amazing because, no, they're not oh, heroes. stop it. They're this not heroes, but they're amazing the because river. they're sitting on top of a rocket. Do you understand? And they what a blast themselves off into space, and they don't know Robin, what the outcome will be. Right, but You're if, if in you your know that ivory tower, you don't understand. Hold life. on, Ralph. Hold on a second, Robert. If you go up in a spaceship, ivory tower. And, you know, going back to thirty years or whatever it was to the, to the sixties, and and you know, rocket ships have blown up, and people have almost died. You don't know if when you go up if you're coming back. That's not heroic to take that chance no, to not know. No, That's the same as getting on a motorcycle and trying to do a flip. No, because getting on a motorcycle trying to do a flip doesn't do anything productive for the world. Going up in the rocket well, ship. Well, if they go and up there and does. they blow up, then well, it, Gary, it wasn't exactly like <laughs> it wasn't exactly like they were having a hard time for someone to volunteer for those missions either. I mean, no, people no, were ill themselves to get you, on that. If, if you ever watch that series on HBO, which is amazing, from the Earth to the Moon, right. you really get a good idea of how dangerous it was and how these guys. Didn't know what was out there for them and took the chance. You're right, but okay, those guys Robin, were risk takers. So, I so mean, that's, their, that's wow. what I'm saying. They were risk as takers your, as opposed to doing something for someone as part else of your criteria. and risking but, their lives. Hold something, on a second. Hold on. They took a risk to go out and do things for this country. No, that's oh, the uh, that was ultimately what came out of it. But they didn't make the planes. They didn't create the science. They're just sitting in the cave. Robin, I mean, was Neil Armstrong a hero when he pushed Buzz Aldrin out of the way to touch the moon first? <laughs> Robin, you're being racist because it was all white guys. Oh, there you go. On Thursday's wrap-up show, surprise, the topic was Artie Lang. Artie came in this morning and started off the show really telling Howard that he couldn't deal with the schedule. And Howard took a strong line and said, you know what, let's talk. Maybe we'll work something out. And uh, Artie, Artie was up for that. But he sounds depressed, so of course we talked about it. And uh, look, we hope the guy's okay. And we all hope it works out. And here's our conversation. Show starts today. Artie's there and immediately says, I don't think I can handle the schedule anymore. Yeah, I wasn't that surprised by it. I mean, he's been sort of hinting at that for a while. But I don't know whether he's going to go through with it. You know what I mean? Like, that's how he feels today. He might have a week off and, and, and rest and then come back and say, I'm, I'm more ready for it. Because it's a huge decision. You know, he, he, when he was doing that whole rap about trying to explain to his accountant how it works here at the show, you know, I'm sure, like, not having to get up every day is appealing. I know it's appealing to me. But then you think, like, okay, what are the losses for me if I'm not here? So uh, I'm sure he's going to think it through. But I, I thought it was interesting that he brought it up on the air today, and it seemed pretty, pretty um, you know, legit about it. Yeah, it was during the first 10 or 15 minutes of the show, and uh, here's a little bit of it. Number three, Ted. Okay. Be I want to try to see what it's like here, because I haven't done this in the first few months without any stand-up at all. And, you know, and literally just really be that adamant about it. And then just be here like I was the first few months. Then if I still can't do this, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is over. Well, I'm yeah, so, maybe I, you got to give it a rush for well, a while. What, what am is, I going to do? Is, I have what is no... happening? What, what, what goes on? Yeah, so here, I understand. Okay. No, I don't know. I'm not talking about the scheduling. I'm talking about what prevents him from being here Monday through Thursday. Because, because he, what he does is he gets run down. What he does is he... I'm insanely he run this, down. <laughs> the, you know, on the weekend, you try to recover a little bit. Right. Our schedule is heavy. And the, uh, he goes out and he does these gigs. It's complete opposite time frame. In other words, these gigs, you're up to 1, 2 in the morning. It's a nocturnal existence. I mean, the stand-up definitely takes a toll. And going away every weekend takes a toll. Even if Artie was going to Miami, just flying away every weekend, sometimes you just need to be home and, and recharge. But Artie brought up something today that I thought was interesting that I want to address. You know, they talked about the idea of Artie wa working on some sort of a modified schedule. Like maybe he comes in, you know, not as many days or at a different time. And he said that he felt that people in the office 
would be resentful of that. And Will and I looked at each other right away, and we said, we could care less. Like, if Howard said, I want you in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or I want you already come in every day but come in at 8 o'clock, I wouldn't resent that. What I would resent is if Howard said, already come in every day at 8 o'clock, and then already came in at 9 o'clock. In other words, I feel like work within the parameters that you have, but everybody's got a different deal here. And if Howard wanted already, you know, for or he felt that it only worked for a different time, I don't think anybody here. Would you feel an issue with that? Not at all. And to underline what you're saying, Artie does have sort of a different deal now anyway. I mean, we've talked about it so much, like the things that, you know, sleeping, missing, whatever it might be. He's treated differently. But everybody here is treated differently. And I don't think anyone would really be offended if he wasn't here on a day-to-day basis as long as that was laid out and agreed to by him and Howard. Right. I I think part of the disagreement that he and I have, he said that Howard always told him, you know, you could do whatever you want, that his deal was different, which we knew. But it was more, um, Howard had that conversation with him more having to do with, like, hey, if Artie needs to take a day off to go do a, you know, a roast, or if Artie wants to do, take a couple of days off to go do a movie, that's what it's for. And that somehow morphed into, if I miss a couple of days, nobody really cares, which, you know, which isn't it. But if Howard said to Artie, hey, you know what, I really like having you here. I can see it's taking its toll on you. In order for this to work, why don't you come in at 730 every day? I don't think anybody would bat an eye. Benji, would that bother you at all? No, absolutely not. It's like it's like you get down to it. Everyone has a different deal. People make different salaries. And, uh, you know, you, you negotiate the best deal you can. And I think also everybody here wants Artie to be in a better place. You know, the guy is clearly depressed. And if that helps, you know, God bless. But if, if Artie and I are making the same amount of money, just say, you know, technically, within and Artie months. comes in less days, does that mean he makes more than me? Because I want him to make more. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. But Ooh. this is a great opportunity to move the show to like 7 a.m. Oh, for Artie? <laughs> yeah. For everyone. That's how it's going to go? Listen, but the, i got to tell you, if Artie, you if, Ar- for that? if Artie can get Howard to move the show to 7, I'll give him more money. Fair enough. <laughs> Bill in Jersey, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, man. Listen to Artie. Artie just goes with the wind, man. He, one day he's going to say this, one day he said that, because he, he don't know himself. That's why, look, the guy, as far as I'm concerned, is living the life. Everybody would love to switch and live the life with uh, that Artie's living, because he don't even know what the fucking depression is. You know, every time he gets depressed, he can buy his way out of it. How do right? you, but how do you buy your way out of depression? Oh, well, come on. You know what I mean? If I had I'm asking right you. Now I could go out and make myself real fucking happy. You know how, what I mean? How, and I wouldn't be depressed anymore. Yeah, but, but Bill, you, clearly he's got the money. To, well, he's got the money to do that. He's he, and. It ain't well, working. he's alone. He, That's his biggest problem. He's a loner. Lo- look, I, look, I'm a lot older than you guys. I'm like Howard's age, but I know a lot of these guys, these loner guys that never, you know, they, like, they're not like Gary. Gary's got a family. He's got a life, okay? These guys don't have a family. They go home to nobody. They, you, you know, you go home to nobody. You sit there. You're depressed. Because you sit and you think about shit. Like, you know, Gary goes home, he's got kids, he's got this, he's got that. He don't got time to be depressed. That's why That's why he's depressed, because he's alone. A lot of these guys, you know, I grew up with people that never got married, never hooked up. They just go from one broad to another broad, and they're depressed. They don't have a life. I mean, to me, because I'm married, I'm like, wow, man, I'd love to be in their position. I'd love not to have the kids. I'd love to have the money. Fly here, fly there. But you know what? When it comes down to it, that's not really the life that anybody really wants. They want the life that you got, John Hines, that Gary has. Artie will never have that life as much money he ever has. He could have all the money in the world. He's never going to have that, and that's his problem. So you're saying he wants, like, the wife, the kids, the picket sure. fence? Everybody wants it because it's the pressure of the society that we live in. It pressures you into it. And believe me, I'm telling you right now, if you can avoid having kids... And you could be avoid being in the mainstream, and you could avoid the fucking schools and all that bullshit. Do do it. It's yeah, but you're just you're saying that's what makes Artie uh, depressed, right? And nobody. Right. I gotta tell you, of all, like I think if you said that Lisa G feels that pressure from society, I totally agree. It's sexist. She's a woman. I don't believe that anybody's pressuring Artie to get married. No, I don't think himself. Artie. I don't think. I don't it's think in himself. I disagree. It's in his heart. I, don't, I don't think Artie feels that pressure. I think Artie wishes. That he Artie find, wishes that. No, no. If, if hold you, on, hold on, hold on. I, I think Artie wishes he had that because he'd like to have that. But I don't think he feels like, oh, my God, everyone's got that. I have to have that, too. No, no, no. It's not that everyone has it and he's jealous of everyone. It's just something that's in – it's like a, a natural thing. It's a, na- it's a part of life. You know, you grow up, you graduate school, you have a girlfriend, you get married. It's kind of that thing. And when you don't do that, you feel 
out of it. I know that from friends of See, mine. See, but I think that's why Ralph is a Vulcan, because he's exactly the way you described. He... Ralph's a faggot. No, he's I mean, not. He's a faggot. <laughs> we don't no. care. You know what I mean? But Ralph, doesn't, Ralph really is sort of arty without the depression. He's well, no, very he's happy. The, he's well, arty without the money. He has depression. But he's even if he had the money, you th- but he's happy being alone without the money. If he had the money, he'd be even happier. Well, Bill's also well, saying that Ar- Artie's... I switch with you in a second, Gary. Who, Ralph? Yeah, I oh. mean, because to have the the wife and the family. No, never. That's what it's no, no, he wouldn't. You don't know Ralph. He's perfectly happy the way he is, and that's him. Well, because he knows that he's a faggot, and he's never going to have Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la, một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng. Lắng nghe sóng vỗ di dâm, như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi. Ngắm nhìn mây lượn lờ trôi, bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi. Nắng vàng như miệng ai cười. Cho hoa đùa đó Cho người thêm xuân Ngắm màu xanh thẫm núi ngàn Chung chung điệp đi 